Today we are rebuilding Anderlecht in Belgium, one of the most successful, if not the most successful team in Belgium, and they took a bit of a dip recently. They are the most successful team in Belgium, but they're also the most successful Belgian team in Europe as well. Yeah. Out of the European competitions that you know, the Belgian teams have been in. They have, yeah. We can see down here we got one Europa League, of course, it was the Cup Winners' Cup 1983. Yep. Uh, well, in fact, there's two more, Cup Winners' Cup and the Europa League, so I, I don't quite know what's going on now. I thought they were the same trophy, but I don't really know. I think they are, yeah. I think it was the, it was called the UEFA Cup before, and yeah. and now it's called the European Cup or something. But three of them. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some English clubs who haven't even got that many. Um, <laughs> Man City. <laughs> Actually, I don't know whether they got cup winners cups, maybe, but yeah. they haven't got any Champions Leagues or anything like that. So, 34 of the Belgian leagues as well, but the last one was quite a while ago considering yeah. the structure of the club back in 2017 it's kind of been dominated by Bruges recently with Genk getting in there as well well I mean you could since 1935 they've never been out of the top league yeah before that though they were known as the locals it started calling them the lift club right because we've gone up and down all the time okay yeah <laughs> like it, uh, we call them the yo-yo yeah, yeah yeah they call them the lift club so. <laughs> West Brom <laughs> but yeah since 1935 they've never been out of the top league and yeah. it's a bit of a challenge for us as well mate okay what's that since 1946 they have never finished lower than six position in the league well I hope I don't finish lower than six <laughs> <laughs> Jesus but what well, anyway we'll, we'll try that challenge there's a few recognisable faces in this Anderlecht team Jan Vertonghen former Spurs player is yeah, there as yeah. their key player he, he left I remember him leaving there was two centre defenders and I can't make who the other one was Old of Ireland. yeah and we we kept him and and sold him yeah. and I think we definitely done it the wrong way round really Old of Ireland. I thought we should yeah, better no, I, I preferred him fair enough uh, he's 35 now, so he's coming towards the, the back end yeah. of his career. But he's come back to Belgium, of course. He went to Benfica first for a few years after his Tottenham career had ended. But yeah, I think he's always been a good defender. Obviously, he is left-sided, which definitely helps. He's just lacking that pace now. Other than that, he's a very, very good defender on this game. But I think Anderlecht is always quite known, especially to football manager players, as that team to go and hunt for some Belgian wonder kids because yeah, they, they do, have yeah. loads of them. Oh, yeah. Recently, one of them, as we're recording this, has just been signed the day before Durando. I, I believe he went to somewhere like Dortmund. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember quite remember who it actually was, but he was the the kind of the next one on the list. He's 16 years of age at the start of this game, so he's probably still 16 uh, now because it's the fifth of fifth. So signing for a big team in Europe at 16 good. must be quite good. Yeah. But they've always got a good team coming through their development centre. So whether we'll see some of these players come through or not is obviously down to us to make those decisions whether we promote them. But there is a lot of good players already that they have brought in. However. Because of the finances of Anderlecht, they are tending to be loan deals. So, I mean, we've got a couple here. Esposito, Fabio Silva. Again, there are two, like, wonder kids of previous football managers. Of course, we know a little bit more about the Wolves, Fabio Silva, because he's been playing the Premier League. Yeah. But Esposito was one of my favourite players, if not my favourite wonder kid on FM21. They're both at the club. They're not quite as good as what they have lived up to in previous football managers, but for... The Belgian league, which standard is not quite in the top five, but no. just outside it, yeah. just underneath maybe the Dutch league. He's a very good player, Fabio Silva, for this league. I haven't brought anybody else in because money. And if you look at their finances, they've got huge debts. I mean, there's 46 million pound there, 39 million pound left. It started off at 83. So they are in money trouble as well. Yeah. But so it's just down to us really to try and regain what they had, but also try and focus on maybe European qualification to get that around. So tactically, it's a, it's a a formation I've never used before, but it's because they've got players that I don't really want to miss out on using. Yeah. And I might have to sacrifice playing wingers, which they do have a couple of really good ones. However, uh, Francis and Muzu is probably the one winger that would miss out, can also play in those wing back roles. So I think it might be okay us using this formation because he can actually play there as well yeah. and still being used. But there are some positions, for instance, the uh, 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 attacking playmaker roles where I like the likes of Yuskaran and I like uh, the fact that they've got, where is it, Mario Stroikens coming through, who is a centre attacking midfielder slash can play on the wing, so he will obviously be training in that middle uh, area of the pitch there. It's a little bit risky, to say the least, but I'm willing to give it a go. I, I like how it's symmetrical, though. Yeah. Uh, I, at first, I had one as a shadow striker, 
uh, with a DLF on the other side. And I was like, I want to make it more symmetrical. So Fabio Silva up front is going to be classed as our best 11. You can see Vishkaran is in there. Uh, Diawara is a new signing from Roma recently. They also got another Dutch centre back who is quite well known in Wesley Hoyt. Don't know if I butchered that, by the way. But he has played in Antwerp before, so he's played in the Belgian league. Uh, quite a lot of games, 21 games before he went back to Lazio and then came back to us. He's also played in the Premier League as well, 41 games for Southampton there. We've got experience at the back to go alongside these youngsters because the likes of Fushkaran, who is a youngster as well, only 21, breaking into the first team because they've lost a few players recently. He was in their first team. He needs time to develop in game bad, time. He's got seven caps already. Yep, he is uh, quite a good player. Uh, although that Belgian national team is in a bit of a mess as well, isn't it? So yeah. It is a little bit, yeah. And somehow Roberto Martinez, who failed with their golden generation, uh, <laughs> failed upwards uh, and landed the Portugal job. Yeah. But there we go. Uh, so that's our lineup going forward for this season, the season number one. The schedule then, we've played a lot of games, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, it is World Cup year, I guess. But we started off with a 3-1 win there, another 3-1 win. So two back-to-back -back really good starts. UEFA Conference League is the only qualification that they have in this year one. We got through the first round. Then we played Young Boys and beat them 5-3, looking really good. And then they destroyed us 6-0. So we are missing bad, out on uh, on European competition yeah. this year. That is awful. But, I mean, Young Boys are probably one of the best teams in that UEFA Conference League. Uh, another team we drew one all with is Union. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the Union story. No. It's quite a short one, but basically I think it's the same owners own a Premier League club. I believe it might be Brighton. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, but they've transformed the club from a second division team and they almost won the league last year. They were very close. They've run away with it for a long time and unfortunately uh, threw it away. But they are an old club who's won quite a lot in the past, 1935 being the last time that they've ever won it. And they've transformed into almost winning it uh, last season. So they've well, got a really good strange team. there. Go back to that picture again. With the snow. No, not the snow. It's the shirts, look. They oh, got, yeah. They've got two sponsors. Yeah, it's probably the same company, I guess, because it's the same um, font, isn't it? So yeah. I know a couple of times Man United have had a font which has had like two different things on it. So that's probably it. But nice colours, though. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's good, good, yeah. That's the schedule-wise, then. So we started off the season quite a lot. We've actually played seven games in the in the league. We are finishing there in... Well, finishing. We are in third place, as it stands, quite far behind Charleroi, Charleroi uh, who is also a new team who has managed to... Not new, but they've submerged themselves as a top team in the last few years through money and stuff like that. So we've got our work cut out for us, to yeah. say the least. Where is Club Bruges? They're down in ninth. They're not doing very well to start no. off with, the, the former champions. But that is the, the how we're going to look at. Now, the Belgian league is very complicated, but it's also the most fun league ever to play in because you think you are, like, way behind top going into the final stages, and then all of a sudden, everybody gets their points halved, and then you go into a top division and a bottom division, uh, right. and you play against each other just from that, yeah. and then it all changes. A bit so like the Scottish Premier League, yeah, but... Kind of like that, yeah. yeah. yeah but I don't think they get their points no, halved, do they? They don't know. But, I so. yeah, it gets, it gets halved, and then it's just hilarious. That's, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we'll see how that plays out. Let's simulate this first season. Right, first season, then we finish in second place. It's good. Yeah. I'll take that from where we were. Played 40, only got 40 points. That's only one point per game. Two teams behind us as well. Like they, um, that's our rivals as well. So it a is good result. indeed. But if you look at this, it's sad times. Because this is the first stage. We were top. 66 points. Then everybody gets their points <laughs> half. And then it goes to the championship group. And Genk were crowned champions. They pulled it yeah, back. We, we lost it at we the end of the season. Two season. games out of the last five, six. Yeah. Genk beat us to win the league at home. There you go. So, I mean, I'm not saying like I want an instant change to the Premier League, but how exciting would that be? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because all the best teams play against each other towards the end of the season. Because how many times, like, I'm thinking in the past few years where Man City or even Liverpool, when they won it, they were running away with it. And it was almost like... Oh, well, let's just focus on every other team yeah. uh, and who's getting top four or who's getting relegated. In this scenario, it's like... Everything just changes everything again, Because they're all playing against each other. Yeah. You've all had you, you've had your massive lead, half. Uh, in the profile then, do we have any goal scorers? Fabio Silva scored 30 goals this season. Uh, Yari Vishkaran, though. Most assists, 
and one of the highest average ratings with the most man matches. So he's your MVP good, of the yeah. year. Yeah, absolutely. So quite exciting stuff. There is a cup competition now. The Kronk Cup, I believe it's called. Crocky Cup. Uh, they finished quarter finalists, knocked out by Lomo SK, which is not that good. No. On penalties as well. They are the division below us. It's a awful. really bad result. Yeah, awful. They actually went on and won it. <laughs> That's <laughs> mental, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That is absolutely mental. They beat Westerlo in the final. That's fantastic stuff. So fair play to Lomo SK. 37 goals for Fabio Silva, but he will be going back to his, his club. Wolves now, and unfortunately, we don't have a buyout clause. It's just a simple loan deal, so we'll be losing 37 goals next season. It's not good. Without anything, been able yeah. to do anything about it. So we only have 12 million, but no wage budget either. <laughs> So we're going to have to try and find somebody to sort that out for us. Overall, though, first season. Pleased with that. Second, yeah. Yeah. It is disappointing we didn't win it, considering yeah. we were top. I think we're going to have to get used to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. It could yeah. it could swing in our favour. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, we could do the opposite next season. Yeah. We? Okay, then. We'll go forward to second season. Let's see how we get on. Okay, we spent £4.2 million out of that £12 million. That's obviously because of the wages. Uh, we didn't really spend that much money on any of the players either. But our best signings were all free transfers, which tends to be the scenario that we have when we're at these clubs. Yeah. The first one, I really like this signing. Sher Endor, who is an Italian slash Senegalese centre midfielder who can also play in centre attacking midfield. So obviously two positions that we actually use. Really good considering he's only 19. Yeah. Six foot three as well. He's a bit of a monster yeah. coming into this. And I think it, it, it's one of those perfect players that fits in with the Andalect way of bringing him in really young and developing them quite nicely. Yeah. Playing uh, in Benfica. And he played for Benfica's B team all of last season. And he's already got a goal this season in five good. games. Yeah. So he's a good start to the season as well. Our striker, we've bought two of them. One of them we'll recognise. But this one, I've never heard of. And I'm like, oh, he's quite good. So we have Mbala Enzola, who is Angola or French. 27, six foot one. Great aggression, which means like pressing forward. You'll yeah. press from the front really good well. Strength as well, balance. Yeah, good t teamwork and work rate and everything like that. The physicals. Absolutely fantastic player. Uh, so I really like the look of him. And bring him in as a free transfer. He scored two goals, two assists so far. He got 10 goals last season in the Serie A for Spezia, who I probably would say got relegated. Yeah. So 10 goals is quite good. Really yeah, good, yeah. Uh, so it's a free transfer. I think that's a really good signing. And then we brought in the Chilean maestro of Ben Brereton Diaz, who I actually think is just signed to go elsewhere yeah. in real life too, but I can't remember where yeah. he is going. Uh, but of course, he was in his last year of contract at Blackburn. So yeah, uh, 24 years of age. We've got two really good strikers now who have come in for in replacement of Fabio Silva. And of course, the Sebastiano Esposito was another striker who was only on loan. So yeah. we actually needed two strikers, really. We spent £1.6 million on another Italian, uh, Luca Ranieri, who I had, is he Claudio Ranieri's son? I need to remember if this is correct, if he is. It doesn't say it is, whether he's a relation. He would, he would say it else, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, so Luca Ranieri from Fiorentina, he's a left back, very good player, 24 years of age. I think he, because he plays in that wing back role, it gives us more strength and depth there. I believe one of the players that we had there left on a free transfer, so it's good to bring him in. He is out for the first part of the season though, so that's disappointing, but we still got some players who can play there. And then Raul Gustavo, he is gonna be a, a replacement slash squad player for for uh, Jan Vertonghen, who is obviously 38 yeah. I think now, still wants to play. But this guy is younger, also left-footed, so he plays on that left-side centre-back and still has some very similar, very well-groomed Yeah, he is, uh, yeah. Fella. I was so, just thinking that. Yeah, nice little eyebrow slit there, very well-groomed. and Definitely got turkey teeth. <laughs> yeah. But there's no way there is real teeth, definitely not. But we brought him in from Corinthians, £2.7 million. Uh, he's played four games for us so far, and he's done quite well as well. So they're all from the bench, though, but... I mean, Vertonghen, being that age, you might have to replace him. Yeah, he's only going to last 60, 70 minutes, isn't he? Yeah. So we are still using this because, of course, we were so close to actually winning the league last year. We might as well give it another go with our actual players that we brought in instead of just loanies. Yeah. And I'm going to try and play Raul Gustavo as much as possible this year. But let's take a look at the schedule because we have played an extortionate amount of games again. Uh, and this time, we still got knocked out by Young, young Boys. boys. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, but it was in the Europa League instead. So Champions League, we were in the Champions League knockouts to begin with, and we got eliminated from that by Sigma. 5-1 loss there. It's really disappointing at home when we did the we did we, the easy work 3-0 away. Well at all in Europe, are we? No. What uh, did I say before we started this? We were the best team in Europe yeah, from Belgium. We're not performing like it, no. that's for sure. We also then played Panathinaikos, but we absolutely obliterated them 11-0 on aggregate across the two legs there, and then eliminated by Young Boys... So they are a bit of a rival at the yeah. minute. In the league, though, we started off against Club Bruges. Nil nil draw. This is a good draw. Yeah, it I is think. at home, but it's, yeah. it's a good win. Oh, good, good draw. Win. Good draw. <laughs> a good win, though, was Antwerp. That's yeah. the reason why, because Ben Brereton Diaz, he scored four goals in this game. Then he got a hat trick in the game for Circle Bruges. I never know how to say that. I'm really sorry. But then we lost to St. Truiden. It's going to be one of the most difficult. Belgian people are going, oh my God. Yeah, what's he doing? How is he butchering all of these names? I'm sorry. But yeah, we are struggling against what seems to be teams that we should be beating. But then, yeah. obviously, Antwerp and Club Bruges. Right, because it doesn't matter until they get to halfway through the season when they cut it all, then we yeah. play. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah we, did, we did it the other way around last year. Yeah. And then we learnt from our lesson. And Ghent, we ended the se ended the uh, pre-season here. or well, pre-season. Start of the season. one or draw before we finished the transfer window. I mean, we started off the season, we're in seventh place right now with eight points, but only two points though behind Genk at top because everybody's been dropping points, which is obviously a good sign. Yeah. But no European football again. Unfortunate. That's bad, isn't it? We'll simulate the second season then and see how we get on. Second season, we're in second place again. Genk is a long top. way off this time. This time they're a long way off. Now the league table, they were actually top to begin with before they had their points yeah. halved, uh, and then we were still 11 points behind them there. So that was a big gap for us to try and chase. The best thing about it, though, or the the good thing to take from this, is that when we went into the championship group, we managed to catch up with Standard, who dropped down into fourth. And we did finish in that Champions League qualification slot instead of the Europa League yeah. one. Because we know we, we're we talking about the money situation. Yeah, we need it. We? we need Champions League money. Yeah. So uh, it's time to, to try and get into that, even though it was just on goal difference by the looks of it. Talking about European competitions. Well, in 1982-83, you've already mentioned that they won the UEFA Cup. They beat Benfica 2-1 on aggregate. Yeah. The following season, they got to the semi-final and they had to play Nottingham Forest. Oh, a bit of a dubious, dubious one this is. They actually won 3-2 on aggregate. They lost the away leg again, not in far to the city ground, 2-0. Yeah. And they won the home game 3-0. But the middle goal was a penalty. And there was a dubious penalty. Right. And I watched it the other day as well. And, well, how this referee didn't see it as a dive, I don't know. This player's cut. He's gone down the line and he's got the ball. He's cut inside, just gone into the 18-yard box and then cut back again. Yeah. And as he's cut back, the Forest player's gone like that. And he's just dived right over him. The referees standing right beside him, like right behind him, like that, gone straight the gap to a penalty. And they're all giving it out. Of course, they score the penalty, then they score another one. They won the game 3 2. Yeah. They actually lost on penalties in the final against Spurs. Yeah, oh, that's why he's bringing it up. No, 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 no. But later on, after the final, they were found out that they got they bribed the referee. Oh, you naughty boys. <laughs> <laughs> they paid him, I think it was in the region of 27,000 to make sure that they got into the final. Wow. Because they're the financial thing about it. So, uh, yeah, they got done for that. You naughty <laughs> boys. Never did I think that would happen in Belgium. Yeah. Come on, that is... A bit naughty, that was, well, wasn't it? Well, okay. Okay, let's take a look at the profile of the league then. Did we have a top scorer? Ben Brereton Diaz got 28, but that's a very high goal scoring league. Uh, 30 there from Paul Anuachu, who is like six foot ten, something like that. Six foot seven. And then Stipe Parika also got 30. Enzola got a good average rating, though, and Endor got the most assists. So we are very much spreading it out. We got yeah. the most yellow cards everywhere, but we are playing getting stuck in. So that's always going to be the case. Now, let's take a look then at the cup. Winners of the Get Crocky in. Cup. That's what we wanted to yeah. see. We haven't done anything decent right now until this. We beat Beershot in the final, which is another like quite historic Belgian team to yeah. be fair. They are also rocking the, the purple. I will say, yeah, the same colour cap. Yeah, very much so. so we've that... always played in purple as well, apparently. Oh, really? I looked, yeah, I looked that up and we've always played in the purple. Yeah, so... I've got an Anderlecht kit somewhere, but oh, yeah. I think it's in the wash because yeah. I wore it to training the other day. But there we go. So we are cup winners. 2-1 in the final. Fantastic stuff. There was it like a late one, I want to see. 78th minute by Brent. Bert and Diaz, but we were down to 10 men because Diawara got himself sent off and then we scored. Get in. So 
Well, fair play, fair play. We went on and won that. We were wearing white as well. Yeah. We were wearing, we were wearing yeah, white. We were wearing I white. struggled <laughs> with that one, didn't I? <laughs> okay, how much money do we have going into next season? Six, Six million. million. That's not good. No. We are losing quite a lot of players as well, but it's because I'm not renewing some of the contracts of the players that I don't really intend on using because the squad is quite bloated. Trying to give us some wage budget uh, so that the finances aren't too bad because debts and loans, it doesn't look like it's coming down that fast. No, we'll try and bribe some referees as well. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we're going to have to get into European competitions. Right, third season then, who do we bring in? One sign-in. <laughs> One sign-in. Uh, we spent £8.25 million on him. The reason for it is he played for Union last year. He's homegrown as well, which did play in a factor because I've realised I haven't really bought that many Belgian players. Yeah. And I needed to for, obviously, registration purposes. He's a very good player, especially for this league. And I wanted to keep him in the league. Dante Van Zier. £8.25 He scored 21 goals last year, 16 before that. He's already scored a few for us as well, look. He's a bit of a goal scorer. Yeah, happy with that. So I think it's quite important. And any play for our rivals come through there, you can make yourself all come on. Uh, so, £8.25 million is quite a high amount for a player in this league to no, go to yeah, a player in this yeah. league. I think it was his minimum fee release clause, to be fair. But I think it's going to be worth it. Now, tactically, it also has led me to make a bit of a change. We're going three up top. Ooh. It's literally a simple switch of putting a player here, up there, and moving this to DLF because he is quite good at that, Van Zier. Uh, he has that coming back, drops deep. I oh, know it's not him, it's. Ben Barrett and Diaz has uh, comes deep to get ball. So it's one of the situations where it's like, well, if you want to do that, you carry on. Van Zier can be the likes to break the offside trap. And Inzola is the pressing forward. Yeah. So that's what it's going to look like. If we go with best 11, sometimes it doesn't lay it out like that. No, it does. That's good. Uh, it just switches those two round, which would be like that. So the only bad side of it is Yari Vescarin gets dropped. However, I don't think it's too bad because... Endor can also play in these roles too, and if he's like classed as our best midfielder, as soon as one of these are out, he'll drop in. The Scarum will go up there. It's a good rotation purposes, yeah. so that's what I quite like about it. So uh, we have also lost Jan Vertonghen. He's not like gone. Yeah. <laughs> We're not like. Does anybody know where Jan's gone? No, he's <laughs> he's, uh, he's left the club uh, out of contract. He's retired now. Duranville is also been promoted to the first team to play a bit part now he is 18 i think but he's also available for the b team uh and i've been looking at trying to loan him out as well there's a couple of clubs he wanted to loan him out but not given first team football that's no good to no, me that's right yeah so i want to make sure because he hasn't really developed that well and that's my worry so i want to give him some first team football as well as making sure he's playing as much as possible which i have done i've actually started in the game as well so that's quite important i think to me uh, but there is a few other players coming through our youth academy. So for all you Patreon members, there's a couple of like regens coming through who look quite promising too. There's a winger here, which is a shame because we're not really intending on using wingers, but we could uh, change them. Uh, this guy looks really good. Vordeckers, 17. He looks really good. Yeah. Considering we're now playing three up top, I'm yeah. looking at him going, well, in two years' time, we could be using, using him. You. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. So that's definitely something. So Patreon members, always have a look at the developmental center if you're going to take this Andalek side on on the £5 tier. And thank you to everybody who does uh, at patreon.com forward slash Megaloot Gaming. Really do appreciate it. Dad's going to set you a challenge at the end of this five years. Okay. So that's the tactic then. Schedule wise, how have we started off? Well, we've qualified for the Champions League. Get in. That's important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which was a bit of a tough one as well because we beat Strum. Oh, starting off, we beat Red Star 6 0 and 3 0. So it was all the way up here. We didn't even play any friendlies. Like, we went straight into the Super Cup. Then we played uh, some uh, European Championship qualifications. So we beat Red Star. In between that, we had a league game. We won that. We then won the next league game 4 0. So, I mean, they're not as good teams. I'll tell you what, the first like, six, six, five games? Pretty good. By nil. Yeah. Then it all Great went defense. a little bit downhill yeah. once we started playing Strong Grats because uh, we beat them 3 1. Then we lost away, but we beat them on penalties yeah. to qualify. But we, but we beat Club Bruges in between. That's a good result. Yeah. But then Antwerp, we lost, and Genk, we got battered 4 0. So, Hajuk split, which is another team everybody keeps on saying uh, we should do from maybe the less popular leagues. It's definitely a team that I'm thinking that we should be doing in maybe a month's time once uh, we've started doing some more bigger clubs around Andalect and then come back to, you know, like a smaller nation to try and build. Uh, Hajuk split is definitely up there, but we beat them 3 0 on aggregate after a 0 0 draw away from home. And then we beat Standard 4 0. So our Champions League, uh, the games that we've got to play in the Champions League now, 
I'm looking at this and going, we could bloody qualify, you know? Yeah. We actually could, can we? There's only a couple of games in there where I'm like, all right, you know, that's the just last, a... The last two I'd be worried about, yeah. to be honest with you. Leipzig's always going to be difficult. Yeah, Ajax, it's, be not it's, it's possible. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we've had a lot harder draws yeah. in the Champions League in previous times, but there we go. Okay, well, we'll simulate it. We'll see how we get on. And we're back winning league titles. Yes. We needed so that, didn't we? Yeah. We needed that after a, a couple of seasons where it didn't look too good for us. But we come back, 68 points. What, a what an end of the season. Yeah. We beat all the teams around us, which is the reason why, obviously, we've catapulted ourselves into that. So that is the league table. And then the championship group, we finished on 58 points. We finished five points above them, and we won the last five games there too. So oh, I think it's the same five games, to be fair. But yeah, very special season for us. Did we do the double then? Did we do the double? Uh, we had Inzola score 31 goals. He had the highest average rating. Van Zier got 11 assists there, which is really good. But the man of the matches is all Anderlecht players. Yeah. And it's our front three as well. Brilliant. The best thing about, I think, one of these tactics is that if one of them is not firing all cylinders, you've got two other players who possibly yeah. could be, which is always a problem when you only have like a one striker formation. I've always found three striker formations are just more fun, but yellow cards were still racking them in. Uh, competitions then. Did we win another cup? No, that's oh, the Super Cup. Super Cup, yeah. Ooh, Calm down. I thought, I thought we did them for a minute. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> we were not down the league phase, unfortunately, in the Champions League. Oh, well. Uh, the sixth round by Beer Shot, it? who we beat in the final of the season before. Yeah. So they had a lot of fun beating us in that. They knocked us out 2 1 there. Who won them in the final? Club Rouge beat Standard in the final there. League phase. We were down in 30th, so we were six places away from qualifying. We won two games, Salzburg and Partizan. We drew one Sol against Ajax. Salzburg as well finished fifth, look. so that was a hell of a result They for us. did really well, yeah. the Austrians. So they only lost two games. One was against us, one was against Liverpool. They won six. What? <laughs> look at that. They beat AC Milan, Barcelona, Barcelona <laughs> Ajax, PSV and Partizan. Fair play. Well, they deserved to be there, didn't they? They did, yeah. So they went through. Imagine if they went on and won it. That would be hilarious, wouldn't it? No, Real Madrid won it. Oh, well. Of course they did. Of course they did, uh, did yeah. In extra time. <laughs> so there we go. But that's not a bad season for us, though. We, I think the main important I, thing is I mean, winning the league. I think that's good, yeah. Winning the it's league. Good we, season, huh? we got ourselves European we football. We got ourselves in the Champions League. For financial situations yeah. is going to be the most important because that's going to start clearing this debt as much as possible now because, you know, it, it's still quite a lot. Net debt of 54, but remaining there looks like it's about £26 million, still paying off quite a lot. I think for teams, for teams like this, it is just... Qualifying for that Champions League and trying to get into the, the knockout stages. That to them is 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 a bonus then. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they're not expected to go on and win it nowadays, are they? With the no. teams like Real Madrid and all that, Man no. City coming through with the money and all that. So I think just getting into the knockout stages of the Champions League is a result. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, you know, I think the last real shock one was Porto in 2004. Yeah. And if you think that was right when money started coming in, because that's when Chelsea was bought. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So that's when money really started to play a factor. That's when in the managers were. were, were Taking the team to where they should be. Yeah. Jose Mourinho was winning it. Exactly, yeah. And you know, then he moved on to Chelsea and he got it there at Chelsea then, didn't he? Yeah. Because so. in the 90s, you had a few uh, like upsets, I'd say. Dortmund were one of them, I think, in whenever it was 96 or 98. Yeah. I mean, Ajax, of course, you could say, weren't really a shock because they had an unbelievable players. team. Yeah. But it's because money wasn't pulling those players away from. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. At that point, you know, Red Star. Um, were a, a team that were very good. I, I, there was a couple of Yugoslavian clubs actually, weren't there? Yeah. Before the breakup of Yugoslavia, he was really solid. Late 80s, early 90s, and then got pulled away. Mm. Uh, and I think AC Milan took quite a few of their players, didn't yeah. they? But yeah, I mean, it's, it is well, a shame. You had the Italian league to pull, pull in some good players, didn't you? Yeah. During the 80s and all that. And then the Premier League kicked in, then, didn't they? And, yeah. and then that's where the money really went then, didn't it? And that's where you always find all your best players then. Yeah, that's it. Apart from your top two teams in each country then, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, who still have pulling power. Yeah. Uh, we've got £20 million next season with a decent wage budget. There you go, see? That's what happens. So really Champions League football yeah. is going to reward us with that. And we're losing less players. That is a centre midfielder who's been playing quite a lot for us. But again... It's a player that I'm like, let him, let him go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Let him go. I mean, he's, he's 29 quite, as well. Yeah, he's been quite good. But it means that we can bring in a youth player or bring in another player to replace him instead. Okay, let's go forward. Fourth season, who do we bring in? Well, we actually spent 23.5 million. We brought in quite a few players as well. Of a Three. Lot. Yeah, uh, so the, the the cheapest one was another player from our league. There's two actually players from our league. This was the replacement of Alton. That's the reason why I, I mentioned it, actually. Six foot one, 26 years of age, really good centre defensive midfielder. 
has everything that I like about a defensive midfielder, but he's really good for this level of football. Yeah. Uh, Frank Canute played in Bruges, but, but to the, before that, so he's played quite a, a few different countries, to be fair. He's been on loan in France and stuff like that, but he has been playing first in football in our league and seems to be doing very well. 7.27 average rating for a team that was Good. nowhere near the top. Yeah. £3 million pound as well as a bargain, yeah, really. Definitely, yeah. So bringing him in, I think, is quality. Uh, we do also have Jürgen Eckelkamp. Eckling Camp nailed it. <laughs> Twenty-five years of age. It's another player in that position, but it also gives us options good further forward. Player. Absolutely, yeah. So six foot two, twenty-five years of age. Good player again from Antwerp as well. Another team in our league. Seven million pound is quite a lot of money, but I, if I remember correctly, I went and go for two different uh, midfielders, and both of them got taken away by Premier League clubs. Yeah. In one of those situations where the Premier League club was not interested until I made an offer. <laughs> I love it when that happens. And then the final player, Ibrahima Bamba. This, by the way, if you are looking for a centre-back on your games who is cheap and you can't find one... Look at the greens on that. Search him. Yeah, he is a good player. Yeah, technically, he's not great. But when you have physicals like this... Yeah. He is. He's uh, quick. Very quick indeed. So Bamba plays in the Portuguese league. It was 12.5 million pounds. But if you're picking him up early, he's, he's not going to He scored two that goals much. for us as well. Like. <laughs> yeah, he has he's never two. scored two goals for anybody. Like. No, he's no. already scored two goals for us in six games. Absolutely. Really good from set pieces. Even though he's not actually like that tall, I don't think. He's only six foot, but he's just really quick. That's a hell of a tall. Yeah, <laughs> for you. <laughs> there we go. So that's some good signings, I think. We're losing a few players on free transfers, like we mentioned, but we are bringing in the money in this scenario. Well, we're not bringing in money where we're bringing the money for european football and spending it uh, i think the one thing i have not been doing which is what andalette are used to doing is selling their best players yeah which happens quite often you see quite quite a few seasons uh, in the past where their best players played all of their season and then a big european club comes in and snatches him away happens quite often for him i've actually realized that well I've, I've, I've noticed that not a lot of clubs were even coming in for my players no it's weird i don't know i don't know the reason why i'm, I'm pretty well, we good managers i've struggled we haven't with really got an outstanding player you know someone who's banging in like 30 40 goals to think. yeah i think yeah. when you get a player like that then someone will come in from but when you just got a good squad of players. Yeah, nobody's you, the standout. You stay away from it, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I mean, you could you could argue that Diaz and Enzola is going to be those two players. Enzola, twelve goals in seven games so far this season. There you go. Yeah. But he is twenty nine. Yeah. So uh, schedule wise, oh, we'll go tactics first. We'll go tactics first. Have we changed anything? We did win the league, so no, we haven't changed anything. We kept it exactly how we want. And Enzola Why would you change be it. There. It's silly too, isn't it? Really? Exactly. Schedule wise, then Look it's at been them greens, all though. green. <laughs> and the good thing is we don't have to play any European games, which been tying us out which i think could yeah. be the reason why you start losing those games early on because you're you're so focused on trying yeah. to qualify and we obviously you're playing very many goals days. neither have we really had no. all those games uh the the super cup beating club rouge four nil is impressive to yeah, me definitely yeah uh five one there three two against genk another good one charlotte charlotte Char <laughs> three nil <laughs> two nil against bruge St. Truiden 6 0 and Ghent 2 1. So let's take a look at our Champions League fixtures. A little bit more difficult this year. Well, that's what we can do, young boys. Just so can... And it's at Revenge. Home as well. Yeah. Revenge against the squad. young boys. Man City is going to be a City tricky home. one. Yeah, I like that. Man City at home. Bring, bring in the money. Bring them to our place. Vincent win, Company win. will be there, won't he? Yeah, win your own games and we're there. Yeah, as long as Burnley haven't <laughs> got a game that night, Vincent Company will be yeah. there. That's his two teams. Man you, City you're saying that. What a team they're playing like. I've watched them a couple of times this season already. Yeah. And they are really playing some good football yeah their best player though plays at Old Trafford mental isn't it <laughs> uh, so Leipzig as well and Benfica another player that we've stole from Benfica of course it would be nice for him to go yeah. and play against his former club and maybe even a game against Jose if he's still there yes he yeah, is of course he is you can uh, have a little glass of wine with, with Jose I'll be there mate happy birthday Jose it was his birthday the other day wasn't it yeah. when, we, when we recorded the last one hopefully then with this fantastic start to the season we can continue that because although Club Bruges are right on our ass there with only losing one game that's very promising with yeah. a 17 goal difference definitely and I'd like to win another Crocky Cup as well yeah. and we won the Super Cup already so that's one in the bag yeah. but before we go any further can you just go back onto the badge our yes. badge because we were formed in 1908 yes and we, we were called um, sporting Club Anderlecht. Yeah. But it, for some reason, and I couldn't find out why, in 1932 or 33, they put the crown on our badge. Right, okay. 
So now we're called Royal Sporting Club. Ah, <laughs> RSC, as you can see in the name. But I couldn't find out why the yeah. crown was added to the, to our badge. Yeah. But that's that's why the crown's there now. And obviously the three stars up there, we've won the league. Is it 30, 30 to- 35 times now? Yeah. Um, so it's for each 10 that's there. But I couldn't find out why they've done it. So if anybody, any of you boys out there know why they, they added in 1933, they yeah. added the crown to our badge and call us now... Royal oh, I see, yeah. Sporting Club. Yeah. Very interesting. I really like their stadium, by the way. Yeah, it's a nice stadium. They played there well from the beginning as well, yeah. Yeah, 1918. But that was that was something I was it was on the brink of my tongue, but I one hundred percent sure, so I didn't say it. When we were talking about the other team back along with the two different ke- uh, two different did you notice one of the, the the sponsors on there was Lotto? Yes. Look at our stadium. Lotto name. Park. How we've, interesting. We've been, spot, we've been sponsored by Lotto. Yeah. So that's what that's what made me pick it up when I seen it and I thought, I know that name from some where do I know it? And I've just seen it now. It's, it's the name of our stadium. Ah, that is interesting, isn't it? I wonder why. If anybody yeah. knows, let us know. Also, if while you're at it, if you've been to the stadium, yeah. of course, let us know what the food's yeah, like. Definitely, yeah. What is the food? Do they sell Belgian chocolates? <laughs> oh. oh so nice Belgian chocolates at half time. Belgian chocolate, yeah. Yeah, well, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? So, yeah. Belgian, Belgian bun. chocolate. Oh, oh a Belgian bun. <laughs> yeah. Don't think they get the Belgian buns over there, do they? They just call them <laughs> they're, buns. They're probably thinking, what the hell is a Belgian bun, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, they're just buns. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what's the food like? I like that stadium though because I've watched like um, when I've seen highlights of in the Champions League and stuff because it's quite steep. Yeah, the atmosphere is always fantastic. Mm. So I like that about that stadium. Very enclosed, nothing. There's not a lot of gap between the first part of the pitch and the, the yeah, actual right first you, seat. So I like that. But okay, That's let's a, that see. That pitch then. is a lot like Plymouth Argyle's pitch actually. Isn't I, it? I was thinking the same. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, we've got like a grandstand on the other side, so it's not yeah, connected. It's only just been com- completed, yeah, isn't it? So it's not connected as much because I like I like the symmetry of the yeah. stadium where it's all one yeah. thing but, but our fans are running on the crowd like that as yeah. well aren't we? yeah I agree on the, on the pitch sorry okay let's see how we do this season then we got a fantastic start let's see if we can progress and maybe even get to the knockout phase of the Champions League Fourth season then, and we are champions once again. Dan. Get in. Very good indeed. So, league table, the first part, we were way ahead. Well, then we deserved to win then, didn't we? 11 points clear, then we had our points half. 55 points to 53. When you look at, close. look at the goals for, like 105 compared to 73 and 82 behind yeah, us. 60 so goal difference. That's what's winning in the league, isn't it? Is yeah. our attack force. Absolutely. Playing that three up top yeah. now with the three strikers that we've got, with, of course, the uh, the backup that we have with through the youngsters when Moddies aren't there. Still not got the top score of the league but I guess That's because we've got actually. three of them yeah. across uh, Tista Ling is in the league which is actually a Toulouse player from youth to gold if you if you know you know uh, so he has now joined the league very good player Barrington Diaz got the highest average rating Vascaran's back getting the most assists which is quite interesting considering he wasn't in the best 11 when our assistant picked yeah. it uh, and Ibrahim Abamba new player joined the league getting the most yellow cards <laughs> go on I love it okay so that's fantastic how have we done in other competitions come on, come so, on. would you rather win the cup or get to the knockout stage of the Champions League get to the knockout stage of the I'm thinking exactly the same yeah. we've already won the cup a couple already, of times yeah. That's right, yeah. Let's see how we did. It was the other way around. Uh, We won the cup. That's exactly what I wanted. That's a double. We've done yeah. a double. We've done if the you look at the, the, the yeah, Super Cup, we've done a treble there. The really. domestic treble, because everybody counts. So everything, the Super Cup. everything in, Ge- in Belgium, we won. Yes. Yeah, domestically, we dominated. Job done then. Yeah. We beat <laughs> Leuven, uh, which I've definitely nailed 3 2 in the final. OH Leuven, who I don't think are usually in this league, whether they are just for this season or not. They are in the Pro League, they are. Uh, so maybe they've just come up. That's an interesting stadium. You oh, see that? Let's, I want to go back flats, to that. Uh, anybody who wants to live in the block of flats got a perfect view oh, of the game, isn't it? that is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Why would you buy a flat in here? Why do you think, mate? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Save me self a season ticket. So that's quite an interesting uh, ground there. But 3-2. We got the job done early as well. 37th yeah. minute we scored. Although they did score the fourth. Uh, but we were 3-1 up at that point. But we won another We won another croaky cup. Or croaky cup. But knocked out in the league phase yet again. 29th we are going up yeah. which <laughs> just not going up quick enough uh, Tottenham's down 26th flat as well so we won two games PSV and we got our own back in young yes, boys 6-1 get in. have that we knocked them down a 34th flat they didn't even qualify uh, then we lost 6 Roma Benfica Leipzig Man City not a bad result against Le- uh, against Man City or Leipzig no. to be fair is it Valencia we lost 6-5 that's it's an interesting yeah. game, isn't it? Do you know what I realised the other day when I thought about this new Champions League thing? There are going to be so many games of football happening at once. Yeah. Because if you think that's 36 teams 
So there's going to be so many games across both nights. I don't know whether it's like that already, because I think we're adding more teams than what there doing... is in the group stage already. I wonder if they're going to be doing, like, there's a load of games this Tuesday and Thursday, uh, this Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Wednesday, and then the following Tuesday and Wednesday, there's another load of games yeah, that not yeah. the teams has already just played. Yeah, obviously That's Football probably... Manager doesn't have the format out no. like that, so whatever it is on the game, it Because you can't have that many be. teams playing the same week, really, could you? Could... I, I would you do the highlights for the te for the TV? Yeah, it'd be that. a nightmare, wouldn't yeah. it? Uh, but all right, that's a fantastic season, though. Domestically done really well. We just need to get somewhere in Europe, I guess. But yeah. Zola got forty-four goals. Van Zier got twenty-five. Diaz and Vishkarin got nineteen. That's good. It's a hell of a season yeah, for Vishkarin. He's yeah. played quite a lot of games there, probably in that centre attacking midfield role, and he's getting better and better. That's what we like to see. So really good stuff. And it's, Shea and it's Dor probably the formation that we're playing that's costing us our European games, really. Yeah, you're probably right. In this country we're good enough to be winning the league yeah so we're going to be dominating games yeah and when you come against the bigger teams like man cities and all that they're just going to love that and they uh, yeah they'll just sit back let you come forward and just run back at you and go yeah. on and coming at us with yeah. those players the <laughs> ideal left us loads of space in behind shirt and door i want to highlight because he is playing obviously a new role for himself he's playing predominantly in that defensive midfielder uh, position but he's 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 done it really well and now yeah. he's a natural in that role and i think his attributes also suggest that too so he's a great player for us in this league to be playing in that role now transfer wise we have 15 million pound for next season we're already losing raul gustavo he just didn't want to sign into the contract <laughs> after a couple of years here he decided to go back to to, to brazil debts and loans 21 million that's gone right down in it couple of seasons the in the champions league goes to show, it? and look Where how many money is. now it's just a bank loan yeah whereas before it was a lot more different things wasn't it yeah so that's that's great final season then hopefully we can wipe that for you for yeah. anybody who's taking it ain't that gonna be far off to be honest with you no it? i don't think so either okay our fifth season transfers we have broke our record that's of great. transfer fee thing, yeah. 16 million pound Mateus lucidi and you think i've never heard of him luke that's because he is a new gen he's a very good new gen center back as well that's the reason why i went all in for him because my scouts rated him very highly uh, and a lot of good things to come from him. He's only 19. Great positioning, good teamwork, work rate, all of those things that I like to look at yeah. before his mentals and his technicals will develop naturally anyway, just through game time. So I think it's actually a really good sign in. He played at Valencia, but not necessarily been playing. So I think maybe we need to give him the game time and that's what we're gonna do. So five games he's played already, he's give us a good average rating. As a starting center back, yeah, yeah, I like enough. him. Yeah. Mehmet Aiden has also come in and he's going to play at right back, or right wing back now. Uh, he is definitely an upgrade for us in that position. 24 years of age from Schalke, 5.75 million pound, two assists in six games. Good. Can't argue with that because he's nope. never got any higher than that previously. No. And he's also got a man of the match as well. 7.17 average rating. And on the other side from AC Milan, we've got Foulon who is from Belgium. He originally came through our academy. We've brought him home and I like that. Yeah. Uh, so we've brought him in 2.2 million pound he isn't going to be starting games he is coming off the bench for those two games but still not bad uh, he played quite a lot last season for copenhagen and got himself free assists so we know he can do the job so 24 million pound is spent big money in the yeah. champions league yeah obviously so let's take a look at the schedule then we have played a lot of games good we've won all again. of them very good we won the yeah. super cup first one definitely three two standard five two two one three one three one two nil against beer shot and Zolte 4-0. So, I mean, we're conceding more goals, but yeah. we're still scoring them. Yeah. Our Champions League games, though, this there's a hard. few interesting ones. This is hard. Yeah. <laughs> Real Madrid, PSG, Chelsea. There's a few interesting Benfica. ones. But there's also some teams in there that we haven't seen previously. Yeah. Rennes and Nice, Fenerbahce. So we're playing against I mean, some new teams. one of those teams that, you know, you catch them on a good night, you can beat them. Yeah, they're very uh, yo yo in regards to the European spots, aren't they? say it's a very lift side. Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. <laughs> but that we need to, if we're, when we're trying to qualify, we need to make sure we get the job done by the Rennes game because yeah. that's we're two gonna win really them difficult too, ones now. <laughs> okay, uh, let's simulate this fifth and final season and see. Well, actually, we didn't have a look at the tactic. The tactic it's going to be the same yes yeah. i don't think we really need to change it uh however vordeckers instead of ben brereton diaz i think we need to play vordeckers it's time to give him first yeah football. i'm not gonna argue with you we're he's doing well so far yeah he's very good but he has that comes deep to get ball which is yeah. the reason why he's in the dlf role and not the break in the offside trap role and he scored three goals and got two assists in six games so far well, there you go. hard to argue with those numbers yep. okay we'll simulate this fifth and final season and see how we get on
Final season, and unfortunately, on the final game of the season, we lost the league. We drew to Club Bruges, and Genk won and went above us. 58 yeah, points. Just finished there compared 56. to us. Like, we lost two games before that as well. Yeah, that's, that's a bad one. That's where we lost it, really. The draw at the last game, we didn't lose it. It was the two games we lost. Yeah, and they have come all the way from fourth, love. Like. Yeah. And look how far behind they were. 15 points behind us. That just goes to show this whole yeah. cutting the league in half. Yeah. It's so much fun, isn't it? Yeah. Union going down as well, considering obviously they've been quite good recently. Quite surprising. They obviously had all their players stripped from them. But yeah, Club Bruges in second place, and they are the ones that cost us eventually. We were walking that league. Absolutely walking that. 13 points clear after 30 games, and we throw it away. Defence let us down. Yeah. Inzola got 30 goals. Bren Barrett and Diaz got 22. Uh, and Zola also had one of the highest average rating with Diaz. Yari Vashkaran with the highest amount of assists. It's very disappointing. Yeah. Maybe we've won a cup and made this season good enough. Yes. Yes. And we Get reached in. a round of 16. Get in. Which is quite impressive. Yeah. So that we've actually gone past the the knockout phase as well. Oh, you were knocked out by Nice, which is disappointing. It is, considering the teams that we had to beat to get into that. Yeah, 5-2. So, did we play the knockout? We did. <gasps> what a game of football that is. <laughs> we knocked out Barcelona. <laughs> that is amazing. 4-3 at the new Camp. That is, that's got to be our best result. Yeah, ever. Uh, yeah. At halftime, we were 3-1. Hang on a minute. Who's playing up front for Barcelona? Hyunmin Son and Lewandowski. When did he leave? <laughs> and, and Sadio Mane. So that's even a better result. What a strike force they had. Unbelievable. I can't believe that. They didn't score until the 82nd and 94th minute in yeah. the second half as well. So we were really walking away with it. That's impressive, isn't Definitely, it? Yeah. That is unbelievable. That is our best result. Oh, by that's, far. That is, I'm. I think that's what a season. Yeah. What a season. I think like you do that, and then when you lose the league, the fans go, oh, "I can't believe we lost the league in the last <laughs> game of the season." Go, did knock out Barcelona the yeah. other way. That was quite good. Okay, league phase. Then let's see. So we finished in twentieth place. That's fantastic. I think we finished above Spurs. Who oh, weren't right. even in it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Barcelona finished eleventh floor. Yeah. Dortmund Are finished top. So how do we can play against Chelsea then? Because we had, didn't we, we can see Chelsea. It now. Uh, so we won three games. We beat Rennes, Fenerbahce, and Nice. Fortunately, we couldn't knock out Nice in no. the knockout stages. We drew two against Chelsea and, and against, against Real Madrid. So we played Real Madrid, drew with them, and then beat Barcelona. Yeah. Hey, what a season. Absolutely. And we lost the three games: four 0 to PSG, lost to Wolfsburg, and lost so we to lost, Benfica. We lost two silly games, and yet we could beat. Yeah. Barcelona and drew to Real Madrid and yeah. Chelsea. Unbelievable. Very, very impressive final season there. Let's take a look, though, at the, the cup because we, we, we were winners of the cup. Yeah. We beat Ghent in the final 2-1, and Zola was the top scorer of that competition. 67th minute, Van Zier got himself the winner. Really fantastic season. So for the final time then, squad-wise, Zola got 43, 35 for Ben Brout and Diaz. Vordek has got 17, Vashkaran got 13, and it does look like Van Zier was the guy who dropped down to the bench, but even still, coming off the bench, he scored nine, got two assists, and he's still very happy. Yeah. So he's not kicking off about no. it. As well as Duranville, played 30 appearances off the bench. Looks like he's playing up top. Looks like he's developing quite nicely yeah. at the age of just 21. So some really good players here for you guys to take a look at. I know people are going to mention it. Marco Kana, Luke. You didn't use Marco Kana. He's good, but unfortunately, we couldn't really bring him into the team when we had just better players playing in him. So that's just the way it goes. And Mario Stroikens didn't really develop into anything that I thought he would. And we actually didn't really give him that much game time, but when I did, playing up front, didn't really score during preseason no. or like the um, the start of the season. So never really used him after that. Uh, okay then. So Patreon members, you have 30, oh, 32 million pound. Every time, isn't it? <laughs> I need to start doing six year rebuilds. Yeah. 32 million pound to spend next season. That's your what you've got. You will have to unfortunately qualify through the Champions League because um, I don't think the we we have automatics. So yeah, you you'll be put into the uh, qualify for the Champions League, but probably be through the, the qualification stages. You might yeah. have to do that. A couple of early games then. Yeah. So, Dad, what is the challenge then for people taking this over on the Patreon? Obviously, win the league again. Yeah. You've got to win the league again and, and then try and get further than what we did in the Europe. Yeah. In Champions League. So, we get, get past the 16th. Yeah. I'd like to add a challenge. Go on then. Because we are currently at 36 
leagues. If you win a four out of those five, you yeah, add an extra badge. star. Yeah, there's your challenge. And there's your big challenge. Yeah. Add an extra star to the Andalek badge if you can. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Let us know if you manage to do it. Of course, thank you very much, everybody. The only other thing I would comments. like to say is don't forget to push that subscribe button. Yes. I've set him a target. I would like you to try and get it. 1,000 by the end of the year. Yeah, so see if you can do it for us, folks. Get, it, get, us, get us that plaque if yeah. we can. Right, thank you very much for watching. We'll be with you next Monday for another rebuild. And of course, if you have any suggestions, make sure they're not stupid ones and put them down in the comment section. I'm not doing your local club gates head. <laughs> thank you very much. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Today, we are covering our first ever Brazilian rebuild. We've had a lot of requests to do yeah. Brazil. Yeah. I think Santos is probably the best team for a rebuild. Yeah. They're still in the top league, but they're not doing so well. I think they finished. I think like they're 30. one of the teams as well that if if you if you know your football, you've heard about them. Oh, definitely. You I know? mean, you know, some of the best players ever have come from Santos. <laughs> one of the best ever, Pele. Yeah. Um, and of course, Neymar. Neymar started there. Yeah, Santos. So he's a 15-year-old. Yeah. For Santos, which I, I was surprised. I didn't know that until I read, yeah. read the facts. I remember when he burst onto the scene. There was like yeah. clips of him, and he had stupid hair yeah. and was doing all these tricks. And it was like, who's gonna sign him? Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. of course, he went to to Barcelona. No, uh, little so, quick little fit, Go uh, on, fact silly one this is but it, it, it was interesting when i read it they were formed in 1912 yeah on the 14th of april the day before the titanic sank really yeah but they were the, they were the cause <laughs> that was that was it <laughs> santos is born there's a, there's an there's an yeah. iceberg somewhere now i actually was like you know when i seen the santos page knowing how big their history is and how many competitions that they've won i mean if you look at their honors like they've won so oh, many yeah. different competitions uh, around the world and obviously from like continental and in brazil but their stadium is not as big as what i thought no, it would we, be when you just showed me 16, just now i was surprised 000. at that yeah i thought because obviously we see the crowds in brazil yeah yeah. There's a lot of big oh, followed yeah. clubs, and they, yeah. especially in the in the capital. Obviously, uh, Santos not from the capital, but I thought there would be a bigger stadium than that. Yeah. But okay, fair enough. Now I haven't made any transfers so far this season. We can see here uh, the two signings that already come in on loan, uh, and I actually what I what I kind of made of a little bit of a mistake is that this has gone back to the seventh of March, so we're basically replaying the season which just happened in real life. Yeah. Instead of starting the one which is just about to happen and it's just because of like when you do the brazilian league you can choose what year yeah i just pick, picked the earlier one not realizing it was 2022 <laughs> so some of these obviously is going to be a little bit off unless you were to start right now and do from this season onward uh, but there we go so they've actually lost a couple of players as well some key players the likes of kaiki who was a really good center back uh he moved to almeria uh leo but gone to the same club and Mourinho as well who was a good right winger for them moved to flamengo who is pretty much the champions and the best team in brazil at the minute uh they've been winning the copa libertadores as well yeah alongside palmeiras so there's some big teams in brazil but another thing that's a little bit weird is the competitions oh god there's so many there are in there there is so many different competitions <laughs> in brazil uh, so forgive me if I say the name wrong or we look at something and oh, it's gonna not get, correct. We're going to get gonna wrong get on this one. Wrong. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> Brazilian, I might be quite good with the names, but the competitions I might yeah. get wrong. So yeah. you always come here for some mistakes. <laughs> so to begin with, now this is the main competition, the main league, which is, starts on the 24th of April. Right. Now I have gone into the point where you can register players because I believe the transfer window is still open, but else I'd end up playing half the season. Yeah. Because uh, they don't really have a, a short window. So we just like we just want to call that Serie A then, are we? <laughs> See this <Just> kind of. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know. So the competition we're in right now, we'll take a look in a sec. But first off, we'll look at the tactics. So it's a very simple Santos season one. We've got a complete forward, winger on attack, inside forward on the right. It's so simple. It's unbelievable yeah. because a lot of their team right now just fits this for one. But we don't know with the fact of playing uh, a, a, an awkward tactic or a, or a different type of tactic experimenting across such a long period of, of, of the season yeah it might really wear out the players mm. so what i'm doing right now is just this is the our best best 11 we've got some really talented players up front now marcus leonardo is a youngster 18 years of age and he's a starting player uh, in that complete forward on attack it's fantastic as well really good potential on the game same as angelo he's only 17 but he's the starting right midfielder yeah. now that marino has left and on the left hand side we've got the lonely sultan 
Salcedo, uh, Jefferson, who is quite a good Colombian. He's an old boy, is he? Venezuelan, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I mean, you say he looks at He's only 24. Yeah, that's he's what I mean. five foot three. He's two inches taller than you, Dad. Hey, um, yeah, I was taller than that. <laughs> <laughs> now, the rest of the side is not quite as good as what our front three suggests, but we do have some really good youngsters as well uh, that we can rely on in the future. Obviously, Santos's youth academy is well known as being incredible, and we have some really good players in here. The likes of Jer at centre back is a good wonder kid on this game that we possibly will be integrating into the team a little bit earlier than what we usually would for a 17 year old, but it's he's almost ready. Looking back over the history as well, when they had success again, they, a lot of the players moved on. As they normally do, yeah. yeah. as they do, yeah. So they had a lot of success and then they would drop and then it would build up again through the Youth Academy again and drop again. So yeah. they're quite used to doing this. Yeah, absolutely. So. A very, very much a rebuild inside, aren't yeah. they? That's the tactic. Schedule wise, on how we have played so far, it seems like it's going okay That's but true. we've got to remember a lot of these teams are either experimenting themselves not playing or not signed all their best players because yeah. maybe they just sold them and maybe they don't really give a crap about this competition <laughs> i don't really know like let me know in brazil do is this first competition is this kind of just like pre-season friendly yeah, that, that's Serie A yeah, we've only got two games left in it and then we changed to the, the other one, one now yeah, yeah. so yeah. this Pali style Serie A yeah. I don't know obviously the, the exact translation but I'm guessing it's kind of like a pre-season competition Yeah. but we're winning it right now that's fair enough uh, so 25 points yeah whether it counts as like something really good I don't know the last time we won it was in 2016 this is our group and what obviously there's a few big names which aren't in it like Flamengo and Palmeiras the, yeah. the capital countries are not in this oh Palmeiras is in it sorry so but then you go into the main competition and then everybody else is in it I don't really know like it's it's so complicated. Uh, this is the main competition, which is where you get relegated. Come up. There's a Red Bull team in there now. Oh, just seeing that. Yeah, I yeah, was going to mention that. They've done quite well to get themselves promoted in the last couple of seasons. They've got a couple of teams that call themselves Atletico as well. Like, yeah, so, so well. Um, Getting their Spanish, Spanish connections. Yeah, Mineiro. There's, a, there's, a, there's some really good teams in Brazil with some fantastic young players as well. So we'll find out how we do at the end of the season. Let's simulate the first season. Yeah, go for it. Okay, first season, fourth place. Do you know what? I'll take that. Yeah. Flamengo are the best side in the league, as a as you can see, by 15 points. They've won it by a country mile. Uh, so they are champions of Brazil in whatever this competition is. So Santos in fourth place, 72 points. That's decent considering where they actually finished, which I believe was down in 13th, maybe. Right. Uh, so the top six, they go for the Copa Libertadores, the Champions League of South America. Yeah. The next five or six clubs, they go to the Copa Sudamericana. Nailing off. Pronunciations. <laughs> the Brazilians are going, no, you didn't. Yeah. Uh, they go to the Copa Sudamericana, which is the Europa League version. So right. you can finish 12th and then next season still win the Europa League version of South America. <laughs> That's which I find is amazing. Not bad that we're in the, the, so they the, get, the they big got four ball down then. Are they four come up? Four That's gone down, as well, yeah. They? Out of the 20. So uh, the opportunities are massive, but also the relegation yeah. is also big quite as well. So there's some big clubs that have gone down recently mm. as well. Cruzeiro being one of them. They've, they've gone down recently, uh, who was a big club. And I think actually won it past like 2014. They're now relegated. Mental. So we've done quite well. Fourth place. I will definitely take that. We only lost eight games across the season against some of the teams that you'd expect us to beat. But some of the games, Palmeiras and Flamengo, where we've lost in the away legs there, uh, 4 0, 1 0. We'll take it. I see their um, their goal difference, and I've noticed it's over 38 games, so it must that must be what they normally play of a season. Because when Pele signed in 1956, yeah, and he made his debut in 57, their 58 season was known as a record season, and I don't think it's been beaten yet. They actually scored 143 goals in 38 games, they only conceded 40 goals. Wow. And Pele scored 58 of those goals. Wasn't he like 16, 17? Oh, yeah, well? he just signed with him. He's yeah, been yeah. there for one season. Yeah. But that was the same year as um, Brazil, Brazil World Cup. won the World Cup, which would have been Pele's first yeah. World Cup that he won. As a 17-year-old, As think. a 17-year-old, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, so that first season, a proper season for Pele, wins his World Cup. He's got the record for the amount of goals in one season. Yeah. And his team gets the record amount of goals for... A season, as yeah. Well. So what? I mean, gold difference. I don't think that'll ever be beaten. No. So what a record that is to have, isn't it? Insane. Really? Absolutely insane. Not bad. Let's have a look at other competitions then and see if we manage to win anything. Uh, obviously, we were topping in something. 
Now, right, uh, let's have a look. So quarterfinal in the Sudamericana, which is the Europa League. Yep. We got to the quarterfinals there. Let, oh, I'm curious to see who did win it. Uh, Independiente de Val, which is uh, an Ecuadorian side. So that's great for them that they've managed to win that. Quarterfinal against Vasco da Gama in another cup, which is Nan Mineiro's managed to win. Uh, now, this one, was this the one that we were winning to begin with? So we finished in second in oh, that. Oh, it was just cover of the death end. Yeah, it? that's really unfortunate we lost only two games yeah. in that competition marcus leonardo got uh the, the top goal scorer i think that's a great season to start off with yeah uh definitely now marcus leonardo he was our top scorer of the the whole season after 55 games 37 goals fantastic for a 19 year old 18 slash 19 uh we got our center midfielder there coming through with 20 goals that's center good. midfielder on attack and on the right hand side angelo already wanted at 17 years of age 13 goals and 10 assists and on the left hand side Yefsen saltado who is going to be leaving less we managed to secure him on I mean, a permanent that, that's how good in four players you get in the close to 70 odd goals that's good yeah really. so, absolutely so, gotta be happy with that really good really good season so far the only trouble is in brazil is that although players cost a little bit of money now you don't get, you don't get given any yeah. money so i noticed in football manager especially in the last sort of like five to ten years players from brazil are a little bit more expensive now whereas in argentina they are a lot cheaper still yeah but you don't get the budgets like the brazilians do unless you make one of those big player sales mm. which obviously you don't really want to do because no, else... you're selling your best player then you? exactly and you have to do a rebuild within a rebuild so we'll go forward season two and let's see what we can do in the transfer market okay in the transfer market i sold one player that was Raniel to Gremio, who is a striker, uh, 26. We didn't really play him last season. He was a little bit unhappy for the fact that we didn't use him. We only played him one game across the whole season. Uh, he didn't even score in that. Now, on the transfers on the ins, it doesn't look like we have signed anybody, but I have got a loan deal to bring somebody in on a permanent in Daniel Ruiz, who is a Colombian player. Predominantly plays out on that left-hand side, but can play in the number 10 role should we need him to. He is joining on a permanent deal. He's good. He's young. He has a decent potential as well on the game, and I think he'll, he'll suit our style of play. He's Colombian, so again, he's got that South American link, yeah. but not necessarily it's very difficult to, to pick up young Brazilians who are talented because, again, they're so expensive. And they're quite loyal to the club that they come through. Yeah, that's That tends to be the case. They don't really, like, if, you know, I can't exactly buy my best rivals won the kid they're no. not going to allow me to do no, that no, uh, so 575k <laughs> is in the in the budget still but let's take a look at the tactic itself have we changed it no we haven't but what we have done is we've got Jair in now as our permanent center back now i want to play as many games as possible still only 17 but he's six foot four he is very good we need to give him the game time so that he can progress and be the player that we need him to be sooner rather than later yeah ideally so that's what we're going to be looking at there schedule wise again it's a little bit higgledy piggly but we don't really know how much this competition is important to you to you brazilians watching or you santos fans watching but what i can say is Marcus Leonardo is scoring a lot of goals against the teams you'd expect us to beat, but against the teams that we're not expected to beat, Sao Paulo and Palmeiras, Corinthians, the teams that are going to give us the hardest games, yeah, we're, losing. we're not doing very well. No. no. In that competition, then in the Palistal Serie A, we are currently in mid-table. We're some way off Sao Paulo, who is top. Again, we don't quite know how important this, no. this section <laughs> is. But there we go. So that's what we have so far. We'll simulate the second season then. Another quick fi go on, then. funny fact before you go. And in the 1930 World Cup, yeah. France coming back, travelling back to France, and they stopped off at Santos. So they asked if they could play a local team. Yes. So Santos obviously offered to play. They beat them 6-1, the French, the French national tie. Right. Yeah, they yeah. beat them 6-1. And they did not believe that they were a local side. So they went back to their clubhouse and they wanted the proof of the players that played against them because they said it was Brazil in, dis in disguise. Really? <laughs> yeah. They wow. were sure they just played against the Brazilian national side. Yeah. And they said, no, this is, this is our local side. So they had to go back to the club and prove it. You just beat a 6-1 with your, with your local side. That's mental. And that was Santos. So yeah, brilliant. Because I think in 1930, that was the Uruguayan World Cup, was yeah. it? The first yeah. one. I think France was one of the only European teams who actually travelled across yeah. to do it. Yeah, and they probably, they probably went by boat because I imagine yeah. Santos is a port. 
Yeah. Um, so that they probably sailed back and stopped there for a break. Because I know, like, the UK uh, nations, they didn't because they had their own competition and yeah. didn't believe in the World Cup at that, yeah. at that point. And that's right, yeah. And that's why Uruguay then boycotted the European yeah. World Cup and decided, no, we're not going because you didn't come to us. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, history about the World Cup I've learned recently six from that. 6-1 in France. <laughs> Amazing. Right, okay, we'll simulate the second season then, see how we do. All right, second season, we've dropped down, unfortunately, into sixth place. Remember, we do have the Copa Libertadores from the season just gone, which obviously we would have played. Flamengo winning the league again, only losing three games. We were one of them. Right. We beat That's them good. at home, 1-0. Nice. Uh, so we actually lost 14 games in total, so it was a lot more than what we had last yeah, season. It's bad, isn't it? 64 points in total. Fluminense got relegated, which is a big side to get yeah. themselves relegated. Again, Cruzeiro came up, went straight back down. So. It's, it's a very difficult league, you must admit. Very difficult. We don't have any players in and around the player statistics that we'd like to be in there, uh, especially, obviously, in the goals, assists, or average rating. So that's obviously something we need to grow into and try and build up. But let's take a look at the other competitions. How have we done? We were the runners-up in one cup competition. We only reached the second round in the Copa Libertadores. So we'll go and have a look at this cup competition then. This was, we were beaten by Guarani, which is a full-blown, like, FA Cup style, I think. We lost uh, across two legs. So it's 3-2 three, three, two across two okay, legs yeah. there on aggregate. Unfortunately, Marcus Leonardo got us there. Did we knock out any big clubs? Sao Paulo, we knocked them out in the semi-final in the quarters. We knocked out Corinthians. So there were some good wins there. Probably knocked the biggest teams out, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, really? we knocked all the biggest teams out. Unfortunately, lost to a team which finished a lot lower than us. Yeah. It must have been. Unless they're not even in the league. <laughs> that's going to be sad if, they, if they're if they not even in our league. They are not. They are in a second division, which that's even worse. Right, so is that actually true? Am I going to find this out? In the, yeah, they're in the... Uh, that's awful from us. <laughs> what a big stadium, though, for a club that's obviously in the second division, wherever they are. They're in Serie B. Yeah, that poor so. bloke trying to watch that game. He can't even see it through no. the goers. I definitely need my binoculars for that game. <laughs> but fair play. They've gone on and won the cup. Now, the Copa Libertadores, we were knocked out in the second round by Colo Colo, the biggest side in Chile. Flamengo went and won it again. That's back to back for them. They beat Racing Club there. I always laugh when I see the strongest. Do you remember yeah. when we used to be bet? We used to do bets. Always, always used do to them, do the to strongest. They'd yeah, always win, wouldn't Bolivia. they? By a country mile as yeah. well, uh, so yeah, we lost. We were knocked out on penalties by Colo Colo. And that um, Bolivia side, is it? Bolivar. Bolivar. Yeah. They always used to win at home, but lose away. If yeah. I remember rightly. <laughs> For some reason, they'd beat everybody at home. We, we couldn't. We couldn't find out why it was always that way. Whether it was, it, fun, whether it was like snow on the pitch or just yeah, an horrible yeah. pitch or something, wasn't it? We knocked out Boca from our group. So Santos and Melgar went through. I don't know where Melgar is from. That's unique. So that's Peruvian side. Uh, knocked out Stadium Melo and the Mountains. That's yeah. beautiful, isn't it? Uh, we knocked out Boca Juniors of all clubs, Ooh. which is fantastic, yeah. really, to, to do that. We won three games. We didn't beat Boca. I'm guessing we drew against them both times. Yeah, and we lost once to Melgar there at home. So overall... In that competition, although we had a great thing knocking out Boca Juniors, we did not get very far Colo Colo knocking us out. And I don't think we will qualify next season. Maybe that's like a playoff or something. Yeah. Uh, because we're in a different colour there in sixth place. Unfortunate. Now, let's take a look at the goals. Marcus Leonardo got himself 40. He improved. That's good. Yeah. Angelo got 19 and 13. He also improved. And he's looking fantastic again. Uh, he keeps getting better and better, as does Marcus Leonardo. So we're kind of pinning our hats on the on, pinning our hats on these two. Daniel Ruiz played quite a lot of games. He got 10 goals and 10 assists. Of course, he joins us on a permanent deal now. Uh, but it's what we can do around these players because obviously we're not doing as well as what we possibly could do. Jair has progressed as well progressed really nicely after playing 60 games this season 61 in total he's got three assists and a goal playing at center back not bad at all no okay budgets for next year 2.3 million pounds uh, well, we do good. have a lot of players who are going to be leaving yeah and i am negotiating to get a lot of players in right we'll go Right now, on the outs, I did sell quite a few players for a little bit of money each, and there was also another million pound move there for Robson Rice, which happened throughout the season, which obviously I didn't have any control over. That's obviously just matching a, a release clause or something, but I have brought in some players. Now, first thing was a free transfer, Marlon Torres. He is a Colombian centre-back from Independiente 
Santa Fe, which is one of the biggest sides in Colombia, and he's very good indeed. Yeah. He's only 5'11", though, so he's not the tallest. I believe I've signed him before because I recognize those turkey teeth. 27 years of age, so he's got a good amount of time left. On a free transfer, we'll definitely take it. Now, the other three transfer... Augustin Almendra is an Argentinian centre midfielder from Boca. So obviously we knock him out the competition. Yeah. Then we steal their player. Really good player who can play centre midfield in that kind of advanced forward role because he, he's really good going forward. And again, free transfer. Can't complain. Already scored one goal and got two, two assists, assists with good, yeah. such a good average rating. Yeah. It's quite surprising that they didn't play him more because in the 11 games that they played him, he did really well. Yeah. The season before, he did even scoring better, goals, like yeah. scoring goals and assist-wise. So they were just happy just to kind of let him go. But I did bring in two more players. Now, the first one, and I spent a little bit of money here, £7.25 million. Pound. Nardoni, yeah, player, yeah, from Racing Club. He is a centre defensive midfielder, as I think is his best role, to be honest. Uh, and again, Argentinian. We've got him from Racing Club in the Argentinian League. I think he's fantastic. Again, they are going to be cheaper than Brazilians. It's going to be really difficult to sign good Brazilians like this. So I might have to dive into the Argentinian market a little bit more. But I did sign one of them. Tiago from Athletic Mineiro. He is a striker, so I'm looking for that synergy. Maybe yeah. we don't have enough options up there with Marcus Leonardo. He's only 22. He's six foot two. He gives us something different. He's good in the air, this this guy. But he also likes to beat the offside trap. Has good off the ball. It's good, yeah. Yeah, very good. He has played eight games so far. He scored four goals and got three assists with three man of the matches. Brilliant. Cannot complain with that. Definitely and he's not. already played in Europe. He actually yeah. moved to Ludogorets and scored 11 goals in 18 games. And then still moved back to Brazil. Yeah. So, really good. I think he left Cruzeiro when they got relegated. Let's take a look then. Tactical changes. Have there been any? Yes, there has. We have moved to this. So, now we're looking at more of a 4 triple two, Very Brazilian. Although sometimes they have the two wide in the narrow, don't they? They yeah. like playing that Brazilian box style. Uh, but we are going with two wide players because we have the options there. With two strikers, of course, now we have Thiago and uh, Marcus Leonardo. If we picked our best 11, this is what it would look like. Now we have Thiago and in that complete forward role, Marcus Leonardo focusing solely on being a poacher. We've got Ruiz on the left, Angelo on the right, Nardoni and Fernandez comes in those two roles there. Uh, we also have quite a good synergy now with our left and right backs with their uh, wingers ahead of them. And Marlon Torres comes straight in into that role. But there is no Ger, but he is good enough to be rotation purposes because of the likes of injuries here for Marlon Torres. Ger will just come in and play straight away, and he's been doing really well. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see how it's been doing so far then because we have played a number of games. I would say this is a success. Yeah. So we've had to play, as I mentioned, qualifying rounds for the Copa Libertadores, and we have we qualified. quite comfortably as well, haven't we? Yeah, we went through quite nice and easily there. Yeah. So uh, we played two rounds there. We've won every single one of those games, only can see one goal so we have been given our group uh, and the only result we have lost is against Palmeiras in a 4-2 loss uh, we actually got two goals in the 91st and 96th minute it's just unfortunate really yeah. is in one of those games so let's take a look at our group then now you might not recognize a lot of these Nils old boys does that, that spring a little something for you it does Dad? yeah it does yeah that's Lionel Messi's first team oh, is it? before he moved to Barcelona right. as a youngster yeah so he was from the Nils old boys like junior academy uh, we got Guarani also in Brazil so it's Obviously, Libertadores is, is quite a unique competition. There's not as many different countries. So you might get drawn against other Brazilian yeah. sides in the group. And then we've got Canto Loa, which is in Peru. So we've got a group that I would say we should be going for it. Yeah. Definitely. I'll go with that. Okay. So, so far in the pre-competition thing, which looks like it's going on a little bit longer this time, we are in second place. We didn't check at the end of the last sec second season, did we? But again, I don't know. We didn't win it. Sao Paulo won it. <laughs> yeah. uh, 21 points we have so far from the eight games with Red Bull Bragantino, which is in the first position. But we are doing very well in the player ratings and everything like that. So we'll simulate this third season. Oh, another quick one now for you. Just okay. Like Talk about records. I just think this is a, an amazing record. Right. Attendances for one for one for, for a player playing for one team. Yeah. I think we're obviously going to know who it is, aren't we? Neymar? No. No. It's so Pele. We, we know it's Pele. Yeah. So we actually played one thousand one hundred and six games. Yeah. For Santos. Guess who's the leading goal scorer? I wonder. 
But how many goals do you reckon he scored, though? Well, he played, he there's played a myth 1, about this, isn't there? 106 games. Yeah, there's a myth about this because do you, do you remember when Ronaldo was catching him, CR Ronaldo, and it was almost like Pele started adding on goals? Yeah. <laughs> which he just like, well, I was in a friendly and this also yeah. counts. So 1,106 games. Yeah. His record is as scoring down as 1,096 goals. Yeah, mental. So he's only, what, four... 10 goals away from every game that he played in. Yeah. That is some record. Over a thousand games. Yeah, yeah. You know, that Which is, is mental record. because usually you see that type of like goal scoring record when in their in their prime years, but not when they are really young and getting yeah. into the game. But also well, he started in 1956 and he finished for 1974. Yeah. So it's, there's a lot of years that he's played, which yeah. is good. Good 18 years there. Yeah. But um, what? what All for record? one club. That's, I mean, that's what you're talking about. Isn't it? Yeah, really, that's, that is just amazing. Off one club, obviously, and Brazil. Uh, do, we reckon, do we reckon Harry Kane will stay stay with Spurs for one club? For Willy his whole bollocks! <laughs> There's so many reports that he's already gone. Me and Dad's already had this discussion. Yeah. I said to him, "Well, who do you think he's going to go to?" And straight away, he went United. Yeah, I think he's going to go next. So the only thing that I think uh, the reason why I think it is United is because I don't think he'll go anywhere else, and he wants to stay in the Premier League to beat Alan Shearer's record. Yeah. So he's not going to go Chelsea or Arsenal. That's too local oh, to him. He can't do that. He definitely won't do that. No. Liverpool, I don't think, could afford him or would go for him because of who they've already brought in. Man City's not going to want Man City's not going to want Haaland and Harry no. Kane. And Man United need a striker. It's, Desperately need a striker. Yeah, I think it's either Newcastle or United, but I don't think Newcastle will buy him because they've already got two strikers and they're going for more of that like 24 age. The, the, the guys well, who When are we did speak about it, I did, I did mention about Newcastle, didn't I? And I... And I I just don't think Newcastle are ready for Harry Kane. No, no. Because Harry Kane wants to win now. now. Yeah. Where I think Man United, which is, I don't want to say this, your new manager, he has just turned it around for you, isn't he? Yeah. And what a job he's doing there. And I think they're almost ready. They yeah. need one, maybe two outstanding players and they'll be hard to beat. And especially if the Glazers do leave. And I mean, we're recording this sort of midway through March, like a couple of weeks before it comes out. Uh, there are still like talks that they might stay, which would be the worst thing ever. But favourites are at the minute is the Qatari bid who want to clear the debt and they want to get it done quickly because they want to make signings in the summer. So yeah. they want to like obviously bring in people and make the side better. Harry Kane could definitely do that. Yeah. So we'll see. But that's obviously a one club man who won't become a one club man. <laughs> oh, he's had loan spells, hasn't he, when he was when he was coming through. Yeah. Um, but he was always officially uh, on Spurs' books. Unlike Pele, who stayed at one club the whole way through and played every another, single game. Another there. quick one, though. Santos became the first glue trotters football team to go yeah. around playing friendlies everywhere. They actually stopped the war in Africa. That's crazy. Because... They, they obviously had a friendly there to play, and the two the two sides of the war, I don't know what war it was called, or anything like that, wanted to watch this game. So they'd come to a truce where they decided to stop the war yeah. for these two days. They watched the game, both sets of people at war watched the game, then Santos flew out again, and then they carried on with the war. Yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Mental. Absolutely <laughs> crazy. Okay, let's simulate this third season then. See how we do with Santos. Right, third season, second place. Take that. With the best of the rest. Right yeah. behind Flamengo, we obviously have the best side right now. So I mean, 75 seven points. points to win it still. Still mm. seven points, but yeah. we have closed the gap. That was 15 points for, yeah. for other teams there. Uh, we lost nine games this season. Not one of them was to Flamengo, though. Ooh. They lost four, and one of them was to us when they played the away leg. So we obviously have drawn against them nil-nil when we played away from home. So that's actually a great season for us. Again, we have Daniel Ruiz is the only player in the assist tally there with 10. He has the most assists across the season. We don't have the goal scorer, which is quite low as well, only at 14. But we do have two players in the player of the match, Daniel Ruiz and Angelo, our two wingers. We were obviously supplying the goods for our two strikers up top. This new formation, I think, has done a good job for us. Uh, so, not bad. Let's take a look at other competitions, though. Copa Libertadores, the Brazilian Cup, and we need to remember to check that first trophy as well, but I don't think we did win that. <laughs> Let's take a look, then. How have we done? 
Copper Libertadores winners. Oh, get in. Copper Libertadores winners. So I don't. We'll, we'll check how many times we've actually won it before. But we have beaten Sao Paulo in the final. So that's going to be obviously a rival for us. Yeah. Daniel Reeves with two. Tiago with one. And Marcus Leonardo with one. Fantastic. They went we one actually went one well. new time. Yeah. yeah. Quite early on. But we pulled it back. They equalized to make it 2 2. No, they didn't. No, we went 3 1 up. Yeah. They, they made it 3 2. Then we, we scored a minute later. Look. Yeah. Minute later. Just like, oh, you wanted to get back in the yeah. game, did you? No. Unlucky. Uh, what a performance that was. Daniel Reeves got himself player of the match. So from a low knee into a permanent deal. Good signing that yeah. was because it's won us the Champions League of South America, which is phenomenal. That's fantastic. Now, the other competition looks like we lost there in the final oh. uh, on penalties in this. The reason why I don't think that people really care about it is because the board are not judging us on how yeah. we do. So it's almost like, oh, just fine. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, so that's not bad at all. But if we do take a look at the league, Santos, we actually finished first on the same points and then Corinthians beat us in the, in the playoff final bit. Uh, so not bad at all. Fourth round though in the Brazil Cup, but we are the winners of that. So that's the big one. Take that, yeah. That is the big one. We look at Santos's side, the Copa Libertadores, how many times they have won it. They have won it three times before that. 62, 63, who was playing for them then? Yeah, ballet. In his prime. And 2011, yeah. who was playing from then? Neymar. Oh, yeah. I think it was Neymar, yeah. yeah that was the year he moved. I think he moved in 2012 Did to he? Barcelona. I'm pretty sure of it. I'll fact check it, but I'm sure that was... He won the Copa Libertadores at Santos in 2011. I've got loads of comments now. Like, you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. But I've got a feeling it was. <laughs> what a season. Absolutely phenomenal. Let's take a look at our winning squad then. 31 goals from Thiago. What a signing that was. 26 from Marcus Leonardo. He is now wanted by Palmeiras and Al Shabab, who have money, obviously, but don't have the pedigree that maybe a big European side would have. But this is what I'm most impressed oh, with. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Lucas Braga there with 22 goals. I mean, Lucas Braga's come off from out of nowhere. He has been playing on that left-hand side or up front when we needed him to. He's not really that good. He's been a squad player, but he scored 22 goals this season. When you've got four players are banging in... 20 plus, 20 goals, plus so goals you're gonna win something yeah. you've got it by then and you really four so players angelo got 20 goals and 16 assists and then daniel he's got 25 assists in total and oh, yeah. al mendra got 14 assists as well That's for midfield. Well, yeah. really good season for for everybody okay let's go forward then and have a look at what we do season four with the two million pound that we have after winning the biggest competition <laughs> in south america so players out we sold one player for 1.3 million pound he was the uruguayan set midfielder age 29 now so i think it was a good time to cash in because he wasn't exactly playing all of the games with obviously nardoni who we signed last year we got a couple of good brazilians who also play center mid but we've obviously released a few other players as well which has freed up a little bit of money for us so if we take a look at the two players that we did sign one of them was a free transfer we have jao paulo ramirez he plays in like a number 10 role but can also play up top or on the left as a free transfer can't complain with that he's 27 his value now is really high as well yeah. so he, he comes from nacional in colombia and then finally we have yermes perez tica 1.4 million pound this one is a bit of a gamble if I'm honest because I noticed obviously that our third striker was playing so many games yeah. because of the amount of games that we've, we've got so I signed well, somebody I with a team like this, you've got to build a big squad. You? Yeah. You've got to have that big squad team. So, Absolutely. And, and with the age, you're bringing in another 21-year-old side deal for them in patrons in, isn't it? Absolutely. Patreon They're members, you get the you. end. You get this at the end of the rebuild, the save game file, at the end of the five seasons. Dad's going to set you a task and see how you do with it. Uh, that's on the £5 tier. Thank you to all the Patreon members who do support me. You help me keep doing this full time and pay for the editors. So that's... That's a, a, a good incentive, if you will, to, to if you'd like to support me. Page.com forward slash Gaming. But that's one of the perks. You get the save game file. You can use this guy if he does get really good and get better. However, there are some players in the Youth Academy that we might want to highlight because they are coming into their own now. And we have some absolute monsters coming, fr coming through. Juari, 18 years of age. He looks great. Yeah. He looks really good. There's a few others as well. There's Pascarolo, who looks quite good in the CDM role. There's some fantastic players coming through. And I might even have a couple in the actual squad itself. If we sort by age, there's a couple here that I've even played. Claudio Mart, who is a center midfielder or attacking midfielder, is really good. Uh, Washington, I think, was already there. But there's a, there's another one as well. So we'll take a look at that soon. So let's take a look then. Tactic-wise, I don't think we really need to change it. We just won the Champions League of the couple of Torres for South America so we don't really need to change that if we did take a look at the 
the pick best 11 though Tiago and Marcus Leonardo up top they've got a lovely little relationship going on there it's basically the same team but with Jair yeah, this time in instead of Marlon Torres because Jair yeah, has just got better and better uh, he's 19 now and looks phenomenal so really good really good start at 11 that's just what we needed schedule wise it's not been great but we have only like drop points uh, to like Corinthians and, and teams like that and lost to Palmeiras. We've gone through and we are in the Copa Libertadores again, obviously, because we, we've won the competition. Yeah. We're not going to be taken out of that. Uh, so let's take a look at our group then. Sporting Crystal, Penral, and Junior. So we've got three different nations now instead of just the uh, Brazil like it was last year. So that's going to be a be difficult one, but we should be favourites yeah. to go through after winning the competition. Okay. Another quick one? Go on then. Records again? Records. I wonder They're who's going to break it. Players. Santos are full of records. 1998. Yeah. Santos became the first team ever to score 10,000 goals. <laughs> That's a mental statistic. <laughs> They're on 12,000 goals now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, in 1998. And then they were voted best team ever by yeah. FIFA. So um, yeah, 10,000 goals. To become professional side. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. We'll simulate this fourth season. Let's see how we do. Fourth season, we dropped down into mm. sixth place Long again. Long way back behind as well. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Flamengo once again winning the league, but it's closer again at the top. How many times have they won the league now then? That's four, so, five in a row now? every time we've done it? Four yeah. times in a row. They've won it every single season that we have played so far. Not good from us. No. 60 points is a lot less than what we were last season. We've lost 14 games this year, which is so many more than what we did last year. Uh, it just seems like maybe our heads weren't in it. Athletic Mini got relegated they only won the league five seasons ago yeah. and now they're relegated so again that's what happens in this yeah. league it's very strange Botafogo was the other one I think is in the second division yeah uh, a lot of people have asked us to do Botafogo I think in the comment section so not bad well it's not great it's not good not good at all not good it is disappointing unless we've won something how close we unless got. we've won something that's it did we win something we are the winners <laughs> of the Sudamericana which I think is the Super Cup of the Copa Libertadores and yeah. Sudamericana. Well, okay, yeah. So we are we were the Super Cup winners of uh, of South America. That's the only the only game you play in that. In the Copa Libertadores, we only got to the quarter final. We were knocked out by Palmeiras, unfortunately. Uh, who didn't go on to the final. Botafogo won it. I think they just got promoted because I don't remember seeing them no. until then. No, I didn't. Uh, so they've only just been promoted a couple That's of good. seasons ago. And they've who gone knocked, on and won it. They knocked out Flamengo then. Uh, it must be in the semi-finals. Botafogo did. And Velez from Argentina knocked out That's Palmeiras. Result, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic from them. And then we only made it to the quarterfinal there in the uh, Brazilian Cup. In the league of this, the first thing that we play in the league table, we finished down in fifth place. I imagine we got to like the semi-final. Yeah, we were knocked out by Sao Paulo on penalties. Not good. No. Uh, Squad-wise, let's take a look. Goals. Thiago only got 35. And Daniel Ruiz got 18. Angelo got 16. I mean, that's still There's good. There's somebody that, missing. Yeah, that's not good, is it? I mean, that's that's still good when you look at it, but it's not because we had players, all our four top four players was in 20 and 37 yeah. last season. Wasn't it? So, But yeah, we've got a player missing, haven't we? There's a player missing, and that's because FC Porto, throughout the season, signed Marcus Leonardo. Yeah, £14 million. And he's gone on and he's played really well for them. 14 Six, goals in 16, 16 games 16 for them. Games, yeah. That's insane. Uh, but that is. I mean, in that season what that we happens, sold him, he had scored 17 goals in 26 games for yeah. us. Because so that's far. the same season, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. So it would have, it could have been a fantastic year. Yeah. But of, again, because of the rebuild where you simulate throughout the season, you don't see these things happen halfway through. But that is a logical step, isn't it, for Brazilian players it's, going to Porto, going yeah. to Benfica? Yeah. That happens quite a lot in South America. I mean, that's a good it's a good amount of money for us. You can understand why the clubs took it. Yeah. But it was disappointing for us. Really, Definitely. Well. But that gives us, for next season, £16 yeah. million pounds I mean, how to often try can and you, bring somebody in. How often can you replace a player like that? It's, it's hard, difficult. It? He's hard. very good. He is yeah. very good indeed, and he is young. But that, obviously, now we need to look at these players coming through and think, right, 
which one of you wants to step up into yeah. that role which one of you can step up because Juari looks really good there uh, we need somebody to step up into that role to see obviously if they can feel the boots of Marcus Leonardo uh, with the 16 million pound that we've got well, so. there's a good Argentinian player coming Frank. yeah that's it <laughs> who's cheaper we'll, we'll see let's have a look fifth season we also sold Eduardo Bauman for 2.5 million pound but he was kind of like our third choice centre back now obviously we got Marlon Torres and Jair as our first centre backs so I think 2.5 million pound is actually quite good bringing yeah. him in and it's allowed us to really push the budget out because we spent 17 million pound in total I did this go be... to Argentina, as we can <laughs> see. So the first player, Lucas Gonzalez. He is a centre midfielder who can play in quite a few different roles, actually, because he can also play on the right. But look how well-rounded he is. Yeah, that's a good squad player. Definitely. Definitely. 25 as well, so he's kind of Off in his Off the prime. ball, 17, that's really good as well. Fantastic. So you, you'd see this guy at European yeah. clubs. That's how good I think he actually is. Lucas Gonzalez takes the number seven role. Let's do this by how much we spent. Paulinho at Mineiro. Obviously, they got relegated. Yeah. And I thought, well, those players aren't going to want to stay there, <laughs> yeah. are they? So I went and signed two of them. The first one, Paulinho, is a real player, 25 years of age. I really like this guy. He's a good squad player. Really. You might recognize him as well. He played for Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah. So I remember him quite well in those leagues, doing doing uh, stuff in the Bundesliga. £3.3 .3 million after he had quite a bad season, obviously getting relegated with Mineiro. Big move that was to Leverkusen, £16 yeah. million. Mm -hmm. He was touted as quite a, quite a talent. We also went to Rosario Central. Where is that based? Argentina, who has some of the best kits, by the way. Yeah. That third kit is absolutely stunning. Maybe, yeah. Let's take a look at who, the play, who we bought from them. Alejo Velez. He's a striker, just what we need need great off the ball great finishing first touch decisions composure just what we need maybe a little bit slow but he's 6'2 so he's also good at heading yeah that's what i quite like about him from argentina of course 5.25 million pound he has hit the ground running Ten goes. Ten goes in seven games. Brilliant. He only got 11 last season. <laughs> yeah. uh, he has an 8.1 average rating so That's far. Outstanding as well, isn't it? Unbelievable. Then the final player, which was the last player we actually brought in on the 24th of the first, Mateus from Mineiro again, 8.5 million pound. He is a new gen and he is a very good centre midfielder. Yep. Only age 20, six foot two. Absolutely insane. I really do think his player traits as well are incredible. Great vision. Uh, physically, he's a monster as well. That pace, stamina, agility in that centre mid is so important. Obviously, we signed for 8.5 million pound as a centre mid. He's got three, three and assisted two. It's good. Really good player. If you want to have Mateus in your side on the Patreon, well, I better hope he doesn't get sold in the. The, yeah. the season that we have right now. Tactically then, there's a couple of other players that I need to show you, but I want Mateus playing that box box midfielder role every single game. We've so we, we've got loads now yeah. of really good centre midfielders, but if I went to best 11, he gets taken out and Nardoni gets, gets put in there uh, with Zancello, who was obviously there before. Paulinho goes up front with Velez, Angelo, Ruiz, the usual lineup that we would see. But there is other players that are in and around the squad that we do have to mention. A 16-year-old, Jefferson. The guy is six foot five. 16. 16. And he is decent as well. Like, he's not quite there yet, but he has an ambitious personality. He is decent. I like him. I'll put him in the first squad with the uh, with the thing where he plays for the youth, the under-20s at the same time. Yeah. In the under-20s, he's already scored 17 in 10. <laughs> as a 16 year old playing for the under 20s uh, so he's a monster six yeah. foot five absolutely insane we've got a couple of really good talented uh, youth academy prospects here that's coming in as well there's there's one here uh, which is not even Brazilian he's from Bolivia and Brazil and again he's another striker and again he's good Miguel Suarez there's some there's just unbelievable amounts of players that are coming through so there's a lot to, 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 to use if you were to take this over uh, and a lot for our system manager to use if we obviously get get late into different competitions yeah. and we need that squad depth schedule then we haven't lost a game so far this is it come on good. this is it's it looking good uh we are stuffing teams as well corinthians is the only game we didn't win which was a nil nil draw so we're keeping those clean sheets if you look here in this february month we only conceded one two three goals there and look how many we scored yeah. it's like we had pele <laughs> uh, Tiago, so the guy who's, who we're going to see his name quite a lot, and Velez as well, obviously, who scored quite a few goals. Great start. Definitely. However, 
our Copper Libertadores group is cruel. Ooh. Sao Paulo and River, River Plate. Plate. Oh, that's an odd. Yeah, that's two very some of the difficult top sides. Teams in Argentina, isn't it? Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's three of some of the biggest yeah. South American clubs ever. Yeah. And they're all in one group in the in the Copa Libertadores. So that's going to be very difficult for us to to progress yeah. and to win. Maybe though we can do something in the uh in the, in the, the main Brazilian league instead. Right, my last one. Your last one. This is why I've got this kit on. I knew it. This is why I've got the Plymouth Argyle kit on. In 1973, Santos came to Plymouth yeah. and played against the Plymouth side at home park in front of 37,600 fans. Yeah. And we beat them 3 2. <laughs> Get in. Pele was playing as well. He scored a penalty, didn't he? Yeah, Pelé? he did. We went 3 0 up by half time. Um, and then they came out. They weren't happy with the referee, mind you. And the second go, I think it was, it was a bit of a challenge on the goalkeeper and it, ooh, it was a bit dubious, I thought, really. They they said he was offside, which he could have been as well, but he also looked like he took the keeper as well. So no, bit. they are not in no, 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 they weren't, no, but what a, what a result that was. But yeah. I've got a lovely... I mean, my dad went to the game. Yeah, with got his a programme, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. We can't find it anywhere, can we? We tried looking for it. Yeah. But he went with his dad, so my granddad was there as well and watched the game. They said it was absolutely brilliant. What a... And Pele was fantastic even then. Yeah. And that was a year before he retired. Yeah. But the story I got with this, brilliant story. They've obviously agreed to play Plymouth Argo at home park. Hour before kickoff, because they realised, Santos this is, that there was a lot more fans than they thought there was going to be, they decided they wanted more money. Ah. And they're in the change rooms did. and they said they're not Peleing unless they get paid more money. I like what you did there, they're not Peleing. <laughs> yeah. You like it, did you? Yeah. I didn't think you'd get that one. They wanted an extra two and a half thousand pounds. Right. Back in then, that's a, that's lot, a lot of money. money. Yeah. A lot of money. And the chairman's gone, no chance. So they've just sat in the change room and said, we're not coming out then. So apparently the chairman's gone up to the, his office and he's looked out the window and I, I don't think he realised how many fans was going to come to this game. He's looked out the window and it is heaving. Yeah. And he's thinking to himself, now, I've got to go out there and tell these people that the game's off Yeah. or I pay them two and a half thousand pounds and it's going to have to come out of his own pocket at the time because um, he wasn't sure how much money the, the game was going to take. So um, he's thinking about it, he's looking at it, he's thinking, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. So he's gone back in there and he was crafty the way he'd done it. He's gone in there and agreed to pay the extra two and a half thousand pounds, providing they turn up the following day to a presentation. Mm. So he made them honor that because they said they were going to do it, but yeah. he made them made sure that he honored it. And um, they said, yeah, okay. So they came out and played the game, which was good, really. But yeah, yeah but they've been on the home park. And we beat Pele. Unbelievable. The that Green Army. Yeah. Get in. And we were not good back then either. <laughs> 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 okay, fifth and final season. How can we do with this Santos side? Can we win the league? Maybe we can get out of this Copa Libertadores group. Let's find out. Final season. We've done it. We've done it by two points as well. We have overcame Flamengo at the top. 79 points only lo lost Brilliant. seven games we did lose to them as well yeah. we lost a fair amount of home games by the way maybe we need a bigger stadium yeah. <laughs> uh, and we drew seven games there but we've managed to do it which is a bit of a relief honestly because Flamengo there getting five in a row yeah. that's, that would be absolutely mental Thiago scored the most goals he also had the highest average rating of course he won us a couple of Torres so unbelievable sign of bringing yeah. him in uh, and Angelo got the most assists there Jao Lucas I reckon, we, I reckon we've done a double here you think? I reckon we, we must have done we were doing that well to win the league is what we must have done something else well let's find out competitions no, no. Oh. we did win the first league thing Oh, right. So we won two, the, two yeah, leagues. Yeah, which row. nobody really cares about. No. But we won both of the leagues in Brazil. Yeah. Uh, the the pre-league and the main one. We are champions of Brazil both times. We got to the quarterfinals of the Copa of Azores, knocked out by Flamengo, who beat us oh. in the away leg. Well, at least we got our own back on them. Yeah, so that's that's a, that's a shame. Who actually lost in the final against oh. Vasco da Gama oh. on penalties. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunate. So not bad. That's, you know, we got out of the group, which is quite yeah. surprising. We'll take a look at the group, actually, while we're here uh, and see. We come up second, knocking out River. Ooh, Sao Paulo well, went look. through, who only same, lost we one We got the same record us. as them as well, so we must have done it on, on goal, uh, games against them. Yeah, no, because we beat 
we only beat Sporting Crystal twice. We didn't actually beat Boca at Riverside, so we beat, we lost against them once. It must be on goal difference. Same goal difference. I don't yeah, really know. I goal scored probably. Well, it looks like we scored quite a lot of goals. Yeah. Five five one three two three two. Whereas they two nil two one three two. Probably yeah, on goal yeah. scored. Yeah. Thiago also has got the most goals in the competition from that. So he's had a hell of a year. Yeah. Let's take a look then at the squad. The final squad. Forty four goals for Thiago. And second, it's 33. <laughs> Angelo is going to be very difficult to keep hold of. He is so wanted over, by Flamengo. I mean, you're going down to five or six players in, in 10, yeah. 10 goals there, 10 goals there. So you're looking at 130 goals. Yeah, between like Hopefully seven between, players. Yeah. Brilliant. Because uh, Lucas Gonzalez even got 10 goals, 10 assists from the uh, centre defence midfield. Mateus, obviously who we just signed, he is looking in mental now. He also got 10 goals, 6 assists. Paulinho got 13 and 15. Yeah, it's hell of a season. Yeah. Really is a fantastic season, goals-wise and everything like that. What a team that you've 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 taken over here. So what do you think then, Dad? What's the uh, what's going to be the target for the Patreon members in the next five years? It's really hard, isn't it, this one? Because it's such an odd league. All I'm going to just say is match what we just done and win that last league that we just won yeah that top league and if you can win a double you've beaten us yeah that's it yeah we never won a double have we no, we, well, we won the double leagues but not yeah. the cup or the you gotta win that win that league with a cup you beat us yeah and that's your challenge to try and beat us uh and the final thing obviously we all want to know any santos fans yeah what's, what's the, the food, food like? like at your stadium which I only wanna, holds 14,000 i want to go one even what's the women like at yeah. that stadium <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. Yeah. Right. we like we like our brazilians <laughs> well, speak for yourself yeah. right okay thank you very much for watching we'll see you next monday for another rebuild remember keep all your suggestions down in the comment section if you want to have a look at the patreon if you want to take this save on the five pound tier you can do that patreon.com forward slash make loot gaming and if you want to check out manscaped and sport me as by sporting my sponsors you can also do that that'll be at the top of the description as well using my code omega at checkout yeah, that button as well for subscribers yes 100 000 target absolutely to go for. we got the target don't think we're gonna hit it but if you can help us that will be amazing down in the comment section as well you can chat to dad in there should you wish we'll see you next monday for another one Bye bye Today we are rebuilding Hashduk Split in Croatia, one yeah. of uh, Croatia's biggest clubs, probably the second behind Dinamo Zagreb, which is their main rivals, I believe. Isn't it? it is indeed, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, a lot of you guys suggested it in the comments, and usually we don't do as many of the the smaller nations in these rebuilds in such a short space of time. But you guys have been really supporting them. Yeah. Like the views haven't dropped off every time we do a, a smaller team. So we're more willing to do them if you guys are supporting them. So thank you very much, first and foremost. But yeah, how's to split? I'm guessing it's going to be quite a difficult one for you I to get a lot of information about. It is really, because they, they were part of Yugoslavia as well. When yeah. they first started off, I mean, they were the best Yugoslavian team. They won, I think it's nine totals and so many cups as well. So, yeah. um, and then when obviously Yugoslavia folded, um, they obviously joined the Croatian League, which I think was in 1992 or something like that. Yeah, that's probably when, yeah. that's when you, Yugoslavia sort of yeah. disbanded into different countries. But in countries. between as well, during the war, I read, they actually joined the Italian League. Really? Yeah. Uh, because they, because they the do German... join on to the yeah. countries. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and because of the war and the Germans invading um, Yugoslavia, they the players went got away from it and all that and so they just, they just joined the Italian league for one or two seasons Man, while the war was going on yeah, yeah that is kind and of funny. apparently they they actually played an english army team yeah during the war i, I can't think where it was now but they the actual team played them and they lost something like 9 nil. but when the war finished and everything was settled down again they asked to play a replay against the the the, the, German, the army England's army team and they actually beat them 1-0 the yeah. second time around so when they had the best players there they were alright then how funny yeah but yeah as you said there nine leagues in well nine league titles in the Yugoslavian leagues the final yeah. one was in 1979 so some way before obviously Yugoslavia disbanded the 1950 year that they won the league yeah they won that unbeaten the only ever team in Yugoslavia to win a league unbeaten wow okay yeah. uh, and then six of the Croatian ones and that's a long time since they last won that yeah, too, 2005. Is, yeah. Which, you know, when I was growing up, they were the biggest Croatian yeah. team, as you can see there. Uh, obviously, when uh, I was in sec started secondary school, when really got into football, 2001 to 2005, they won three league titles in that time. I always remember Hajduk split in the Champions League and, and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So today, they, they have got some good players too, which I'm really pleased with. They just don't have a lot of money, which we're not expecting to. We've only no. got two million pounds, no debts, which is good, but no money in the overall balance. 
only one point. I'm surprised to actually pounds. see that they've got no debts because they have, over the years, they have struggled with money and, and almost gone the same way some Yugoslavian teams went and just totally folded because yeah. they never had no money. Well, thankfully, they are still here uh, and we're still kicking. So we did have a bit of a transfer budget, but it's really hard to find any people, any players uh, in these leagues when I don't really know the league. So unfortunately, I didn't bring anybody in. And I thought this first season, let's just find things out. Yeah, let's go with it and just we've see what actually happens, got, yeah. yeah, like like I say, we've actually got some really good players too. So I've gone for a very basic 4-4-2. We've got players for it, to be fair. Um, so if I went to the best 11, we can highlight some of those players. And some of them actually aren't in this uh, best... What was, right, there we go. Don't know what happened there. Some of them actually aren't in the first 11 that I would be playing because Stipe Buick is a wonder kid on this game. 19 years of age, and he's very good indeed. Uh, 2.6 to 4.2 million pounds. That's a lot of money in this in yeah. this league. Uh, and he has a very high potential. So maybe it's, it's the case of we well, need to bet him in in the next couple of seasons and see how he does there. Yeah. What I do think we have is two great strikers and another one out on loan. Now, the one on loan, Marin... Lubicic, uh, he's only 20 years of age, but if you look at his attributes, he looks class. Yeah. Don't know why we're loaning him out, because I actually think we're loaning him out to a club in our league, is it? Uh, Lask, no, so he's in Austria. But I don't know why, because, like, you know, that's not... It's a very strange thing for us to do, yeah, because he yeah. probably will be starting games. But anyway, he's out on loan. Hopefully, they don't have... They do have an optional future fee of £2.1 million. Pounds. We don't want that, do we? We do not want that at all, because he would, he would come back, and we could probably use him and sell him for a hell of a lot more. I would say he's young as well, isn't he? Yeah. Who isn't young, though, is Nikola Kalinic. He's 34. He's been around the block for yeah, a while. Yeah. Well, to be he? fair, he's played at Milan, Milan yeah. Atletico, Roma, Fiorentina, even played at Blackburn. And he came from Hashtuk to Blackburn. So that was his move there into the big leagues from Hashtuk Split. That's where he, he probably made a name for himself. Uh, and then his strike partner, Levaja, is probably our best player that we have in our team right now. He's quite experienced as well, 29 years of age. He's played at Inter. Uh, he has started off again at Hashtuk. So it seems like they, they go off, they have their European journey, then they come back. Yeah. If they haven't made it or they just feel like, you know, a swan song back in Croatia, they'll come back to Hashtuk Split, which I quite I like uh, so he's a very good player 29 years of age we can still use him for, for the foreseeable as well so Marco uh, will be kind of our, our best player going forward but the rest of them I don't really recognize a lot of the names no I've had to kind of just like use Daniel Sabasic I do he's the back at goalkeeper we play for Monaco he's not very good at all the rest of them I have to, to kind of familiarize myself with as we go along okay so this 4-4-2 then as I say it's very basic we've played so many games going forward and unfortunately we have no European football this year because we faced Villarreal in the Europa so, Conference yeah. League. That's an hard team to come up against, isn't it? I, would, I actually think that's probably the the most difficult one yeah. to face. If you look at all of these teams here, I mean, we got like the likes of West Ham, Cologne, and Fiorentina, but like there's some of these clubs I've never even heard of from like nations like Kazakhstan. There's a couple of Kazakhstani teams there, you know, a couple of nations that you, you like to think a Cypriot team there that I've never or haven't really faced up against quite a lot. So yeah, we got a difficult draw there. We actually did all right as well. We only lost 3 2 on aggregate. Yeah. We actually won one of the games, but unfortunately we lost 2 0 in the first leg. Disappointing, but still, there we go. Uh, we did overcome Gil Vicente in the, 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 the round before that. But in the league, though, I'm it looks a lot better. Better. Started off really well in the league, and we've yeah. not conceded very many goals. No, but that's good. No, I don't know why we played Dinamo twice in what looks to be two weeks. Yeah. Um, but there isn't a lot of teams in the league. So if you look at the Croatian league, it's going to be another one of those fun ones again. There's only 10 teams. Right. So you play a certain amount of games. By the looks of it, you play each of the teams uh, more than just the twice. Yeah. So 36 games, teams play each other four times. There we go then, yeah. But it's still weird that you play twice in, in three games. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll play against Dinamo so quite often. Four, four derbies. Four derbies. The class is the ex ex eternal derby. The eternal derby. That's what they call it in this country, yeah. Right. Mm. So, I mean, Zagreb, it is quite funny. They have very similar badges, obviously. The, the it's, Croatian, a, it's the Croatian the flag, Czech, yeah. 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 Uh, I like Dinamo uh, Zagreb Stadium, I must say. Like, it's quite funny. I find yeah. it hilarious when I see pictures of it because it looks like, who blew your roof off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it just looks like it should have a roof, but it just but doesn't. But what I can read as well, the fans don't like our stadium. No. Mainly, mainly, I mean, you have a look at it. 
the racetrack. Yeah, race track. It, was done, it was done for some um, Olympic Games or something or whatever. And yeah, used for that, and then they moved into it. And um, yeah, they just said that it's not atmosphere there as good as it wasn't in the old stadiums. Today. Yeah, and we always say that, don't we? It's 100%. not a good football stadium. And you imagine being beyond the goal with that. The big part is where you are. So now. far away. Yeah, you can't see it, can you? No. Uh, it does seat quite a lot of people though. Thirty-five thousand yeah. seats there. That's quite a lot. Same as Dinamo's, another thirty-five thousand seat, but they're a lot closer to the pitch. Yeah, the atmosphere is better. I imagine they got some good players as well, Dinamo. So it's going to be us too, I think, uh, as well as Rijeka and Osijek as well, who uh, is going to be the the three or four teams which you know is going to be up there or thereabouts. But yeah, we've done really well at the start of the the season. We have dropped some points against Istra there. We lost to Osijek. Uh, but other than that, it's been quite smooth sailing with a lot of wins going into this first season at the start there. So after eight games, five wins, two draws, one loss. Same Good as start. Dinamo. Okay, so we'll simulate the first season and see how we get on. First season, we win in. the title. Won it by a mile. 86 points, 13 points clear. What Look a goal, the goal difference, difference as well. well. Yeah. Plus 60, and they only had plus 26. Oh, say it, mate. You score your goals, you're going to win things, isn't you? Absolutely. So we've completely dominated the league campaign there. 27 wins out of the 36 is a very high amount. And Lavaja had 30 goals, and Kalinic had 19. It's good. So he got a good average rating as well. For Sati in the uh, centre midfield role, got a lot of assists. You'd probably think he's probably a set piece taker as well, being a ball player. So if we do take a look at him. There's the Italian link. Yeah. There's the Italian link. He's very good on the ball, comes deep to get the ball, tries killer passes. Yeah, he's a, he's a quality player, so especially for, for this league. But unfortunately, he is out of contract at the minute. Uh, so we're going to have to try and snap him up before he decides to leave because he's been crucial for us and he's also played in a, in a very experienced career. So that's the first season that we have won. For God knows how long, 2005 there, where oh. it's been completely dominated by Dinamo and won by Rijeka. Not bad. We didn't even make a transfer. We, we still won the league. No transfers, just, we'll probably just buy one. Some, we'll probably buy some players now and lose. Yeah, just one basic 4-4-4-2 <laughs> tactic. I, I, said, three, tactics, I yeah. said three fours then. Yeah. We didn't play that many players. <laughs> how do we do in the other competitions, though? Did we get any further? We won the cup as well. Done the double in our first season. We've done the double. So I need it because they're both super, but it's this one, who, which is the, the actual cup. Yeah. That we have won. I think remember but back reading back. about it. There's a, there's a Croatian Cup, which is probably that cup, and then there's a Croatian Super Cup. Yeah, that's probably. They the both one. got super in the name, so yeah. we just need to work out. But it is this one that we have won. That's the main one we want to win. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, back to back as well. They actually won it in real life last year, so we've won it this year as well. Uh, we beat Sibalia in the in the final. I don't think they're in our league. No, they're in the second division there, so they've done really well to get yeah. to the final. That's fantastic for us. More cup wins, two trophies down, one season in. And we're in the Champions League. And we're in the Champions League as well. Uh, let's take a look at the squad then. 39 goals for Lovadja, 26 for Kalinic. That's good. Huge, huge amount of goals. For Sati, got 18 assists. Uh, and Amir, who looks like he played on the right-hand side, he got 10, as well as Kalinic also getting 11 as well. So, done really well in including a lot of different players uh, in the goals. Stipe so Buick did play quite a lot. We don't need anything going forward, then, really, do we? If, you know, if you're going to buy anything, it's going to be in defence more than anything, really. Kalinic is 35. That's what one oh, thing yeah, we need to be looking that. at. Didn't yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. Uh, and, of course, we, we welcome back Marin. We'll be getting him back, are we? We're getting him back by that's the looks of it. That's good news then. Yeah, that's good news then. They so that haven't activated it yet. That could replace him then, couldn't it? But I don't think they will activate it because he played 14 games, started 14, and didn't score for them. All right. Either well, he... they are just not giving the ball because he is way too good for that league. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on there. Why he? Why they haven't been scoring with him? Okay, how much money do we have to to improve this side? Only 500k, less than 500k. We got a few players leaving, so we will be able to to mess around with the contracts and stuff, the the wages. Yeah. And see who we can bring in in the second season. Okay, Dad. One transfer on the outs. Stipe Buick has left the club completely out of my hands as well. I was rejecting offers for him. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, our board accepted just a 
1.2 million pound but because of the additional add-ons of potentially 5.5 million they accepted it uh, so he actually played one league game at the start of the season for us did really well and Inter Milan came in and made an offer of 1.2 million pound so we lose Stipe Buick uh, our left-sided wonder kid so that's disappointing to start yeah, things off at, at, the, in the, at the start of the season we've only brought in three players as well I found it so difficult to bring in players for this team let's start off with Balic who comes as a free transfer Croatian great centre midfielder and he can play in a number of different roles as well if you want him to play deep you can do that if we need him to play a little bit further forward he can also do that he has great player traits as well like arising, uh, arrives late in the player in the opposition's area so he will like to bomb forward and hopefully pick up some goals we're giving him the number 7 shirt as well so Balic comes in as a former player as well yeah Never Not bad at all no. uh, on a free transfer. Another player we brought in is a replacement wonder kid for all the wonder kid we just left. We've got Noah Gabriel Simic, who's 19 and he's six foot five, but he plays on the wing. Imagine being six foot five and being that quick and, <laughs> and that aggressive and that like technical. It's quite funny seeing tall people run as well. I mean, Peter Crouch when he used to run, it's so funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it, it must be a sight to behold, but yeah. there we go. So he, ha he has a great potential on the game. We picked him up on a free transfer from Borussia Dortmund. Again, he's Croatian. Uh, he came through the Borussia Dortmund Youth Academy, so we can't obviously see whether like he played for Split before or through Zagreb's Youth Academy or whatever, but there we go. He's banged and a goal in for us as well. That's good. He has as well. Yeah. And our final transfer, because we lost a couple of centre-backs, we always by somebody who's very well groomed don't we like yeah more turkey teeth again that like. gotta be uh, marlon torres he's colombian 27 years of age fantastic player really good and we've got him from the colombian leagues on again on a free transfer this is going to be a good starting center back now there is like a foreign limit rule in croatia but we were nowhere near it i think right. you are, you can only have a maximum of six off the top of my head and we only had three so bringing in marlon was no problem uh, because i usually i would just stay away because if i don't understand the rules i just won't bother yeah after the amount of problems we've had with work Shit. permits and italian leagues he's scored a few goals players. over the seasons as well so he's um on the all set pieces he could be handy couldn't he, he? could corners. be good even though he's only 5'11 so he's not the biggest centre back yeah. but we've brought him in because he's quite intelligent like that positioning of, of 14 yeah we're going to need that in this league so those are just the three players that we have brought in the tactic let's take a look at it obviously it's exactly the same as what it was before we don't, don't need change to change it, it no nope. uh, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm going to play Lubicic up top on that right hand side as the advance forward for the simple reason, he is the faster one of the two. Uh, and we want Levaja, who's maybe the more experienced and the better on the ball, to drop back. Because yeah. he can, as you can see, play in that number 10 role. We want the other one to get a bit of confidence as well. Get a few goals behind his back. That's I reckon it. he could just start going forward then, couldn't he? That's it. Yeah. So, Levaja, being up front with somebody with the experience of Levaja, uh, who plays as a more complete forward, yeah. does everything. Whereas, Lubicic, we just want you to focus on the goals. Because you didn't score any last season. Maybe there was, you know, there were players you in stupid positions you can see here they've got a right midfielder slot that he might have been playing that we don't want any of that but three goals in six appearances Good start. and one assist great yeah. start to the season if you look at overall 10 goals in 12 appearances seven of them came in continental competitions uh -huh. because obviously we've been playing in the qualification for yeah. the champions league let's take a look this is looking good it does on the the first of it but we ended up in the europa league right which i don't mind too much no no because obviously champions the money league, in the you're champions not league great. In the champions league no. i mean they have played in the champions league yeah they got to the quarterfinals three times really that's the best they've done yeah so they, is that you know, like recently in like the newer no, format no, no, since no, the Champions League or I was going back previously? A, I yeah, think I was when they were back a few years, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's obviously been quite a few Yugoslavian teams who have won the Champions League yeah. in the past. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a look then. So Ludogorets was the the team that knocked us out of the Champions League. There, uh, another club that dominates their league. Really, like a few people have mentioned how Bulgaria is just dominated by Ludogorets. Can we overtake them? That's that kind of thing. So coming up against them is always going to be difficult. They knocked us out four one in the home leg for us yeah. which is it's the home leg it yeah, done, it's yeah, disappointing we've we, we done well on the way leg yeah 1-2-1 one, one on the away you leg you've the job done haven't you yeah we faced Karabag to begin with and then we faced Genk which could have been very I'm difficult that is a hell of a result yeah beating them 4-0 on the we second we know game. how good they are because of the Antwerp rebuild we did yeah. recently 4 all away from home Brilliant. 4-0 at home, yeah. which is insane. What a result that is. Uh, Lubicic got two in that in that game as well. So, in the league games, though, 
it's been all wins. Yeah. We can see a 6 0 there, a 3 1, 2 1 against Rieka, 3 1 against Dynamo. Uh, Lavaja got a hat trick, and that's away from home as well. Uh, and then we've got a couple here, a 3 1 and a 2 0. Great start. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Fantastic start. Just what talk we needed. Talk about starts, though. Yeah. We were formed in 1911. Yeah. And the story was that the. These two, well, these people went to watch a, a match somewhere in Yugoslavia and decided to come back to split, went into a local pub. What do you reckon they were? Forms most teams that we've talked about, students. Right, yeah. So they've gone and watched the game, come back and thought, right, well, we want our own team in split. So they've decided to do their, you know, build their, they had to lose their good friends and all that, we were, we were good footballers. So they decided to, to form their own side. And in the local leagues, they were doing really well. And they managed to get into the, the um, Yugoslavian Professional League yeah. in the 1920s. And um, they started off from there, really. Oh, wow. Um, so when they went through the... I mean, we just talked about the history of the Yugoslavian Leagues and all that. And they went through doing really well and all that. When they eventually got into the Croatian League, because obviously when it's finished, they've never been relegated out of the top league. Yeah. You know, it's a good little side. Yeah, I mean, I, I know there's only one team that gets relegated, but still impressive when there's only 10 teams in it. Yeah. We were talking about their finances. Like I said to you earlier, their, their finances hasn't been very good over the years. Now it is. The reason being is they are owned by the fans. Ah, always works. Yeah. When always they were having works. so much trouble and that, they decided the only way they were going to save the team, and it was close to folding. Yeah. The fans got involved, went to the council, the local council, and got them to take out a loan. And they, and they, the, 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 the council sort of supported the loan, but the fans bought the club. Yeah. And they were all each buying each you know, shares in the fans. They got eighty-one thousand fans members now. Yeah. So um, that's how this team sort of survives. And that's why it will continue to, yeah. because there's fans two, always have Apparently there's two teams in Croatia that's owned by the fans. I'm not sure which the second team was. Yeah. Probably could be Dynamo. Um, but yeah, that's how they survive. Well, there you go. Uh, obviously, it's 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 a work. It works really well in the Bundesliga. Yeah. Uh, we always mention it, didn't we? The, the, yeah. the 49 plus 1 uh, rule that they've got over there. Something that I would love to have seen in the Premier League is just never going to happen. No. Unfortunately, it's just never going to happen. No. People go on about the Super League. Premier League is basically the Super League, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because I mean, we've seen the money that Chelsea's chucking around and obviously Man City, they're getting... We, we, we're, we're recording this when they've just been uh, found guilty. Well, not found guilty, but like being been told that they've been being, accused being yeah, guilty. Like nothing's 100, been... 100 offences. Yeah, so we're, we're still at the point where we're like... Don't know what's going to happen yeah. with them. Uh, we could be doing a rebuild of them in League Two next year. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. But anyway, it's a great start for us at the start of the season. 18 points from a possible of 18, and we're playing in Europa League. Uh, let's take a look at our group. We've got Feyenoord, we've got Borussia Mönchengladbach, and we've got Mold, which is going to be three very difficult games. Yes. Two very difficult. Mould, you'd like to think we should be able to overcome. I'd, I'd be very happy if we managed to go through. Yeah. Very surprised is what I was looking for, really. Yeah. I can't see us getting past Fine Order and um, Munch and Gladbach. The good thing is that this is the last time that if you finish in third, you qualify for the the tournament below it. Yeah. Uh, so we'd go into that conference league again if we did finish in third. But that's the last time, this is the last season that that will happen because obviously we go into the new format, that's not the case anymore. You do the league phase and then if you're out, you're just out. Yeah. Uh, which I prefer, to be honest. But that's the one good positive about that new format. Uh, we're still yet to find out if there is any positives <laughs> outside of that. Uh, okay, we'll simulate this next season and see how we get on. Second season, and we finished in second place. Four points. Yeah. Uh, Dinamo's obviously bit back. They've come well, back firing. Down, lost five games, drew six. That's where we lost it then. Yeah, drew six games there. So teams that really we should be beating. Yeah. I mean, I'm only looking at that and thinking Ozajek maybe. Well, when you're looking at the two each, uh, three each, two each. When we did get beat, we got we got hammered. We got tonked. <laughs> so not great. But yet we still have the two top scorers of the league. And our goalkeeper has 62. the third amount of clean sheets. It's just that Livakovic has double the amount. Drawing games cost you. Yeah. You can't afford to uh, Absolutely. do it, can you, really? We have so many players in man of the matches, the highest average ratings. We've even got one in the most assists. It's mental, isn't it? How yeah. that's like, how we haven't won the league. When you can, when you look at these statistics, you think, wow, uh, Hajduk Splits dominated that. We haven't dominated the league, though. Four points we lost it by. Now, other competitions. How have we done? We were out of the quarterfinal in the conference league by Leicester. So we finished in third. We got six points there. We won two games, both against Mould, uh, where we didn't concede a game, didn't see, concede a goal, and we faced Leicester in the quarterfinals. I'm more surprised with Leicester being in that, in that league. Yeah. 
We won the first leg 3 0. Oh. We lost the second leg 5 0. Uh, the knockout playoff, we went and beat uh, Maccabee Tel Aviv. And then the round of 16, we knocked out Braga. That's a big result. Win. Yeah, because yeah, they got money now. Yeah. And they got some decent players too. So we've we done quite well there. Leicester went on to the final. They lost in the final Marseille. against Marseille. Extra time. Difficult. Yeah. In the cup, we faced Dinamo in the semi final. And obviously, I'll, it's a 50-50 then, isn't it? I was up to win the cup again because in the 1970s, which was our best years, yeah, they actually won the Yugoslavian Cup five years in a row. Ooh. So I was hoping really that we could, have, especially winning it the first season, I thought, hang on, we could yeah, do this yeah. again. I think it was 72 to 77, something like that, yeah. they won the cup. And, uh, Has Dynamo done that? It probably No, have. they haven't. No. Well, all the way back until 2005, as far as we can yeah. go there, they haven't done that there so i mean obviously this only goes to uh, yeah that's right yeah the 92 Yugoslavia season when starts it, yeah uh but nobody's done five years there we've got a couple of threes but that's that's as far as it is yeah unfortunately we can't do that but nope. patreon members might be able yeah, to do that that's right yeah remember after the five seasons you get the save gang file on the five pound tier patreon.com forward slash megaloot gaming thank you everybody who's been signing up recently really do appreciate it and everybody's continuing to sign up and uh, and has a look every single day okay not bad then, just not great. No. We did all right in the... Disappointed with that. Yeah, we did all right in yeah. Europe, I think. I think we made a good of a count ourselves in yeah. Europe. Uh, goals wise, though, it's very impressive because 51 from Lavagia. 94 and goals in two players. You cannot argue with that. At no, all. they did their job, didn't they? I mean, after seeing that, I'm really disappointed we didn't win the league. Yeah. Or Cup. Yeah. yeah. 20 assists from our new player that we picked up on a free transfer, the young Croatian. Noah Gabriel Simic, the six foot five monster so who plays out on the wing, <laughs> fast pacing uh, six foot five player. Uh, six foot six now he's gone up. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's growing. By season five he'll be seven foot two, um, and he'll be twenty pace and acceleration. Well, you you watch. Really good uh, uh, statistic wise, just not good on the pitch because by the looks of it, both our wingers had nearly twenty assists each. Yeah, really strong from them. How much money have we been given though? At the minute, it says zero, and we've ended the season. So whether that changes, we'll have to find out. Now, unfortunately, we never got given any money. Uh, so I had to make a couple of players... I had to sell a couple of them just so I can bring somebody in to offer them decent enough wages yeah. for them to say yes. So Cl Christian Glauder is the man that I brought in. He's a left-back, quite a good one. We lost our left-back, unfortunately. He is Spanish, 28 years of age. We got him from Albacete. Free transfer. He actually scored five goals last season, so we'll, we'll see if he does that for us. Yeah, yeah, um, but he can also play centre-back too. As you can see, we've lost quite a lot of players. A lot of them are Croatian as well. They're just not wanting to like renew their contract. It's really strange. Yeah, yeah, we think they we're the second-best team in the league this season. Yeah, so. that's unfortunate. Uh, which has meant that I've had to have a look at things a little bit because, obviously, we haven't really done much... Uh, other than that first season, we haven't really managed to do anything in that second season, capitalise on that. So what I'm looking at now is not securing anybody in. And this is going to be my telltale season. Yeah. If you don't cut the mustard this season, you're gone. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so let's take a look then, because schedule-wise, we have done very well after Definitely. me telling them that. We yeah. started off with a 12-0 win. Lubicic has actually just gone mental with the goals. Like, if you don't see his name, it's probably because he didn't play. Yeah. Um, he's, he's scored so many. So we won, well, won the first Europa Conference, or Europa League, 16 nil. <laughs> then we played AEK Larnacast, that, that team I said I've never played against, yeah. we play against them now, uh, from Cyprus, we beat them 4-1, then we defeated Rakao in the next leg, 1-0 on both, both legs there, and we've gone into the Europa League league phase, which is great. In the league itself, we've only actually lost one game, that is to Ozajek. Uh, just a couple of days ago, so that 3 was a bit disappointing, wasn't it? Yeah, but the rest of the games we've managed to win, and they are the games that we should be winning. Yeah. In all fairness, we haven't actually played Rijeka or played Zagreb yet, uh, which is obviously the two more difficult ones in our league. So, yeah, we're in Europa League. That's going to be fun. Our fixtures in Europa League. Let's take a quick gander at who we come up against. Maybe we can defeat a big team because we've got Lille, we've got Sevilla. The kings of this competition. Yeah, we've got Aberdeen, who are in a bit of a turmoil in real life. Yeah, right they now. are. They, they are their manager, don't they? Yeah, and we can get our revenge Ooh. on Villarreal if we can. We need to, there, don't we? Definitely. Yeah. So if you want to qualify, that's the teams that we've got to beat. Because if we don't qualify, you're out the competition now. Nada, you don't get anything. Okay, so we'll simulate this season. See how we do.
Third season, and we're in second place again by 10, ten points. points. Yeah, what did we do wrong there then? Uh, we actually ended the season Brilliant, really man. well as well. We won all five games out of our last five. So we've had obviously a bad middle, I guess. Lost eight games. We had so many goals scored for us again. It's the defending that's not, not doing the, no. the job for us because we've got the highest average rating there as both our two strikers. We've even got Bal Balic there who's getting the third most assists in the league. It's just the defending that's costing us, unfortunately. Ten points behind Dinamo, which is usually what the league looks like. Yeah. But then we won the first season. Whether that was a fluke, I don't know. Whether this tactic was a one season wonder. Yeah. <laughs> Whether the players that we lost yeah, have been yeah. detrimental to us. We've lost quite a lot of players on free transfers that I haven't really highlighted. Whether they were a lot of really good first teamers. Uh, and obviously, Steve Buick, who left. So, not great. What about other competitions, though? Did we salvage it in the cup? No, okay, quarter final, knocked but knocked out by uh, Varizdin, who I've yeah. never heard of before. We um, knocked us out of there, though. And the yeah, round of 16, Sevilla. The kings of this competition. They've gone through, and Man United beat West Ham in the final. Man United? Yeah. Their biggest loss outside of England, apparently, Okay. from what I've read, is 6-0. To Hashtag Split. To Hashtag Split. It was, only, it was only in a friendly. Yeah. And I tried to find out what Man United players play, but I just couldn't find it. I couldn't find the game because of it being a friendly. But it did say, though, that um, Split had beaten 6 0, which apparently was the biggest defeat by Man United outside of England. Wow. A nice little walk. I'd love to have known when that was. <laughs> yeah. It was probably under Solskjaer. <laughs> yeah, <shit. laughs> we obviously did really well in the league phase then. We finished in fourth in the league phase. We I played a 1 6. We did beat Sevilla in the league phase. God. That's a shame, isn't it? We result, though, drew to Nantes and we lost to Villarreal. But by then, that was our last game. We'd already qualified by, yeah. the, by the looks of it. Uh, so done really well there. Rome obviously finished top. We actually finished above Man United, who ended up winning the bloody competition, which meant we went into the round of 16. We didn't play anybody else and we lost to Sevilla. That's a shame. Uh, and obviously, in the cup competition, we also didn't do very well. So let's take a look at the squad then. The statistics, 47 for Lubicic. And Levaja got 38 there with a good amount of assists. A lot still, of good assists there. Still banging in the goals then, mate. Yeah. So it's definitely the defence that's letting us down. It is definitely the defence. Absolutely. We, how much money do we have to increase that? Six. Where did that come from? Hello? Six million. Okay. Right. That's very different. We'll, we'll get, see what we can do then. Better do something about it, didn't you? Right. Okay then. On to the fourth season. Okay, I spent £4.5 million. That's a lot of money then for this yes. team. Yes. So, a couple of free transfers. One of them from Man United. Oh, hello. Let's take a look. It is the goalkeeper. Czech Republic, quite a good goalkeeper as well for this standard of league. He's going to be our first choice. Got an interesting little fact again. It involves a goalkeeper. Okay. Right? You know what I was saying? How the students started the team and they eventually got the, into the Yugoslavia League. Yeah. Um, in 1920. In 1924, you, their international team, Yugoslavia, played Czechoslovakia yeah. in a, an international game, and 10 of the players were from Split. Wow. That's how good their team was. The only one wasn't the goalie. And the only one wasn't the goalie. It was an Italian goalkeeper they had in the team at the time. Yeah. But the rest of the 10 players all started their game. Imagine being the Split's goalkeeper. <laughs> Still there on, lads. Have a good time in the international. Yeah. I'll be right back here. Yeah. I'll be training with myself because yeah. they didn't have subs back then did they they didn't no, have very big squad sizes no, a couple of extra be. players that's about it yeah that's hilarious so that goes to show what good side they built yeah when they in first very started short, yeah. short amount of time but yeah Kova comes in as our young goalkeeper i quite like the look of him to be fair so we'll see how he does uh, another free transfer that we brought in here salesia he is croatian six foot two 29 year old center back we good. needed as good center yeah. back he actually comes in from the greek league he's I mean, he's moved clubs quite often, hasn't he? Like, yeah. in the last few years. We're well, like his fourth club in five years, and he hasn't gone for a penny yet. He's been uh, in Croatia still... before as well, played in Croatia, that's so... all. Yeah. He knows our league. He actually scored eight goals last year. Yeah. Had a very good high average rating uh, playing in the second league in Greece. But there we go. Then I went for Gabriel Rivas, who is, again, another centre-back and Colombian again. So yeah. this one, though our new gen All right. so he doesn't actually exist in real life he looks quite good especially for being just 18 years of age and he is really what i spent the money on 3.1 million pound yeah. bringing him in but i think i've seen him and i thought hmm you bring him in you use him he's good he develops you sell him for a profit yeah definitely that's what they that's what teams are gonna be doing in this league yeah bringing rivas in let's see what he can do for us let's see how much he can develop then i brought back a couple of old boys yeah 
Look at this. So first one, I mean, he's he never played for Split, I don't think. He didn't, know. Uh, he came through the Ozajek uh, team, but he went to Manchester City and then hasn't really played. He went on loan uh, to Ozajek to begin with and scored 17 goals after they signed him for £3 million. Pound. He scored 17. Then he went on loan to Copenhagen last year. Only got four, but I loaned him and he's got two in three appearances so far this season. He's a really good uh, striker. Dion Drenner Belgio. I've done a YouTube short about him as well, so he did really well for me in that. Six foot five. He's a monster. Good player at attacking yeah. the ball and he's very good off the 100% ball 100% well. playing for his country, look. He has, yeah. One cap, one, one goal. One goal, we'll take it. And then we bring back Stipe Buick just a year after he left. Yeah. Uh, he's back on loan. We need you. We needed him. And the funny thing is, as well, he actually gave us an optional future fee if we wanted it, so they can't like him that yeah. much. £6.5 million, pound, I'm not sure whether we have I don't we're going to be But no, there we go. Uh, we brought him in from Inter Milan. Let's see what he can do. He's got a goal and assist on his return straight away because he only scored. He only played one game for them last year yeah. after he signed for them and didn't even play for like their youth academy. So they just... Most he scored for us was two goals in one season, so he's already yeah. almost <laughs> yeah, there. halfway there. Yeah. He's like, I'm having the season of my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's see what Stipe Buick can do in our team. Uh, I think we needed to change things around tactically as well. That's two seasons where we haven't really done anything. Yeah. Uh, so we've gone more attacking. <laughs> <laughs> no, so let me explain a little bit more. Go on in. During pre-season, and we're going to see the results, I had a different formation where I had two players in the defensive midfield role because I thought we need to pack out this midfield a little bit more and make them a little bit deeper. Yeah. Then I found we weren't winning at all. Right. So we had to change things around. Now, we've got Lavagia, we've got Belgio, and we've got Lubacic, who are all scoring goals. And how harsh would it have been if I dropped Lavagia or Lubacic? There is a good English saying in there. Good form of defence is attack. Yeah. So, all right, go with it. Lavagia is really good in that role there. Well, and the be in it, yeah. inverted wing backs will help the midfield. That's yeah. what they do. They go and sit in here very much like Man City. So we'll see how this does across the season because we cannot judge it on these results because it's <laughs> recent <laughs> change. Hang as on a you minute. can see here, as you can see here, uh, 4 4 2 with two DMs. That's what we played. But we lost against Dinamo. So we were winning games that I thought we should be winning nice and easy. Although, yeah. But then the two teams that I thought we would cut, we'd struggle against, Rijeka and Dinamo, we couldn't get a win. No. So I think, right, okay. that That's because if you look at it as well, I didn't sign Belgio until quite late. Belgio was 11th of August, where I started playing both of them, and the 12th of August. By then, we had already played half of those games. Uh, so that's around about here. So I'd already played quite a few games there. Then we sort of started bringing him in, and I'm not really playing it. He's coming off the bench quite often, but then you can see he's starting to score goals. I don't really know who to drop. Mm. Let's go three up front, or kind of three up front. Yeah. So, we can't judge the tactic on what we can see here, but we can judge it going forward. We are, however, in the Europa Conference League this year. We beat St. Johnson across two legs to put us into the UEFA Conference League. So, we can check our fixtures in this competition. They're not going to be too extravagant, but we do have a trip to Slovan Bratislava, Zablonek, which I think is the Czech League, Larm, which is Ireland. So, yeah. we're, we're going to go to, to Northern Ireland uh, and have a have a go at Larn. Proper village pitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, so some some quite entertaining games that we've got coming up in UEFA Conference League. So we'll, we'll see how we do in that. Right? right yeah. Okay. We, we haven't got a bad. We've we've made it to two semi-finals. Yeah. One's in the UEFA Cup in 1984. Yeah. And I've got to bring this one up, and you know why I'm going to bring it up. They lost in the semi-final to Spurs. To Spurs. Who went on and won it as well, didn't they? Who went on and won it, yes. Maybe Anderlecht in the final, which that's we right. established in the Anderlecht video. Yes, that's right, yeah. So, um, and the other one, they lost against Leeds. Yeah. In 1972 in the Cup Winners' Cup. Yeah. 1-0 on aggregate. Right, okay. So they were unlucky, really. They nearly, they nearly made two finals and come up against two, at those particular times, two Very strong good teams. British sides, yeah. yeah. So, okay. so they, they haven't got a bad at a European record. They just can't get that final step of getting into the final game. Yeah. They? So it's yeah. a shame, really. So Until now! <laughs> right. <laughs> right, let's simulate this fourth season and see how we do. <laughs> fourth season and we're back winning the yes. title. Get in. I like this tactic. I think it's really good. Uh, <laughs> great stuff. Okay, so... 82 points there, 75, so we won it by a nice little margin yeah. there. We won 25 games in total, lost only four. So there you go, see? 
Exactly, and one of them obviously was that one at the start of the yeah. season. So, goals-wise, though, Belgio scored 22. Lavaggio only scored 18. That's a lot less than what we've been seeing when we've been yeah. finishing in second place. But the clean sheets... Kovar got 13 clean sheets Here right behind Livakovic, who is obviously the best goalkeeper in the league. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. What about competitions? Did we reclaim the cup again? Yes, we did. And we got to the semi-final again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by RC Lens. You oh. do have quite a good team, to be fair. We've nearly France. done it. Nearly done it. Uh, they beat us 4-2 on aggregate. We won the second leg Leicester as well. Again. They went and faced Leicester in the final and lost. 5-0 at the yeah. Veltins Arena in Gelsenkirchen. So, in the cup final, did we beat Zagreb in the final? That would have been nice. No, Ozajek, 3-2 in that final. Uh, with Lubicic getting the most goals in that competition. Look how funny it was, though, because we went, we scored in the 68th minute, they scored in the 80th, we scored in the 87th, they got one in the 89th to equalise, and like, right, lads, extra we'll concentrate time. now until extra time, yeah. and we'll win it there. And then Lavaggio was like, nah, mate, 92nd minute, <laughs> crush your dreams and we'll win the cup. We, we deserve it though we had 27 shots of 14 on target if you're going to um, win a if you're going to win a cup for them, it's brilliant scoring in the last second oh, yeah. they, they just can't do nothing about it can no, they no no it just breaks hearts yeah you, know? you just see all the players just go to their yeah. knees oh. <laughs> goals wise then this is what i like yeah, to see look at that three of them three of them up there which actually totals to more goals than what we've scored in previous seasons yeah. and they've all got high assists which obviously means they're Nobody passing tripper. to each other yeah, as well. That's good. Uh, of course, we are going to lose Belgio now and Stipe Buick. They're going to be going back to their clubs unless we can cough up the funds to get both of them because they do both have options to we buy. We made a semi final so we've done well. Yeah. Um, so there might be a bit of money there for us. Uh, there's only four million, oh, which can't even get one, one of them, one I don't going. think. <laughs> uh, so we'll go forward next season and see how we do. Well, Dad, I believe in bringing him back. Yes, that's a good sign. Sign him on a permanent I'd have, deal. I'd have been we just signing him, really. Yeah. Uh, we might have paid £2 million more than what Inter Milan paid for him, but he had a good season last year, very high average rating as we well. We would look at it as he played two seasons for us and we won the league both times. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He got bought during that second season before he left. And he's got better as well. He looks fantastic. He's an elite player for this league now, this, this standard. He's very good for it. 23, he knows I've had my move and it didn't quite work out. Yeah. He's come back. Unfortunately, though, we did lose Gabriel Rivas. He moved to Man United. However, they were very kind and let us loan him to the end of the season. Oh, so we still got him for us. But unfortunately, yeah. Patreon members, did you, you won't with, have him. Did you do that with your contacts, did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right, Eric. Look, mate. Yeah. Me and you are pals, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, I've always had your back. Uh, so, yeah, they signed him for £8 million. As I said, you get your money back for yeah. £3.1 million pound is all we spent. £8 million pound is what we sold him for. And we actually turned down loads of offers like PSG, Liverpool coming in, and then the Man United one was just accepted. But they offered to loan him back, and I was like, yes, let's do that. He's good. He's amazing. I don't know why United would want a player like that, because I don't think he's going to be that amazing. But still, we'll, we'll see. For our league, he's great. Yeah. Now, we have also signed two other players. This guy is going to be the replacement for um, Belgio up front he's 6'3 so not quite 6'5 but he's 6'3 nope. but yeah. he's also very good in the air yeah and has great attributes looks a good player yeah he does look very good quite experienced german he's played in germany and in greece scored quite a lot of goals as well 10 goals ten there goals in, in season, the greek yeah. super league yeah and then finally we've got another free transfer from Vizela, and that is samu who is a portuguese player who can then give lavaja uh, a little bit of a break because he is quite old now yeah. i think he's like 34 so even though this guy's 30 <laughs> we can still rotate them yeah. Yeah. Uh, and coming in as a free transfer. So Lavage is 33, but he will turn 34 during this season. And his physicals are starting to decline a little bit. So it gives him a bit of a break, doesn't yeah. it? So let's take a look there. Now, tactic, I don't think I needed to change it. I think tactically, we Silly were you did, yeah. we found something quite nice there with this, uh, this diamond formation. But what I will do is I'll go and have a look at our best 11 so we can take a look at that. In this final year, we got Lavaja up front there with Lubicic, and we got Krovinovic, who is actually the guy that was starting at the club, I think, who uh, our assistant sees as kind of our best player in that role. But yeah. I probably wouldn't. I'd probably say Samu. I've been playing Samu in the preseason, um, and he's been quite good there. Well, We'll just see how it plays out. In the schedule then, let's take a look because we've had a little bit of a ropey start. Uh, we were in the Champions League uh, qualifier. We got through by the skins of our team. We won 4-1 in the away leg and lost 3-2, which means we are playing 
Champions League football this year. Look who we're playing against. Nice. Them. Some big teams. We'll yeah. get to that. We lost to Dinamo, unfortunately, twice at the start of this league campaign That's already. Not, good, though, it? not at all. Uh, we also drew a game there, which we really shouldn't be drawing. Okay, so. We'll focus more on the Champions League for now and we'll take a look at the league at the end of it because we've got some big boys in there. AC Milan, Leverkusen, Chelsea, <laughs> Man City and Atletico at the end there. Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Top eight? <laughs> <laughs> top eight easy. Yeah. Definitely top we'll eight. We'll go for it, shall we? Uh, this could be the surprise season. Yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah it'll be the surprise factor. got to believe in yourself and you. Okay, we'll see you in its fifth and final season. Before we go, see though, all, okay. you know, I'll try to find someone up with the kits and that. The kits, yeah, which, sorry I didn't download the kits so we can have a look at them on here. Yeah, the away kit is the original kit that they started off in. Yeah. The blue and red stripes, but um, it only lasted for four seasons, I think, and I don't think they liked it because it was too close to other teams. Uh, the kits so all... They actually, four seasons time, they went to the white kit and it's been the white kit ever since. Yeah, which is also very similar to a lot of the clubs in that division as <laughs> yeah, well, from yeah. what I can see. Yeah, I mean, I think they, the, the red and blue is mainly because of the, the their badges, all red, white and blue yeah. and all that. So you can see why they went that way, but um, it was too close to close rivals, I think it was. Yeah, the, Zagreb's kit is yeah. very much blue with a red and white yeah. tint, isn't it? Uh, so always going to be quite similar. I think like... I always find it really funny when uh, teams from nations have very similar kits to the nation's flags. Yeah. Because I think in... Uh, or, or they all have very similar, like, in the Netherlands, how many of the top clubs all wear red and white? Mm. There's, like, seven of them. Yeah. In the top division, you all wear red and white. And it's like, oh, I've got away away kit again <laughs> yeah. today. It's like, well, I'm not surprised. You're yeah. all wearing the same bloody colours. Um, but there we go. Okay, now we can finally simulate this fifth final season Come and on. see how we get on. There we go, another league title, and it's a Boy, dominant one. Like that one, yeah. all the way. Yeah, how you boys doing down there? Because uh, yeah. we're Leeds champions once again with 87 points. Lost, lost five, five. And two of them were at the start. Only lost three. A goal, the main goal, goal average as well, at 103. Yeah, what an extreme season we've yeah. had there. It feels like maybe once we were out of the Champions League, uh, we decided to actually <laughs> do quite well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 27 goals for Lubicic. Lavaggio still got 24, even though you know he's he's losing a bit of physical prowess. He's still done really well. And even our our our, our, uh, our new signings come in and done quite well there. He's got a 7.46 average rating when he has played. Really nice. And the first time we've had the highest amount of clean sheets chucking in more players up front have yeah. actually done better for us defensively yeah. insane stuff uh let's take a look then other competitions how have we done league phase and then we faced dinamo in the second round of the cup oh, and wow. got eliminated yeah. so no cup for for us in this one uh we'll take a look at the league phase of the champions league oh 30 seconds <laughs> so close to the top eight we won one game against charleroi in that's belgium you expect to win in yeah really. we drew to athletic that's a good result yeah at home and we lost six not too bad actually no like there's not we one tonkin in there is no there? we didn't get hammered did we just a couple of four twos there from leverkusen and Salzburg. i mean it's a golden man city and lose three one i'll take that you scored as well yeah go to san siro yeah and only lose 3-2 to AC Milan. That's a hell of a result, isn't it? Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, I think we actually did made quite a good of a count of ourselves. Yeah. Ajax uh, won the, the most, they won seven. Who won the Champions League? I'm just curious. PSG beat Man City in the final. Who have been winning it? Because we haven't been in it at all, so I've never really looked. Liverpool, Man City have won it, and Real Madrid. Okay, fair enough. Chelsea won it the first season. Not bad at all, then. No. Let's take no. a look at the goals tally. Who has been scoring? So, Lubicic scored the most, as you can see here. He's now 25. He's our best player. Player. Absolutely phenomenal player as well. If you manage to keep hold of him in the five year rebuild, you, you cannot, cannot afford, afford to sell, sell him. him. Nope. He is very, very good indeed. Lavaja still 29 goals and 17 assists. Uh, and Philip Tiet managed to get 21 goals, who is he was kind of like our rotation guy, he played 19 games yeah. off the bench. So they've done really well there. Fantastic stuff. Uh, the transfer market. Oh, get out! <laughs> Every single time, <laughs> seventy. That's over double that we've what we've had. Like three times more. Three times, yeah. That's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, fair enough. I think FM's getting used to us doing a five-season rebuild. So we yeah. can start doing a six-season. <laughs> Inflation on well, the sixth season. What, should we just not do the first season just and then get do it. five from then on? I used to do that, didn't I? <laughs> I used to simulate the first season, then do five years. Yeah. That's what we used to start off doing because we 
start it in the summer and I was like, well, I know who's good at transfers now. Yeah. So, oh, well. Right. Two questions. First off, if you go to the ground in split, first off, what is the atmosphere really like? Yeah. Do you find that with the running track, it is difficult? But also, what type of food do they sell there and what is the food like? And finally, Dad, what is the challenge for the five-year rebuild that people take on on the Patreon? I'm going to do, we've won the league three times. Yeah. Try and beat that. Try and beat that. We've done so a double. You can get four in five years. We actually done a double. So if you can do a treble somewhere along the line by winning something different, go for that. But my, my challenge is you. I don't want to make it too hard because it's hard to do anything else. Just try and beat us winning three leagues. Yeah. You've got a you've got a really good team and the budget we've just given you. Wow. Yeah. You've got a good tactic. So I think all you need to do is just improve one or two players. And that you've got the money. Is really good. Yeah. yeah. You've got the money to do it. So. A lot of people uh, download the save game file because they like to steal the tactic. Yeah. This is a prime example of one that might be quite good to steal. Competition reputation is actually up to 13th, which, as we can see here, has gone up because 2024, it was down to 18th in 2022. So we've gone up five positions there. Yeah. Uh, we've built the nation. So if you'd like to continue that, get them into the top 10 as well, that would be great. Thank you very much for watching. Leave all your Don't suggestions the in the comments. Buttons as well. Exactly. We've got a big target to go for. Come on, let's get for it. thousand subscribers. It's Come kind on. of out of reach. Yeah. But if we make a big push for it, it's definitely possible. Yeah. Just get push that the button. The wall. Just push that button. Just do it. Right. Thank you very much. We'll see you next Monday for another rebuild. Bye-bye. Well, we're finally back rebuilding a team in Scotland because, I mean, loads of people have been suggesting that we need to do Aberdeen. Yeah. They are on yeah. a downfall right now. Yeah. Uh, so they desperately need us. Also, anybody else get the memo about the uh, weird and wacky <laughs> shirt? <laughs> uh, that was by accident. Right. Okay. Aberdeen, Dad. Yes. It's a team we've done before, but it was mm. quite a long time ago. Yeah, it was, yeah I couldn't remember anything. So I looked no. it all up again. So, uh, uh, and yeah. we've obviously grown the audience since. So yeah. I think, you know, we, we're, we're fine. We can carry on doing it as we normally do. Well, as you do. can see, they were, they were formed in 1905, but they actually joined the Football League. 1903. You've got glasses yeah, on, have you? Yeah, no, I haven't. No. <laughs> they joined the actual Football League in 1905, though. They've never been relegated out of the top league. Oh, and they're bloody close oh, this season. Yeah, so it's not looking good, is it? I mean, I haven't seen an updated one from the last, like, couple of weeks, but when I started this one, it did, we were looking good. Well, no, they had that massacre hammering, didn't they, from... Uh, was it Celtic or yeah. Rangers? One of the one of the two top two, wasn't it? And um, they sacked the manager right after, didn't they? Yeah. So you can understand why. Um, it's football, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know that feeling of being sacked, mate, don't you? Never had it. Never, not once. <laughs> um, right, okay. So with a big bit of history, especially connected to my love of uh, Manchester United, well, which I'll, I'm sure we'll yeah. get to. I was going to say, is this your favourite Scottish team through that link? I don't really have one, to no? be honest. No, I mean, I, when, I, when I was growing up, I always liked Rangers. Yeah. Uh, but I liked Rangers, but my my favourite Scottish player, not Scottish player, but in the league, was Larson. Yeah. So it was a Celtic player. You can understand why. Yeah, yeah. So and obviously that he then played for United. Yeah. Um. So I never, I don't really have a lot of favourite in uh, in Scottish football, to be honest. I'm gonna go for Alloa. Oh, that's because of Nan. Yeah, because my mum was born there. Yeah. So. And I've been to the ground as well. So yeah. So, so sorry, the Alloa fans at the moment not having a good season. No. But, um. <laughs> right. Okay. So we, do, I didn't sign any players this first season. I left it as it was. But they have signed some weird players like Jay Gorter from. Ajax as a as a loan deal. He's a, he's the goalkeeper. He's quite a good goalkeeper as well. But what I did notice that as you can see, there's a lot of loan deals. There's a lot of loans in the first team as well. So yeah. they do have a bit of a star man, and it's this guy here who so far has scored 12 and 9 for us. Uh, he's called Duck. That was unplanned as well. We're <laughs> just two comedy geniuses, <laughs> yeah. isn't we? People are just going, oh yeah, switch this off. This is yeah. crap. Uh, right, okay. So, yeah, from Cape Verde, he's also got a cat. I mean, I guess it's for Cape Verde. I don't think he's ever played for Portugal. No, but they bought him from Benfica a couple of seasons ago. He's doing very well for us so far. Very pacey player. Very good in this league because, obviously, the, some of the standards of defenders, they're quite slow. Yeah. So, having pace is going to be very overpowered. So, uh, let's take a look at the tactic then to start things off in this first season. Uh, we're going for a diamond. Uh, I haven't done a diamond for a while. The reason for it is I wanted to pack out that midfield. I think when you play against either Rangers or Celtic, when you're simulating, you're going to get battered if you're very open in midfield yeah. because the calibre of player are so much more superior. So putting more players in midfield, I'd like to think would help us in that midfield battle. We yeah. might not win the game still, but I think it will stop us from getting over on as much. And usually when it's like that, I think ah, you only play them twice a year. Not in the Scottish League. Nope. You tend to play them four times. Yeah. So Was we need Top, the top half played each other, didn't they? Yeah, that's what right, I've said in the relegation so, battle. Uh, hopefully, if we're in the top league, we'll end up playing them more than just the twice. So we're going to have to think about that. What were the news this week, then, eh? What's that? Sorry. The next two big firm games have been played 
without the crowd. Oh, really? Yeah. That's going to be awful. Yeah, because of the crowd trouble at the end of the last game. So yeah. they banned the, uh, the home well, home crowd for uh, the next two games. So I mean, behind closed doors. It's a shame, but, you know, it's the it's the, 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 the very few spoiling it for the, minor, for the majority, yeah, isn't definitely, it? Definitely, yeah. Minority spoiling it for the majority. Right, so our best 11. Let's take a look at it then. Uh, Miofsky and Duck up top. Um, I mean, he's going to be our key player. We're going to, yeah, we're going to be here all day. Clarkson and Shinny in midfield. Like this is, I mean, we're not going to know a lot of these players, but this is basically for anybody who's watching who's into Scottish football. This is what uh, our assistant manager considers as our best level. Now it's a very balanced mentality. We've got a lot of instructions uh, focusing the play down the wings, even though there is no wingers. It just works. Don't ask why. And speaking of it working, we have only lost one game. That was to Celtic. I'll take that though. And it was a very tight game although yeah. they were down to 10 men they've got a lot of japanese players recently we haven't they up. yeah they have yeah and um, this is one of them he scored in the 74th minute he's got a brace in total for an away game 2-1 yeah i'll take that yeah uh, but we've got a couple of uh, fantastic results here there's a motherwell win st johnson livingston games that you'd hope we would win um and we have managed to do that but that was even like going back into the in the friendlies in the, the scottish league cup c groups whatever this is uh, like we beat benfica Beat Aloha. That's, yeah. a big, that's a big game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a great start so far. Now there's no European football for us in this season, so we can just focus on the league and the cups. What's your ambitions for this rebuild, Dad? If you don't win the league, split them. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it. I just <laughs> thought you were going to say that. I just had a feeling. You've got to try and split them, haven't you? Try yeah. To, well, you've got to try and beat both of them anyway, really. Yeah. But, I mean, we've lost against Celtic. I would say with that record already, we're going to be in the top half, so we're going to be playing them four times. Yeah, yeah. You've only got to get a couple of wins and you're in with a shout then, in you? Absolutely. Because everybody dropped silly points against silly teams somewhere along the line. Yeah. We haven't yet. No, but everybody does. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. We'll see about this first season then. Let's see how we do. Well, first season. Split them. And we split them straight away. Yeah. We absolutely dominated it as well. We yeah. had 19 points above Rangers. Rangers had a bad season. Though. They had a very bad time. We're still a little bit behind Celtic, but as obviously points is a lot you'd so, expect, it? they are quite good. They've only drew one game all season. Yeah. They did lose five. One of them was to us. Uh, so that's obviously in the championship side of things. So 97 We only lost five total. as well. Those were really we did, against. to be fair, yeah. Celtic, Celtic twice, Celtic twice and hearts. So not bad at all. We will definitely take that. Now, if we take a look at the league profile, we had the second top scorer, Furuhashi, got 41. That's mental, uh, but fair enough. And he's only got 12 finishing. <laughs> Just really good. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, so Duck managed to get uh, in second, 26 <laughs> points. He also got the highest, the second highest average rating. And Leighton Clarkson, which is a uh, is he is he on loan from Liverpool? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he got the second highest amount of assists. So very good. Jay Gorter got the most clean sheets alongside two very good goalkeepers and Craig Gordon and Joe Hart. But obviously he then goes back to Ajax as well. Yeah. So there's two cup competitions, Dad, in Scotland. One I'm not quite sure whether it's very like prestigious or not and then the other one is kind of the Scottish FA Cup yeah the other one is the Scottish League Cup as yeah. well so it's like our, our um, two cups really uh, we didn't get very far in either of them we faced Celtic in the quarter final of the Viva Play Scottish League Cup and the Scottish Cup which is the FA Cup style uh, yeah. fourth round by Hibs not great but I would take that because of how well we did yeah, in we the did, league yeah. uh, now a lot of the loan players have already gone back because for some reason in Scotland they end the loan deals in June so when I clicked on this I was like where's all my players gone <laughs> uh, so Duck got 35 goals uh, Miofsky got 20 that's good straight that's, away from that's our weakness strikers look. Two strikers, nothing else after. That's the problem, yeah. yeah. Three is the height. But I think, obviously, a couple of those lone players oh, might have scored. Yeah, Leighton yeah, Clarkson yeah. might have got a couple, yeah. to be fair. So we've got to get someone in or lone players in to, to replace them, really. That's the problem, yeah. yeah. That, that I think, you know, we've had a great season. We're like, oh, let's do it. Let's build on that next year. It's like, no, you've got to replace the players that played really yeah. well last year because they've all gone back to their main clubs. So transfer-wise, we've only been given £2.4 million to do that is not a lot it no. might be a case of a transitional period of the next couple of years that we might have to look into to actually do that uh, because we can't exactly rely on a lot of youth players yet because there are a few in the academy they're just not ready yet no so yeah we'll have to move on to the second season uh, let's see what we can do in the transfer window okay i did spend my money on one player uh, and he has 
The funniest Scottish name because McGuinness is a very Scottish name, but they spelt it how you would say it. Yeah. Which I don't think I've ever seen that no. spelling of it before. Kyle McGuinness, he is a cracking centre attacking midfielder. So we're missing good. goals from midfield. Yep. He's that guy. He has good passing ability, but he can also finish with 15 composure. If he gets himself into those opportunities, I think he's more likely to score yeah, than cool. he is That's to a good miss. Boy. Good long shots as well. Yeah. Uh, only 25. We picked him up from a club that's going to be up there with us for that best of the rest slot. Started well as well. Started very well for £1.7 million. So I normally always see Hibs do fantastic as well in Football Manager if I do mm. simulations. They yeah. always do well. Three goals in three with a good assist as well. Two player of the matches in those three appearances and a 7.9 average rating. Brilliant. Uh, we've also signed a couple of free, uh, in fact, three free transfers. We got this first one, Jovanovic. Uh, so he comes in as a centre back, 27 years of age, six foot two. Very good attributes for this league as well. He's very brave, good work rate, great positioning, absolutely fantastic. We've got him from the Cypriot League. He's played three games already, got himself an assist and a good average rating. Uh, so that's, I think, a really good free transfer. Yeah. And then this one, Albie Morgan from Charlton. So all the way down in, in the, uh, the lower leagues of England, obviously League One. He is a free transfer and he's actually, I think, quite a decent player. Play. He's only good 23. Squad, right? Very good indeed. So he is coming to the club as a free as well. He's got, got himself a, goal. a goal. Yeah, That's two midfielders scored. Yep. A good average rating as well. Now, obviously, we lost the goalkeeper yeah. on loan. We signed the goalkeeper for free, Marcus Bettinelli. He is English as well, six foot four. He's not the best goalkeeper. I would probably say Jay Gorta, the one that we loaned is from last season, is probably better. Uh, but this is the best that we could get with the money that we did not have. Uh, so, yeah, for now, he will definitely do for me. So, I don't think we need to change the tactics at all. So did we did, really. I agree. So we are running with the same tactic. Let's look at our best 11 and see where uh, people are putting in. The good thing I think this scene is we're not relying on any loan deals. No. I thought, no, I don't want to loan players in because that's always going to be your problem then. You're constantly chasing the next loan. Yeah. This is what we're rocking with. We've got a very good team and already they're building good relationships. McGinnis has only been here a couple of months and he's got a great relationship with his two strikers already. So that's really fantastic as well as Charlie Morgan, Albie Morgan, sorry, uh, in, in the midfield there. So, and Jovanovic has got a good relationship with his centre-back partner. So that's fantastic. And that is probably because we have won every game so far this season and put ourselves in the Champions League. Brilliant. Oh, yes. Good start. Uh, we've actually played against Jovanovic's first club, which is Red Star. They've just got a weird name on uh, on the football manager that's red star that we've beat across both legs there uh seven one on aggregate then we beat i would say like the the best of the rest team sometimes in portugal this team always does well in portugal vittoria we beat them across two Let's legs go back both times. To that, that, that picture there when aberdeen started that's virtually the same kit as what they had that black and gold stripes i like it as well yeah and that's when they that's how they, they i think the very first kit if i remember right was white they only played in it for like a few games and they went to black and gold yeah for about three seasons and then they went to red yeah i wonder why but, they changed to red yeah so from that we also have had some great that's a brilliant great win. results in the league yeah only conceded one goal and that was against rangers but we battered them 4-1 so can't complain about that at all good 2-0 to start off things with in karma guinness's debut he got himself two in a 2-0 win against hearts and then dundee united 4-0 remember if you're ever talking about dundee united make sure you say united after because you'll have so many people <laughs> yeah. in the comments section giving you crap <laughs> even though you are clearly looking at dundee united if you just call them dundee lego fuming right so our champions league group stage then we have ajax liverpool sporting we'll see you next season in the qualifiers <laughs> yeah uh even if the only scottish through. team though to actually win two european trophies yeah because obviously celtic won it with the um i can't remember what their their nickname was that they did it where everybody was in like a certain area wasn't it yeah from uh from glasgow they were all within the same region um the lisbon lions Might be. i think it's yeah. the lisbon lions something like that yeah but yeah oh yeah uh, aberdeen have actually won the cup winners cup and yeah. then they went on to win the the super cup against hamburg yeah which i believe they won 2-1 but i noticed a good thing about that game as well i think it was in 1983 I looked at the team sheet because I wanted to see if um, Kevin Keegan was playing for Hamburg. Yeah. And he wasn't. It might have been too early or something like that. The funny thing I did notice about it, and it's unusual, every player for Aberdeen was Scottish. Yeah. And every player for Hamburg was German. German. 
Yeah. So there wasn't one single foreign player in those two teams. Yeah. Which is, is unbelievable. Yeah, because there was but... rules where it was like a maximum of three, wasn't yeah. it? Because I remember when Man United qualified, they couldn't play a lot of their players because mm. even they were like Welsh or Irish. Yeah. They had to be English. That was the biggest thing with, with me with the Aberdeen team, that they didn't have any English players or, or Irish, Irish or Welsh. Yeah. But they, it was all Scottish players. Yeah. Uh, so that was obviously Sir Alex as well who took them to that, 1983, yeah, the yeah. Cup Winners' Cup. Uh, their most successful period at the club. Can we replicate that? Can we get through this group, Dad? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be faith. lucky. To, we'll be lucky to come third. I yeah, think. I love it. Right. Okay. Well, we'll find out. Let's let's see if we can qualify for Europa League. Right. In the second season, we managed to clinch that second spot again. So, just this time, it's very close. Yeah. A lot closer than what it was last year. The Rangers have stepped up, and we've dropped off ever so slightly. We had a bad end to the season as well. We only won one out of the last five. One of them was a draw against Rangers. So that's obviously where the draw, they slipped the draw up. The games cost us really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So Celtic have dropped down to 91 points. They only lost three games and drew seven this time round. Two of them were against us. Uh, but I'm just pleased that we've got into that slot again because. Yeah. That means we got the chance to go for Champions League football, which brings in the money yeah, each right, time. Yeah. So that's what we're looking for, really. Uh, let's take a look at the profile then, and we'll see who's in the goals. Duck and Mioski is up there. Brozier only got one more, and Duck also got the highest average rating and the most assists. Uh, my net's gonna go. In a <laughs> that's minute. what I've stopped. Yeah. Uh, so right, okay. So that's that's good. What about cup competitions? Come then? on. Did we win anything? We are the runners up of the Scottish League Cup. We've only won that cup once as well, I think. Yeah, semi final of the Scottish Cup by Celtic. Um, I'd imagine it's probably Selkie's beat us in the final. It was. Yeah. 2 1. So they've obviously gone on and probably won the treble, the domestic treble, I would say. No, Hibernian beat them in the final. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's unfortunate. Knocked out in the group stage. I am shocked. <laughs> Look at my face. Uh, right, so we, we did finish dead last. Liverpool and Sporting went through. We didn't win Ajax. one game, though. We didn't win one. We did draw two, though. Both home games against Ajax and Sporting. We give it our best shot we had a minus 14 goal difference but for Aberdeen to be in the Champions League group stages that's, that's a good. miracle in yeah. itself at yeah, this point yeah. considering how bad that they're doing uh, so yeah I, I would definitely take that I mean somehow even Tottenham qualified hey, for the Champions League a, last season we come through an hard group there look Roma in it as well look we come through an hard group there mental I will check did they win it of course they didn't it's Man City versus Barcelona in the final at Wembley right okay We'll go forward then to the third season. We had a look at the goals, actually. We'll take a look at the goals. Who scored the most? It wasn't Duck. It was Mioski who got 30. Duck got 28. Uh, Jovanovic, our centre-back, got 14. And Carl Brilliant. McGuinness got 10. So at least we've got two more assists. players in double figures, which is good. Yeah. Nearly three. So. And Albie Morgan, who was obviously a new signing, he got five and ten assists. So yeah. That's really good as well. Connor Barron in midfield. Because there's something to build on then, doesn't it? Yeah, I think Connor Barron was out on loan the season before. We didn't play him a lot last season. No, he was here. We did, oh, he did actually play quite a lot. I... I don't know why I said that. He didn't actually play a lot this season, considering. But yeah, he's done quite well as well this season with uh, 10 assists as well. So nice. And Ross McCrory, who was playing right back. So transfers then. Again, our squad isn't looking the the, the biggest in squad depth. Uh, we do need some more, more players. And 12 million, I think, is a good amount to bring that in. I'd be happy with that. That's because of the Champions League group stage, yeah. isn't it? So, so we're, we're being gonna, rewarded we're there. It. Thank you very much to the Aberdeen board. Let's see what we can do with it. So without taking in consideration these two signings here, which was the season before we have spent our money quite wisely i think and this is probably one of my favorite transfer windows i've done in a while because of i'm used to spending a lot more money on certain players i yeah. think i found a lot of bargains this season which i'm really pleased with so dylan levitt is an ex-man united player we got him from dundee United. United. He is a Welsh midfielder, very talented as well. Only 23, 900k after having quite a fair good season there at Dundee United. Also, a couple of players that we have signed from another couple of Scottish clubs. Greg Taylor, left back. I remember when this guy, when um, Celtic sold Kieran Tierney, they were like, it's fine, we've got Greg Taylor. Yeah. We, we'll, we've got Greg Taylor, nobody panic. Well, for some reason, he was on the transfer list, so I don't know whether he's... I mean, he's, he was shocked about it himself. <laughs> he can't believe he's now in Aberdeen. He thought I was supposed to be the next Kieran Tierney. But no, Greg Taylor, you find yourself here at Aberdeen. So £1.9 million. He's got himself an assist and a very good average rain at the start of the season. Uh, so I thought that was quite a good bargain, to be fair, when I found that one. Laura Shankland is quite uh, an infamous 
uh, football manager Scottish uh, striker because he's always really good at finishing. So uh, he moved a couple of seasons ago to Beershot in Belgium for a million pounds after being really good in a, a couple of clubs in the Scottish leagues, especially down the championship there when he played for Dundee United and Air, getting himself like above 20 goals. We signed him for four, uh, 1.6 million pounds. He's played four games so far, but only one of them was starts. He hasn't scored yet. That's my only concern. And he got nine last season. So I don't know whether it's like the pace is just gone for him altogether. Yeah. The most amount of money that we spent was on a centre back, and it's Albert uh, Valic or Valci. That's how you say it. Valci. He's Austrian. He's 29. I think he's a step above the centre backs that we definitely have. By all means, I don't think. I think to be honest, 3.5 million pound was a little bit of an overspend. But trying to find somebody who would want it's to come man. to the Scottish league yeah. for and improve our side is is the most difficult spot. But I do think it's a good signing nonetheless as a first team player. Uh, we then have this guy, which was a bit of a throwaway gamble to be honest. But I actually really like him because he's played quite well. Uh, so he's Ecuadorian. He's a midfielder. Uh, I think he's a really good midfielder too. Coach, yeah. A lot so of good, good work rates. That, don't know. Yeah, I mean he's in his prime 27 six two 300k like from ecuador he's got, he's got himself a goal already and he's a cracking little find there from my scouts the last two signings one of them was a free transfer uh ben wiles from rotherham so again we're, we're pinching players from the lower leagues of england but he is scottish he's a good midfielder very good squad, good squad player. player yeah definitely uh, we never need to change formation or whether he is there for us he's currently injured right now but Looks he has rumble played the ball as well. that's good yeah definitely uh so we got him on a free transfer he's played two games for us so far and considering he is a midfielder he did score eight last year in league one uh not bad at all but this one, this one is really like when you find uh, your, your lower league hidden gem. From Notts County, Macaulay Langstaff. I think he's really good. Like, attribute-wise, he's fantastic. I've seen him score quite a lot of goals on in uh, experiments and stuff. 525k for a player who... You know, two seasons ago, got 29 goals. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll definitely take it. 28 the season before that. He had three goals this start of this season, and I signed him from uh, from North County in League Two. So, he hasn't scored for us yet, but he did get himself an assist on his first, in his debut match. We'll see what McCauley can do. That is because, Dad, we had no. to replace Duck. I'll do it for the last time. Yeah. Then. I mean, as, a, as an honour to him. Yeah. Uh, we had bids coming in left, right and centre this summer transfer window. And £5 million. He'd already million scored pound. three goals for us in two games as well. Yeah, £5 million pound was enough for Duck to leave. <laughs> um, so, that's unfortunate. But we had good times. Uh, unfortunately, it's we say our goodbyes. But hopefully, now we can replace him with Bacoli Langstaff. And we should be absolutely fine. Uh, let's take a look then. Tactically, I'm only securing Langstaff into that position there. We are going with the exact same tactic. I don't think I really need to change anything. I think the only reason why we're not winning the league is because the calibre of player that, uh, yeah. that, that Celtic have that we don't. Uh, I think other than that, I think the tactic's working really well for us. So, how is it doing? Well, we are currently third, mm. but I think That's we are worst start. really hard done by in the Champions League because imagine coming up against Benfica yeah. in the qualifying round. That's harsh. Yeah. When we could have been playing, you know, against Wolfsburg or Austria, we've got Benfica of all teams. Uh, so, unfortunate, really. We're out. We won our two games in the Premiership, which was 2-0 uh, against Hibs. We're out of the League Cup as well. 3-1 against Dundee United. Yeah, we're out by... Uh, Arbroath after extra time then we lost to Rangers 2-0 we're back we beat Kilmarnock 2-1 uh, there with two goals from Miofsky so we're in the Europa League dad and this is quite a, a massive now uh, Europa League group but our fixtures we are playing my favourite German side which did you see somebody get really annoyed you mentioned that it's your favourite German side every single video <laughs> here it is again uh, <laughs> Frankfurt my favourite German side look at that Inter Milan that's my favourite Italian team would you believe it Valencia I used to support them when I was growing up Michelin, that's genuinely my favorite Danish <laughs> team. Uh, we can go through them all. So there we go. These We're are just the proper super, football supporters, aren't we, really? Yeah. You've got to like a team from different countries. It's boring looking at their results, well, isn't it? What I found really funny, I'm giving this guy way too much time. I thought it'd just be funny to mention, but you brought it all in capitals. Yeah. And I was like, somebody's had a bad day. <laughs> somebody's had a really bad day. They've been told to off at work, whatever. Yeah. He's come on, he's like, I'm going to sit on, I'm going to watch the Megalux video. And he's going, he's mentioned Frankfurt again! <laughs> 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 okay, so that's our results. That's our fixtures there. I like to think we can qualify from that. Yeah, definitely. I'd be disappointed if we don't. I think we could even get into the top eight. Yeah. All we need is one good result against a Valencia or an Inter Milan, and I think we should be all right in there. We're playing Valencia at home, so that gives you a little bit of hope as well, yeah. doesn't it? So, so right, okay. Before we go, though, before we go anyway, Aberdeen Stadium. Yes. 
Pitadry. I, I, yeah. I never know how to say it correctly. No, I, I couldn't work it out. It's um, well known for two firsts. They were the first team ever to have dugouts. Yeah. Someone on the Everton board came up to watch a game. Well impressed with it. Went back to Everton, told them to get dugouts put into the ground. For yeah. Them. But they were also the first ground to, for the, all the seats to be undercover. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so they're, they're And they had to with the Scottish weather. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. Gosh, yeah. Um, with the dugouts then, what did they do before that? Did all the subs I've, just have to stand there? I think, going back on the videos that I can remember watching, they used to have, you know, the, the old benches that you had at school, the oh, wooden yeah, benches? Yeah. I think they just had them there and you just sat on the bench or something like yeah, that, didn't you? Yeah. And that's where the old saying comes from, sat on the bench. Yeah, that's true. Imagine, yeah. You're probably correct for that one, yeah. Do you reckon it was because Sir Alex would never sit down? Right, we need to get him a dugout up there. <laughs> yeah. So it takes longer. Actually, reading about it, it was something to do with someone who was studying um, his, the players, one of the coaches was studying the players, and he wanted to watch their footwork. So right. he, had, he had the dugouts dug out. So that's what Richard Burke comes yeah, to the same so as well, being dug out. And so he was eye level for the feet so yeah. he could watch their footwork. Yeah. That's where that comes I, from. Uh, it's weird that these like little stories come in because I remember uh, Sir Alex made the the dugouts or where the, the substitutes sit in the stands yeah. because in the first half he used to sit up there so he could see the pitch better mm. because when you're sat obviously down because do you know what I always find it funny when pe when you're watching a game you think he is shit yeah. like that player is playing shit and then he doesn't get taken off yeah and you think well, what yeah. game are they watching and it's because I think the manager is so low down they can't see the yeah. mistakes like that yeah. so uh, yeah well, a lot I, of I things like, story I think like I players think running off the ball I mean, yeah. we've seen it many times I mean, you're sort of saying did you see so and so off the ball he's not even running and yeah. things like that and he's just ambling. and the worst thing I hate the most being a striker is watching players walking back strikers walking back and then the ball quickly comes through and they're caught offside yeah. and you think why didn't you just get back onside he used to give I, me a roll I was say I like used to roll you didn't I yeah. <laughs> Run back and then rest. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's right. So yeah, but I remember Real Ferdinand saying, if you ever seen Fergie in by the touchline in the first half, you knew you were playing terrible. Yeah. <laughs> because usually he'd sit up in the stands and watch the game from above. Talk about Ferguson in the dugout. That funniest thing I've seen. With well, the, the, the balloon. balloon. Yeah. <laughs> what about Mady on the other side of it? He's actually killing himself yeah. with laughter, isn't he? He's really I think it is. Uh, get over Mike Phelan. Right, okay, we'll simulate this third season and let's see how we do. Third season and it's second place again. 10 points. Do you know we've gone 12 points, 11 points, no 10 points. We're getting closer. <laughs> we just need 10 seasons in this rebuild <laughs> yeah. and we'll be all right. Okay, we so lost more games, but drew less this drew time. Drew less, so, yeah. Right. They are scoring so yeah. many goals. Uh, so they got 100 points in total with 101 goal difference. So it's going to be so difficult to catch them up. The, that's the only trouble when like you 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 open, you've got this league open as like one of the only leagues is that Celtic tend to just buy all the best players yeah. that yeah. the league would be able to obtain. So let's take a look then at the profile. Have we got any top scorers? Miofsky got 18 goals, but I mean, they signed Jao Pedro. He's, yeah. he's class. He's so good. Like, he's unbelievable. The standard of striker he is compared to what we can get. He needs to make his mind up what nationality he is. <laughs> uh, Italian, Brazilian, and Portuguese. But there we go. I mean, he's got the, the most amount of goals, the most highest average rate, and he's, he's, they got the two players that are the player of the match. It's going to be very difficult to try and uh, Two to try players and beat in them. the assist, look. Yeah, it's just going to be very difficult. And most clean sheets. It's like, probably yeah, because the guy the didn't have it. anything to do, did yeah, he? Over in the pitch, yeah, so there we go. Right, so I still, I'm still i still happy that we are best of the rest. We're staying there. Nine points above Rangers now. So Rangers haven't been close to us, though, have they? So well, they had two points game. last season. Oh, was it? Oh, we had a bad season. Yeah, yeah bad season, still finishing second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at other competitions then. How do we do? Oh, bloody Tottenham Hotspur. Round of 16. <laughs> Get that shirt off. Fourth round by Ross County is a bad one in the Scottish FA Cup. And the second round by our bro again, it's not that great. But Tottenham, they've been... We give them a good goal. Yeah. I mean, I'd be annoyed if I was a Tottenham fan. Like, imagine only beating Aberdeen on aggregate. 6-5. <laughs> uh, they beat us 4-3 in the second Wins leg win, as well. Mate. Wins a win. Yeah, you, can, you haven't got any say, of them at the minute. Say the Liverpool fans. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even getting any of them at the minute, Dad. Calm down. <laughs> right, so we beat Michelin in the, in the pl knockout playoff round. So we did go through the playoff, which meant we finished in 15th place. We didn't finish in the top eight. Finished in 15th with 12 points. 1-4, lost four. 
and I think it's the problem. When you look at it, I mean, expect. Tottenham finished top of the group, so played yeah. eight one eight. Yeah. So they lost against the best team in the in in the Europa League at the time, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. We lost in the group stage with Fenerbahce, Inter, Valencia, and Frankfurt. The games that you would probably I bet, expect. I bet to Spurs lose. didn't go on and win it though. We can find out. Let's let's see. No, Leicester. <laughs> they always bang out on uh, like a Europa League every yeah. now and then. They beat Inter Milan in the final. That's fair play. Squad wise, twenty two goals from Miofsky, Macaulay Langstaff. I'm not happy with that. 15. That's not a lot at all. Four players at double figures. Not very yeah. good at all. Yeah, uh, and he's also unhappy because we're playing him in a weak role. We're playing you. You should just be happy. Yeah. You were playing Come in League 2 for Notts County before this, and now he's got an abysmal morale, very unhappy uh, overall happiness because he's playing in the wrong role. Get out. Right, okay. We'll have to address that in uh, pre-season, I think, with only £6 million. We were spoilt with the 12, weren't we? They gave us a... Yeah. That's what we would have got season six. Yeah. Because everybody knows <laughs> in these rebuilds, season six, you always get the best, biggest transfer budget. And that's for the Patreon members. If you want to sign up to the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash gaming, you get to have, obviously, the... Uh, what do you get to have, Dad? You get the save game file yeah. at the end of the, <laughs> of the rebuild, starting from season six, where usually... You get the best budget start sending us some comments of how you're getting on as well if you do take over from us because it's, we're finding it interesting if anybody does just to see how they're getting on in we really? yeah absolutely we've had a couple saying that we're doing really well yeah well dad's always in the comments so if you do, do take on the patreon save let us know what you do in the comments dad always writes and, and looks back in the comments so you can let us know how you're doing in there but on the five pound tier i always put it up when this video drops live right okay what can we do with six billion let's find out right so this summer window we did sell quite a lot of players uh not too much money Lance shankland's actually left us already and blair mckenzie going for a little bit as well we also made a little bit of money out there not too am much. i seeing right here have what you just you signed your favorite liverpool player yeah <laughs> We'll leave it, in case you didn't see it, we'll leave it as a surprise. Right, I signed three players from from Celtic, all on free transfers. So we've got a centre-back here, a really good one as well, to be fair. He's got four Scottish caps. I don't yeah. know why they're letting him go, uh, but we'll take him. It is Stephen Welsh, but he's actually Scottish. I love it when names like that. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Uh, free transfer, starting for us, very good average rating. Cannot complain at all. No. Well, don't want to see it. Anthony Ralston. Another free transfer that we've picked up. Plays on the right-hand side. is going to give Ross McCrory a bit of a run for his money because I think this guy's probably better. Uh, he has better mental attributes as well. Free transfer again. Very good average rating. Uh, skip over it again. We don't want to see it. We signed one of their Japanese players. He has fuzzy hair. I like him. He is a centre defensive midfielder with good work rates and teamworks and stamina and everything like that. Just what we need. 17 yeah. cats for Japan. 450k. He's got assist already and a player of the match. He didn't play that many games the last couple of years, but I think it's worth it bringing him in and seeing what he can do for us. Just building our squad, which is good. Yeah, three players there from Celtic. But yes, you are correct. I signed on a free transfer, Jordan never, Bloody Henderson. Never would I have thought you would sign this player. Jordan Henderson. Good skipper. Yeah, you can't oh, knock, absolutely. You can't yeah. knock it for that. He's a good skipper. So at the end of his career, 35 years of age, he's doing what the likes of Gaza did and Roy Keane. <laughs> he's come to Scotland uh, and we've signed him for at age 35 75 caps there for England on a free transfer and he's not even been playing very well <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know whether Patreon members will still have the ability to play with Jordan Henderson. He might have already gone by then. We also signed Freddie Woodman, who is a better goalkeeper than the keeper that we signed from Chelsea. So I think that's a good acquisition there. Yeah. Better concentration and positioning, just what we need really coming in as our number one. And then finally, we signed Adam Armstrong. So we signed a few English players here, but... He's not a bad striker, is he's he? A, he's, he's just fast. Like, yeah. Look at that acceleration and pace. It's just lightning quick. Yeah. Good stamina. Likes to beat the offside trap, even though he only has 11 off the ball. So yeah. he's going to be offside loads because he's quick. <laughs> he likes to beat the offside trap, but his anticipation and his off the ball are shite. So he's like, Adam, you're offside again, mate. Oh. So yeah, we've, we've got him and brought him in, but he is considered now our best player. So he replaces Duck, basically, from a couple of seasons ago as, as that fast, pacey striker that we've been missing. And he's got five goals and a player match already with average eight, rate. Average yeah. rate in. Yeah, can't Good. complain. I like how he scored more goals this season already than yeah. he did in his last, what, five since he was at Southampton? Yeah. Four seasons? Unbelievable. Right, so we'll, we'll see what he can do for us right now. Tactically, again, don't need to change it, no. I don't think. Um, Mioski, I won't play in every game on the right, which means Adam Armstrong will most likely be playing every single game on the left. 
but we do have a couple of other options there. If I went pick without restriction with the best 11, uh, the reason why I want Mioski is in there is because this guy actually replaces him and I don't think he is that good. So I'd rather have Mioski, who I know is a proven goal scorer up front with Adam Armstrong as well. McGinnis, we've got Jordan Henderson, Levitt with Idiguchi in that midfield. I think that's a good midfield three there. We have almost got a full former Celtic back, th back yeah. four there. We've only got Valci who is uh, who's spoiling the party in that regard, but we've also got Jovanovic on the bench. So I think now we've got really good squad depth and that's exactly what I've been hoping for. So yeah, good start. Let's take a look then at the uh, schedule. We have played quite a lot of games. We've only lost one. That was to Marseille and unfortunately... Oh, that cost us our yeah. Champions League at home, but. qualification because we beat them 2-0 in the home leg. We overcame Fenerbahce, which was good because they it's beat us in home. the Europa League yeah. last year. But we've beaten Hibs, we've beaten Dundee United 5-0. We drew the Rangers, we won against Kilmarnock. Uh, and our Europa League fixtures, obviously, again, we're in this huge Europa League uh, table. Let's take a look at the fixtures itself. We have Palace, Wolves. So we ain't got to go too far in the no. away game. Um, we've got Roma. Kuwait, Copenhagen, Anderlecht, and FCSB of Romania, and our final game is Porto. That's more no, hard. That's harder than the last one. No. Yeah. No. Just talking about the European games, number first for Aberdeen. We were the first team to be knocked out on penalties. Oh, okay. In 1971, I think we drew four each against a team called Hamved. Yeah. Um, and they went to penalties, and we lost on penalties. One of the early rounds, but yeah, we were the first team. It was the first year they ever done it. Yeah. And we were the first team to be knocked that, out. Before that, it penalties. was replays. Yeah. And just play until some yeah. bloody win. I guess. So yeah, so number first for Aberdeen, but unfortunately a bad first. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully we overcome penalties in this one. If we get to the knockouts, which yeah. I think is very unlikely, that's, that's a very difficult group. But we'll see. Well, let's find out. And once again, we finish in second. Further away this time. Further away. Oh, yeah. I still just take just finishing in second. Yeah. Because Celtic, I mean, I want to quickly see what they're them. spending. Can't no. Touch them because they're like, me. they're releasing players left, right, and centre. They spent 43 million, Dad. How, yeah. how can we cope with that? Yeah. They are literally signing players for 20 million pounds here. They're signing like wonder kids. Yeah. So it's going to be very difficult to, to actually beat that. I mean, the season before, another 20 million pounds that they're not. So, like, uh, you know, 65 million pounds. They did sell 50 million. I get that because they sold. Labada the thing is, you're, you're just trying to buy the bits and players of their players, and you yeah, who they don't want. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, just so hope you can just yeah. get something out of it. But I'll take still finishing above Rangers, though. That's definitely a good thing. Uh, Mioski there with 21 goals, not bad. We've got a couple of players in the assist tally, especially at Gucci, considering he's playing CDM. And Ben Wiles, who wasn't in that best 11, is up there with nine assists. Yeah, so not bad at all. And Freddie just looking on the past winners most over there. Most clean sheets. That's what I'm most pleased with. We were the last team outside of Rangers and Celtic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was obviously when Sir Alex left yeah. the club as well. Again. 85 yeah. was the last season. Um, and then the last time, actually, was uh, where they keep finishing the third place in second side. was before Rangers came back up. When Rangers come back up, yeah. like, they were just rebuilding their side. They finished in third. Yep. We were the best team after. Another interesting fact as well. Have a look at their 1999-2000 season. You know, at the beginning, of the, I actually said that we've never been relegated from the top of the league. Yeah. We actually finished last in that season right 99-2000 and it goes to like a playoff of the team coming up and the team going down there as a playoff don't they yeah, yeah. Scotia. but Falkirk um, their ground was not up to standard of the SPL so they weren't even allowed to play in the playoffs so oh, Aberdeen no. stayed in the league <laughs> that's hard so the only man. real bad season that Aberdeen really had where they finished last and could have got relegated Falkirk did. couldn't come up God, you'd be buying lottery tickets that year, yeah. wouldn't you? God, that's unbelievable. Right, okay, other competitions then. How have we done? We have our first trophy, and Get it in. is the League Cup. It's not the best one, but we'll still take it. And we beat Celtic in the final. Oh, that's brilliant. Very that's good hell indeed. Of a result then. Uh, and I think, obviously, the last time we won this was a long time ago, in 2014. So yeah. we've been runners up a few times, but we have managed to do it. We beat Celtic in the final, who you want to beat in the final. Now, in the Europa League, we got to the knockout playoff and unfortunately lost to Copenhagen but I'll take that I guess because we still finish in 16th place 1-4 we actually had a better record than we did yeah. last season Yeah, uh, we won 4 those are the teams we beat we drew against Palace and we lost against Porto Roma and Wolves Roma gave us a bit of a tonk in 6-0 yeah. at home but hey they probably uh, yeah they qualified through I mean I'll take it I'll definitely take it 4th round of the Scottish Cup that's the bad result 
But other than that, a good we've season. We've won something. Very good season. Won something. Yeah. Uh, our squad is looking very depleted, Dad. That's the trouble that we've oh, got now. Boy, We're yeah. not having a lot of players. 29 goals for Adam Armstrong. Um, Mioski has gone. Mioski has gone. Where has he gone? I haven't actually seen where did he go. Did he? Is he just retired? I think he's retired, to yeah. be fair, because he's, he's completely just left. Uh, so I'd imagine he's probably retired because his contract hasn't run out. But never mind. We're going to have to replace him for next season then because he was a big goals person in our side. Yeah, bad news, isn't it? Money-wise, we have only £3 million to bring somebody in next summer. They don't like being in the Europa League, do they? No, not at all. But that's quite a lot of money for Aberdeen. Yeah. Usually they would sell a best player and, yeah. and work around it. But I, I find that when you only have one league open, like just the Scottish League, you don't have hardly any offers from no. your players because like the computer AI in the leagues which aren't loaded just not really looking to buy them very strange i don't know whether it's something that foot manager need to address but i mean i simulate throughout the, the the season but during the summer windows i tend to just keep pressing while i'm watching telly or something yeah. and then i sometimes skip a week holiday if i'm not wanting to do anything this is basically how i do it a lot of people ask actually yeah so i think it's quite quite good to tell and i i normally skip a week because then if an offer does come in it still comes up you don't miss out and I was skipping weeks with no offers, no offers, no offers. And I was thinking, some of these players were getting 30 goals a season. Yeah. And I'm not getting any offers for them. No. And I think it might be because the leagues I've loaded is just the Scottish League. Yeah. I don't know. I think it might be something that uh, I might address to SI, being like maybe the AI needs to be a bit more smarter. Fifth season, only three million. Who do we bring in? Let's find out. Right, I bought in four players this summer window. A couple of players from the Premier League as well. James McAtee from Manchester City. Going to be a good squad player for us in rotation and alongside that cut, the, the McGuinness uh, player in that centre attack in midfield role. He's going to give him a run for his money. Yeah. Very good player indeed at age 23. Uh, we have also signed Nathan Ferguson from the Premier League. Crystal Palace plays right back, plays centre back. That's the reason why I brought him in for options. He's seen how much our squad was depleted this guy gives us those options yeah. and he's worth quite a lot of money as well considering we got him as a free transfer i'll definitely take that uh, he played 17 games in the premier league last year javi galan is an unbelievable sign and now normally i wouldn't have signed him because obviously we already had greg taylor but he becomes like our best player 31 he's spanish as a left back he's unbelievable at like crossing the ball you'd see this standard in the premier league but for some reason he was a free transfer yeah, and we managed him, to get him to uh, assist already. To assist in a 7.9 average rating game. Aaron Connolly from SK Rapid. He's Irish. He is a striker. He has pace. He is the replacement that we think uh, that I think we need from Miofsky yeah. coming in. So I think Looks that's good, quite actually. a good signing. Yeah, he hasn't scored any goals for us yet, which did worry me a little yeah. bit. Because he did get six in 14 yeah. last summer, or last season, sorry. So I think that's quite good. But I remember when he played for Hull, I think. Yeah, he scored quite a few goals in the championship. I remember seeing his name quite often for, for them. But then he, he, he uh, went back to, to Brighton and never really did anything. Or it's this season that he's there. That's why I've recognised his name, yeah. Aaron Connolly. <laughs> hey, when I signed him, I was like, oh, I know the name. That's how, and tactically, again, we don't need to, I don't I don't want to. I don't we're think we need to. We're coming runners up every season, don't yeah, we? So yeah. why would you change it? Yeah, so I'll do best 11, but we don't really need to change it. Now, one of the, the shock things is in the best 11 is a player from the Youth Academy has come through, and I'm happy to allow him to play, to be honest, because he does look quite good. He has that pace. He has the aggression. He has good head and ability. Yeah, 20 years of age, Alfie Bavage. Yeah. Whether he's good in real life, Aberdeen fans, let us know. Is he good for the youth side? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm always happy to, to find out these things. But our squad isn't as big as what I'd like it to be, but it's as good as what we can get with the money that we were given. So we'll see anyway. Schedule-wise... How have we done so far? Well, unfortunately, once again, we face Benfica, Benfica again, in the Champions yeah. League. That's harsh, isn't it? Yeah. Who else on, was in those? Chance. We had Nisal Galatasaray with the other two options. I'd have fancied myself against one of those two. Yeah. Okay, never mind. We overcame Olympiacos. We overcame Norgeland as well. Uh, so two good results there. We drew against St. Mirren. We drew against... Oh, sorry. We beat Kilmarnock 1-0. Uh, we then beat them in the cup as well, 3-0. And then we beat Motherwell 4-0 so far so we haven't had a, good, a big test in the league a good start though i think yeah we're third in the league so far let's yeah. take a look at our fixtures in the europa uh we have real batiste we got troys Almeria, aston villa uh, we've got a team there from Israel, I think. I think that's Israel, got a good the chance. Israeli team. I think so as yeah, well. Yeah, we should qualify for uh, this. So, Luzerne, Shakhtar and Fenerbahce. I'd like to think we'd go through. Yeah. So, our final season. Will we win the league? No. 
A lot of optimism today on the Omega Loop Gaming Channel. Let's I'll be disappointed if we don't come second, but we won't win the league. Yeah, all right, okay. Let's simulate this next season. Final season, and we finish in second place. Oh, joint top. On the oh, same no. points as Celtic. They've Gold Dipper's is always going to do us, isn't it? Oh, superior goal Man, difference. They, they nearly chucked it they away, did didn't they? They did nearly chuck it away. They nearly chucked it away. Both finished on 93 points. We actually beat them as well at one point, but then they hammered oh. St. Mirren on the final day. That's why we needed them to slip up most. 93 Those two points. games they'd lost, then. Who did they lose against those two games? You... Us. It was us, Rangers. Was it? So all they would needed to do was a draw in another game, and then yeah. they were thrown the league away. Oh, so disappointing. Rangers actually finished in fourth, so they've had really bad times because yeah. Hearts have even overtaken them now. Yeah, so close yet so far so i know exactly what dad's task is going to be for you patreon members adam armstrong got 19 aaron Connolly got 18 so we know we got two very good strikers there yeah. who score goals at this level adam armstrong had the highest average rating Carl mcginnis had the most assists and aaron Connolly had the second highest player of the match they're signing players like alan belasco like that's players that i signed i mean he is unbelievable <laughs> Like, what are we supposed to yeah. do there? Like, it's, it's it's very harsh. He's on loan for Man City there. So, yeah, disappointing, but that makes it six in a row for Celtic, unfortunately. Maybe we've won the FA Cup. Oh, runners up. We did win the League, League Cup, Cup again. We won the League Cup. And we also got to the quarterfinal of the Europa League. Man, we expected that, didn't we? Really? Yeah, we lost to Hoffenheim, unfortunately, on penalties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a so close season. We got as far as Tottenham did. <laughs> <laughs> Atalanta went on and beat Hoffenheim in the final as well, so that's mental. Uh, we first knocked out Leicester, who won this a couple yeah. of seasons yeah. ago. That was a good for us. And we won the second leg 4-0. So we were down 3-1. In the first leg, uh, round of 16, then we knocked out Galatasaray. So we're knocking out some big Spurs clubs. Spurs beat here. Celtic. They did, yeah. We went further than Celtic yeah. in this competition. And they Aberdeen. finished top. So did, did they? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah, they did. They didn't even lose a game. Yeah. Unbelievable. With some Premier League teams in there, Juventus. Unbelievable stuff. Right, so Aberdeen, we won four games. We beat Shakhtar, Hapoel, Aston Villa, and Troy. So that's quite boring. Troy, I think it's how you say it. Luzerne. French people are going, no, you don't. <laughs> uh, the two games we drew, Luzerne and Real Batiste. And then the two games we lost is Fenerbahce and Almeria. Somebody was also having a go at me in the comments. It's a bit of a rant, this, this episode, <laughs> isn't it? About how uh, I'm disrespecting like clubs when I don't try to pronounce their names right. But I mean, when you, I do try, you, you still have a go at me. So anyway, that's that's how we've managed to do this season. Let's take a look at who we beat in the final of the League Cup. Celtic again? Was it? Yes. yes. Extra time. Nice. So that's a good result for I'll us. I'll take that. Stopping them from winning it all the time. Definitely. Uh, did they beat us in the Scottish Cup, though? They did. <laughs> <Yes>. <gasps> So we got twice knocked out penalties. twice on penalties. Yeah, we uh, we were this close to an unbelievable season. Yeah. We were this close to a treble. Yeah, because we beat them Joint on penalties, top. and then they they slip up somehow. Yeah, and we win we win the treble. So annoying. Oh dear. Right, squad wise. Adam Armstrong got 29. Aaron Connolly got 27. Look Alfie that, Bavage look. got 24. Three, Three players strikers the 20, yeah. there. Scoring so many goals. James McAtee got 15 goals as well. And the assist tally's not bad either. Javi Galan got 15. Carl McGuinness got 13. Ralston got 12 at right back. Very good season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you Patreon members, if you do wish to take this on, you've only got 1.5 million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> we stole it for you in the second yeah, we season. We just built that's a good squad, was. though, haven't we? Yeah, that's it. You don't weakest, necessarily weakest need it. points for scoring goals, and we've just given you three good strikers now. Yeah, because to be honest, it's only Jordan Henderson who's like ready to retire. Yeah. I think he's 36 now. He's still not looking to retire. Javi Galan's still got a couple of years in him, especially at this level. Right, Dad, uh, for the Patreon members, should they wish to take it on, what is it? I think I know what it's going to be. Win the league. Yeah, win the league. Yeah. We were this close to doing it. If you can do it, then good got luck got five to seasons you. to win the league. I'll take anything after that. Yeah. You, know, you do well, but just try and win that league. Let's, get, let's get back in there and, and become the, uh, the first team since Aberdeen themselves yeah. to do it outside of Rangers and Celtic. And of course, people who go to the games or if you've been to the pittadry before, don't What's have a got like? me for the way I was pronounced it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the food like? Yeah, come on. What's There's the food no like the at these like. grounds? We, we want to know in the comments section. Even if you don't go to that, that ground, let us know in the comments the team you go to watch yeah. and what that food is like. Yeah. Is it good? Is it 
it trash maybe you've been to an away day and you were like oh I remember the cheeseburger at Aston Villa it was unbelievable <laughs> I want to know I'm curious I like my food as does dad and we want to know these things should we ever go on an away day but there we go thank you very much for watching keep leaving your suggestions down in the comments section uh, because we do take them obviously we've done quite a few now recently from the ones that you've been suggesting suggestion suggesting and then of course if you want to check out the Patreon and take over the save you can do patreon.com forward slash mega loot gaming on the five pound tier really do appreciate it. every every support that you have for the sponsors and everything we really do appreciate and we'll see Hit you the on well Monday the yeah. so so go for come on thumbs up we're a little bit like behind that. at the moment we are yeah we need to catch up really so that would be good uh, we'll see you Monday for another one bye bye Today we are starting a new rebuild in a brand new country, a country we've never done before, nope. Denmark. Yeah, we, well, we've got a few requests to do them, so uh, there you go. If you put the request in, we will do these things for you. Exactly. We've got a few requests for Copenhagen, a few requests for Bromby. I chose Bromby because they need a little bit more of a rebuild than Copenhagen, who have just won the league. Yeah. Bromby, they won it a couple of years ago for the first time in a while. 2021, we can see there the last time they won it was 2005, uh, and then Copenhagen, they've been pretty dominant in this competition really since the uh, uh since the the turn of the century they've won the most we can see there is splattered around quite a few different clubs but copenhagen have won it the most out of everybody there yeah. so in five years what can we do with bromby now as i mentioned they did win the league they did unfortunately lose quite a lot of their players the last couple of seasons from that league winning side as you'd expect them to, say, to happen looking at the rest here quite a few times when they win the league they sell all their best players yeah and that's what happens. They, they, they have to rebuild and rebuild again. So. Exactly. And actually, a a fan of Bromby who does quite a lot of simulations for me, Thomas First, he actually told me uh, that they have just had a, a takeover yeah. from an American ownership. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And the fans, not happy about it one bit. No, I mean, it, I was reading over that as well, and I can see why the fans don't like it. But Peter Smyko, I mean, famous goalkeeper for them as well, yeah. as well as Denmark national team. He tried to buy them as well, uh, going back a few years ago when they were in a bit of money trouble. And they protested against that as well because he had a... Um, um, like an investor. An investor with him who was an ex Copenhagen director yeah. or something like that. And they, they just didn't want the link there. No, that is a huge no-no. It's a shame really for Peter Smoker to come out and try and help his team. <laughs> yeah. What, I, you know, what he would class as his, his, his home team type of thing. And they, the fans went against him. So yeah, shame, but really. the derby is, the new firm derby we can see it is Copenhagen. It yeah. is their local derby. They are from the same area. Bromby in Denmark, they are from the same area you know, as they Copenhagen. They were formed in 1964 and they were formed from two local teams on the understanding from the mayor that he would build them a stadium if they formed together. Okay. So they did. So they and they did. A stadium, yeah. 1965 I mean, it was built. stadium's had a lot of work done on it since because it used to have a racing track. Well, oh, a really? Running, a running track around Yeah. Here. But each I think you can kind of see that, yeah. really, can you? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, let's see what we can do then. Now, we don't. We haven't been given a lot of money because obviously uh, Denmark as a nation does not tend to spend quite a lot of cash. But we have sold a lot from the season gone and they brought in a fair amount. I've actually only brought in one player here, two players in total. One was a 2.1 million pound. That was basically all of our transfer budget. And then I brought in so one player. For them, that's a big player, isn't it? That's, yeah, yeah. That's a top player, that is. Absolutely. And it's from Randers, a club in the in the same league as us. Uh, Berg Johnson, who is a Norwegian centre midfielder or a centre defensive midfielder, only 23 years of age. Looks rather good, too, for this standard. A lot of uh, really good mental attributes there, all above 10 or 12. So we've got to, we've got to think about... Uh, we're not going to the the highest points of Europe now. This is a good player. Yeah. If you oh, were, yeah, you know, if we were in a different league, we'd be yeah. like, why have you signed him? Like, yeah. This is a good player. As you can see, a three and a half star uh, current ability is what our coaches rate him as an overall report. And we've also brought in a free transfer and it is a centre back. The reason for it is the formation, which we'll go over in a sec. This guy's from the Gambia, uh, Sana, quite pacey. Physically, yeah, he's good. Technically, he's decent as well. Again, for this standard of league, I think he's really good. And he's quite low wages as well, considering for a free transfer, happy to bring him in. So I mentioned the tactic. This is what we're going for. It's a three at the back. They were suited to a three at the back to begin with. Yeah. I believe when I took over the job, it shows you a formation which would suit the club. This is what they show me. So we got a 5-2-3 here. Uh, five 
including the wing backs. Of course, it does look like it's more of a 3 4 3, but with defensive mids. Uh, so we've got a Roman playmaker, ball winner in there, two wing backs, a wide centre back, a centre defensive on stopper, ball player. I don't really build tactics, but. I just threw it all we, together. And we know see with their history as well. They prefer the four four two. Really? Yeah, they've had a lot more success playing the four four two. Yeah. It? And a couple of times they picked up on the a new managers come in and tried a new formation. It hasn't worked. and he gets sacked, and they someone comes back and does a four four two, and they win again. So I wish I knew that because I would have tried and done it with a four four two only. Instead, I'm stuck with a formation I've never used before in my life. But we do have a three at the top here. So if I went and shown you our quick pick without restrictions, our best 11, there is a couple of players that I'm actually familiar with. Right. I'll start off with Daniel Vaz at the back here. He's played quite a lot in the Spanish leagues. He's played for Valencia, Celta Vigo there, Atletico Madrid, but he's come back to Bromby recently. Oh, he started off there, yeah. Yeah, 1.5 billion pound after only making one appearance for Atletico Madrid. <laughs> Daniel Vaz, the number 10, he can play centre back, uh, centre midfield, he can play right wing back there, so that's what he's doing. I also really uh, like the striker. Oh, hi. And I don't know how to say that last name. I do apologize. But he's 28, 6 foot 2. He's a bit of a target forward, but he does have a bit of pace. He likes to beat the offside trap. Very well rounded. Yeah. So we we, we looked really as him as our main threat up front. Only £1 million. Pound we, we bought him from Serbia. Seven appearances so far, one goal. So we're hoping for a little bit more yeah, than that. He scores a few goals, I think so. He does indeed. So not, bad. not a bad team. Not a bad team at all. There are some really good players in here for the league standard. And if we were to go to the league, we can see it might ruin how many games we've won and, and everything so far. But if we went to season preview, we can see fourth place is where we'd be expected to finish. Norgeland, the team above, is the team I always go on about for buying players from. Yeah. Their, their, their youth academy is fantastic because they have the Right to Dream Academy in Ghana, I believe it is. But that's obviously a team we need to overcome, as well as Mijeland, who have that link with Brentford. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Copenhagen, who tend to be the best team in the league, as well as a few others who tend to, every now and then, just be really good on Football Manager and, and give you a tricky time if you do manage in Denmark. So let's take a look at the schedule then. We have played quite a lot of games and we have played quite a lot in Europe as well, but we've been eliminated from the Conference League playoffs on penalties. Yeah, it's a pity, isn't it? We've already played B36. We beat them 3-0 and 2-0 quite comfortably, but then Apoel... One or draw in the away leg, two or at home, losing on penalties. It's just unfortunate, and, and unfortunately for a, a first season, no that European was, that football. That was going to be our challenge for me and you to win a, a European trophy. Oh, bloody hell, Dad. <laughs> Only got five seasons. <laughs> right, okay, let's take a look at the league form, though, because AGF was our first game, and it was a one or draw. Then Norgeland, which is a team, obviously, we've mentioned are going to be tricky to overcome. Nil-nil draw. A one-nil win, finally, seven minutes. Then we played the big boys, Copenhagen. In the derby, 84th minute equaliser. Well, yeah. yeah, we got a good win there though, a 3-1 victory there. All B, I believe is how you say it. Two all against them. And then Mijland, 3-2. Good win. Yeah. 86th minute after we were 2-0 down yeah. at home. We pulled Great it back. Comeback. Yeah, against the second best team in the it's league. Good for our confidence, that is. Yeah. Good start. Absolutely. So let's simulate this first season and see how we get on. All right, first season, second place finish. Take that. Yeah, absolutely. And you're thinking, how many clubs got relegated? No, it's a championship league. <laughs> so basically, there is uh, so a preliminary phase. In that phase, we finish in fourth place. And the top six teams then go through and you play each other. Yeah. Another like, two times like each. Scottish Premier League, I know. A bit like that as well. I think yeah. Belgium has the same similar format as well. Uh, I don't know whether I like it or not. Because it's, it's too many the... derbies then. Yeah, but you've got to think of as well. It's, it's not it's... a lot of clubs. Yeah, not a lot of clubs there, so... The top teams, it keeps that interesting because they're playing great. If you're playing, they've done the whole season again and you're playing all the bottom sides again. It's easy results, and yeah. it's easy points. So at least it makes the second part of the season a bit more difficult. Then. Yeah, definitely, because it does throw up some interesting stuff. And obviously yeah. we've climbed there into second place. So we've benefited from this, definitely. even though we had a bad end to it. I mean, Copenhagen ran away with the league, 73 points were nowhere near yeah, them. We catch them we? No, but we finished uh, a point above Norgeland, so which means we obviously get a higher ranking when we qualify for the only the Europa Conference League. So not even in Europa League there, oh. finishing second place. That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. But there is obviously one team there that's missing, and that's Mijland. Yeah. 
which is surprising. So they're in the relegation stage. They they topped it, no surprises. But uh, we got a couple of clubs going going down there. So there we go. And then the European playoff. Mijland is playing in that, so I believe that could be for Europa League. It's determined. I don't know how it's determined, to be honest. I think we'd have got for Europa League, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, it, it makes no sense. Maybe somebody else can explain to me who, who who's played this league before. But anyway, second place finish is how we've got on. Other competitions, there is a Danish Cup. We were knocked out in the quarterfinals, unfortunately, by Norgeland. I still think that's a good good season, though. Well, yeah, to come second in your league. Yeah, only gives, losing six us, games. It gives us European competition next season. Exactly. Goals, then. Ohai scored 26 goals this season. He was our main man. 11, and, 11 goals and assists from Valleys and Hedlund, who is a very good Swedish midfielder. Uh, 10 goals, 14 assists. That's what we're looking like there. We've got a few wanted things here. The trouble is in these leagues, Dad. I'm going to make you all aware of it now, just in case you fancy a game in the Danish league. Every time you go to sign a player, they always want a minimum fee release clause. Yeah. You will struggle <laughs> to get that minimum fee release clause above 5 million, yeah. which means always, you are always going to lose your best players yeah, yeah, yeah. for a ridiculously cheap cost. We might see that happen uh, in today's rebuild. Transfers then, we haven't been given our money yet, so we'll have to go forward to the next season and see what they give us. So Without selling anybody, I signed one player for money. That was £2.3 million for this man, Sebastian Jorgensen. Uh, a very good Danish, 23 years of age, winger, uh, who was one of the best in the league, I would say. It's difficult to also find Danish players who are good enough to make the step up to the club that we are at, yeah. who haven't been snapped up by Copenhagen or snapped up by a European league. That's the tricky thing that I am also finding here. This was one of the only occasions where I managed to find somebody. So 2.3 million pound, I think, was actually all of our budget and we've had we have signed other players but they were free transfers these are these two here so we've got telmo arcangio who is a portuguese midfielder who can play center midfield dm he can play on the left if we really need him to but overall i think he's a really good ball player yeah, definitely. Uh, especially for this league only 22 years of age as well so that's, that's not true. bad at all no and he has that minimum fee release clause of lower than five million pounds so yeah that's the only thing that we've we've always got to keep our minds up uh, that we could have a player just pinch for us during the season yeah because of course we're simulating this season so our holiday until the end of the season we might lose a player in january yeah. and we can't do anything about it until the end of the season basir omar Agic, from Zurich. He runs out of contract. He's one of the wonder kids on the game that everybody knows about. Swiss centre-back. He's made a couple of caps as well for Switzerland already. He's not amazing, but he's definitely really good for this league. And he's only 21 with a good potential. He can grow. And he has a £4.2 million release clause in his contract. But for now, he is our player. And we'll see what we can do with him. Tactically then, have we changed anything? Not really. We haven't really changed anything. Maybe an instruction or two. But other than that... Things are staying as they are because I think we've had a good season and all we've done is improve the team. Yeah, that's to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, so Arcanjo, I want playing every single game in that Roman playmaker role. I think he's perfect for it as a guy who is good on the ball, with just exactly what it says on the tin: roam around the pitch, pick up the ball, find a pass. That's what we need to. To, to happen from him. Let's take a look at the schedule then because we have qualified for the UEFA, the UEFA Europa Conference League. It's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> <sighs> anyway, we've, doing bad in we've it, done it. No. Yeah. We've qualified for that. We've faced FC Inter in the first let set of qualifying stages the fact that you have to go through free and it's like yeah. the worst competition and we finished only second in the league I'm, I'm quite surprised by it to be fair uh standard liege was next of belgium that can always be quite a tricky task they're quite good they've they've uh, had some fame in the past and yeah. been quite a big club and then kill monarch two nil against them in the first leg nil nil in the second leg uh, and the Conference League, we are still in the group stage point. We've got HJK of Finland. We've got Maccabi Tel Aviv and Aktobi from Look, Kazakhstan. We'll go through, I'll be disappointed if we don't go through. I agree. I think we should, uh, as it should be there, yeah. really, I think yeah. Maccabi Tel Aviv and Bromby should go through. HJK are the best team in Finland, but I think we're better than them. Yeah. Maccabi Tel Aviv do have some really good players on the game and they probably have a little bit more money than us. So they might uh, be another club that will go through. And the, the club from Kazakhstan, I've never even heard of before. So <laughs> I'd be very disappointed point if we lost against them but we are through if we get rid of the uefa conference league we can just focus on the league fixtures there we faced copenhagen first game of the season unfortunately and we lost 3-0 they caught us out there so yeah. we then managed to pick up our first win the game after but then we lost again tricky but Michelin, they obviously don't like us they took a 1-0 lead against us and then we went and won 3-1 never 
They should never take the lead against us. No. Because that's twice now at the start of the season we've come back and we've beat them. Then Viborg, a 0-0 draw, and AC Horsens, a 2-1 win. So it's not bad, but it's it's not a great start to the season. We're still in that top half after six games, but it's a long old season here before we get to that playoff or the split between the two leagues. So, we ready? Cool. I'm just going to say to you, you you're on a bit of this, John. I'm saying, who would you say was their most famous player? Schmeichel would be too obvious because you've already mentioned him. Yeah. So I'm guessing. Or, shall I put it, famous family? Louder up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were formed in 1964. But in 1973, Finn Loudrup yeah. took over as a player manager. Which is their dad. Which is their dad. And he brought along Brian and Michael. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, and I think he stayed for a couple of seasons. They they had a little bit of a success with him and then he left he returned again as um, their first this is Finn this is the, the yeah. player he returned again as their first paid player in 1981 oh really and that season they won the league ah so the following season in 1982 Michael returned and the first game that he played in they won 7-1 and he scored two goals he went on to big things yeah he went on to big things as well and I think yeah Michael came back and he actually took over as manager yes yeah, come back in later years again. It's, I think it might have been the 2000s or something like that. Yeah. One thing that Bromley are well known for, Finn was obviously their first player that they paid. Yeah. But um, they were also, Bromley were also the first team to have a whole team of professional players. Oh, right, okay. Instead so of some yeah. not paid, which yeah. is quite weird, really, when you consider that they that would, was, I think it was did have that. 1982? Yeah. I think it was that, that year. Like, imagine playing for a team and one of the players is being paid and you're not. Yeah. Oh, that was a bit dodgy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. So, yeah, so the, I would say the Loudrup family are the most famous family to come through there, but yeah. as in players, I mean, there's quite a few players. One of the other players that came back was um, Jensen as well, and he, he was the player that came back. He was a player player and he came back with Michael Loudra when uh, Michael Loudra took over as manager as his assistant. Oh okay. So, so they had two legends in the dugout. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So um if it, that, just a good thing about it, like, like we were saying to you earlier with Michael Smigel coming back to help the team out and try and buy them. Yeah. It seems like they've got a very good sort of friendly atmosphere at the team because players that leave them always want to come back and come back again. Yeah. So it's good really but you know, yeah. So yeah that's the the players that I sort of know really well that sort of come out of that team. Bromby was always the, the most um, famous club that I knew from Denmark when I was growing up because I remember them playing against United quite often in the Champions League. That's right. Yeah. I remember him being put in the group stage in yeah, the Champions yeah. League and Schmeichel facing his old club and yeah. stuff like that and the story behind it. That's how I remember Bromby. I never knew about Copenhagen until later on. Yeah. So that's they were, for me, the biggest club in Denmark. I, I must admit, when, I, when they say about Denmark, Bromby is always the first team that comes to my head. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's see me at the second season and see if they become the biggest club in Denmark this season. Second season then, and it's second place for us once right. again. By a point, by a point yet again. again. And some way off Copenhagen, we yet again. We ain't catching them, are we? Not at the minute, no. No chance. They are absolutely flying. Midland have joined us in the in the, uh, the, the the preliminary stage of the, well, the Champions Group, sorry. So let's take a look at that. So they only lost one game as well. Yeah, so in the preliminary stage, we were still second. Yeah. Uh, so we kept our second place. But Mijlan caught us right up. Because if you look there, 57-58, that's how close it was at the end. But in the preliminary phase, we were seven points clear of AGF and nine points clear of Mijlan. Yeah. And they pulled it back to just one point between us. So that's how different it can be when you go into that championship group. But, I mean, yeah, Copenhagen's only lost four games all season. And three of them were in the championship group. Yeah. So they only lost one game in the preliminary phase. So that's how crucial this phase can be. If you think about, obviously, when when teams start taking points off each other. Uh, Ojai was the top scorer of the league, though. He got 25 goals, which is fantastic. And our Arcanjo got 12 assists which is our playmaker so that's good to see as well uh so the playoff competitions for the european spots there they're being played out obviously by two other teams what about the cup no. semi-final by norgeland and the round of 16 by sparta prague which is it's always going to be a difficult tie against sparta prague they yeah. they have a they have quite a good team as well uh six three on aggregate there so that's unfortunate did we have to play the knockout fake we didn't which means we did top our group which i kind of expected us to do to be honest maccabee tel aviv finished in second place there joint points we must have beat them on head to head we won four we beat them there in the home leg we drew against them in the away leg. Gotta win your home games. Your home games all set, it? There 
There we go. Okay, so squad-wise then, 35 goals for Ojai. Very good. New signing, Jorgensen got 17 assists. No, yeah. 15, sorry, assists and 17 goals. And, and the, number 17 goals there as well. That's exactly, good. from the other wingers. So both our wingers coming in with 17 goals apiece. Can't argue with that. And Arcanjo, 18 assists all season. Really good from him. Well, when you see three goal scores like that, I'm a bit disappointed we weren't close to the Yeah, they must. I mean, we know that they've got some incredible players yeah. in the game, and every time that there's like a really good player, it's kind of like the Bayern Munich thing, isn't it? It's like every time there's a good player in the league that isn't playing for Copenhagen, yeah. they're going to try and sign him yeah. before he goes to a European club, for example. Uh, so that might be the case here that, you know, every time there is a good there is a good player they're just gonna snatch him up do we have our budget yet by any chance we do 2.67 million come on <laughs> let's see what we can do with it once again i signed one player with all of our budget and signed some free transfers so this is anders borset he is 18 years of age right he's very good I've never even heard of him before. <laughs> uh, and when my scouts brought him to my attention, I thought, oh, he's a good player. I'll go to sign him. He's 18. Shocked. I was really shocked. 2.5 million pound is what we spent on him. But I think it's going to be worth it because either he becomes a far better player and he's one of the best, if not the best defender in the league, or another club comes in and gets lots of money and gives us lots of money yeah. for him. However, he does have, well, he doesn't have that in his contract he doesn't oh we've managed to get a no clause very good very good indeed we can start so could be in for the big money then we could be in for the big money maybe even six million <laughs> i was gonna say ten <laughs> who knows before the board just go take it accept it yeah. accept it now okay so we've have we have also brought in some free transfers as well let's take a look we bought a player in here from orange county oh i know what this player was so he was going out of contract last in the january but in the summer I opted to sign him when his contract ran out. So he joined us mid-season last season. So that's a, a new one there that we had. He can play centre defence midfield or right back. But these are the signings that I made. Free transfers at the end of this season going into the new season. A player from Midland and Copenhagen. Ooh. Oh, Nicholas Dyer. I actually know quite a lot about this player because I've used him in previous uh, save files in like different versions of Football Manager. Really good left-sided player. 23 years of age now. Can be quite good on the game as well. He's played at Midland for quite a lot, quite a while. Um, so we signed him on a free transfer. Uh, I'll go to the Copenhagen one. Lassie Sorensen. Again, another centre defence midfielder or a centre midfielder. Really good player with good stamina and fitness and everything like that. And the work rates is what I like. Coming off the bench, he's going to be really good for us, I think. As yeah. somebody who you can put on when you've got tired legs in there. You're just going to run around, buzz around the pitch. Uh, and then the two, I would say probably the best players out of the free transfers. We've got a really good centre back here. Uh, Brabec, who is 32. So a bit of experience coming at the back. Good positioning and everything like that. That, but he is on the downside of his career and not the up but this player i think is probably the best player that we have signed from birmingham so sunjic uh he is a really good center defense midfielder as a ball winner yeah can't pass as well as our other center mids like only 10 <laughs> passing and 10 vision yeah, i mean he's got a lot of greens and even an 18 in there that's, that's the odds exactly. i've seen so far so in the mental department he's phenomenal and yeah. he can tackle and mark and so we literally just need to be like ivan just go out there and just get the ball back destroy Roy. Yeah. Like, that's what we want him to do. So, win the ball back for us, Ivan, and see what we can do with it. So, we brought him in from Birmingham. He's played around uh, Europe, especially in England and Germany, as well as Croatia, where he left. So, I think that's a really good signing to bring him in. So, let's take a look tactically then. All these players that are going out, by the way, they're just end of contracts of, like, youngsters I'm not really going to use. So, Borset is the only player that I want to guarantee to play every single game on that left-hand side as a wide centre-back. The wide centre... Oh, and I've changed a few roles as well you might see there uh, the wide center back he is left footed as well so they tend to go further forward and help support the attack when it's on their side on the defensive duty they won't go too far if you go to like support they end up on the edge of the area yeah. and if you put them on attack sometimes they're in the box <laughs> this guy i don't want him to do that too much because he isn't the best going forward but he's good enough to do what we need him to do because he's got an okay passing and he brings the ball out of defense and he crosses early so those things then if you're on a wide center back can be quite good to have so we've changed a few of the roles around as you can see here very similar to what we were playing beforehand though and i'll give it a name now bromby 343 very creative with my names i yeah. know uh, and remember if you do want the tactics 
Patreon members is the only way to get it. You get the save game files at the end, and I tend to leave all the tactics on here so you can go on there and save them to your to your game as well. So that's on the five pound tier, patreon.com forward slash Megaloot Gaming. You get the save game file. Dad's gonna set you a challenge as well as you get access to all the tactics and stuff and have a mooch around the file if you just wanna have to do uh, just wanna have to do that. Okay, schedule wise then. We have once again qualified for Europe. Tell you what, but this time good, yeah. Look it's the, the Europa League. So, we were so actually... How did we get in the Europa League then? Well, <laughs> you know how last year we finished in second place and we qualified for just the conference qualification? Yeah. Well, this time, we finished in second place and we qualified for the Champions League qualification. We didn't get past Galatasaray, so they bumped us down to the Europa League one. Any time we qualify through that. Go to hell, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. When you go to Galatasaray. Exactly. Yeah. So, we, we skipped the Europa League and we could have gone to the Champions League, but we didn't. We were bumped out of that one uh, early and went into that. So if we, I get we rid of the league, we made it to a, a major league, a major European semi-final. The yeah. UEFA Cup. We made it in 1991. I think it was 1991 season. Yeah. We made it to the semi-final after beating a couple of good sides. Yeah. And we lost to Roma. Oh, that's always tricky so, in the yeah, 90s. It's the worst game to lose as well, isn't it? In the semi-final. Italian football in the 90s are obviously yeah. probably the strongest in the world, especially yeah. early 90s. Late 90s is more England and Italy, but. Yeah, that's going to be always tricky to come up against, isn't it? Yeah. So if we take a look at our European journey then, Galatasaray, 1-0, then a 2-1 loss when we went to hell. Um, home win against Sheriff. Of course, they played against Man United in the Europa League this yeah, year. Yeah, they were on a bad side, actually, were they? They were all right. Yeah. They are from Moldova. They scared of it. They scared slash, a couple of times. Yeah. Slash a country that doesn't exist anymore. And I, I'm so sorry, but I cannot remember the name of the country now. But uh, it's not recognized as a country anymore. But they're not even in Moldova. Yeah. It's weird. But there we go. So we beat them across both legs. Then we beat uh, the Turkish team. Another Turkish team in Europa League there. I can't remember. Istanbul something. I'm so sorry. I cannot pronounce that name. Beat them 1-0 on both legs. So the Europa oh, League group stage now no, is the it. league phase. Yeah. So it's the Tottenham's in it as well. Uh, so it's now the weird group stage. We've got Dinamo Kiev, Aberdeen, Vaikano, Atalanta, Legia Vorshava, Heronveen, Young Boys, and AS Monaco. Always check out Young Boys for players and nothing else. Uh, okay, in the league then, if I get rid of the Conference League and that and that and that, there we go. So we can just see the league form that we've had. And we've done well. We've done very well. We've only dropped points once. That was against Copenhagen in a draw. The rest of the games we have won. However, we haven't really played the teams that you tend to find in the championship group. Yeah. They're all to come. Oh, Midland and Norgeland are both next. So we have done well. Yeah. We've still done very well. We are top of the... Uh, the preliminary group right now, only by three points because Norgeland have lost the game there to Midland, and Midland have lost, uh, Viborg, sorry, have lost the game to us. Midland have lost to Viborg, so they're all taking points off each other, of course. But yeah. We're, and we're next. And we're next. Yeah. So, expectations? Second. <laughs> <laughs> Aim high, yeah. second place. Let's simulate this third season. Well, well, well. We are champions. Get in. Look at that. That's phenomenal stuff. 65 points. We tried to chuck it away. We did try. <laughs> uh, 64 points right on our asses, Copenhagen there, and 62 points, Norgeland. It was going down to the wire. I'll tell you what, draw games. That's what cost the other teams around us, look. Yeah. This is where the championship group would be very interesting because yeah. every game's six point, uh, yeah. as it were, that, that, old, yeah. that old face. Uh, we did go into that championship group as top of the league, only by a point again to Copenhagen. So it looks like Copenhagen maybe lost a few games at the start of the championship group yeah, and we lost them at the end. Yeah. But yeah, that was very tight there going into the end. What I am quite interested in is taking a look at the schedule after and seeing how close it was, yeah. like where, what, where, who we were taking points off of because we won 20 games in total across the season, which is the most well, When you look at we lost, lost seven games in that group, we lost three of those games in the last four games or yeah. five games. Yeah, we lost four in there, uh, four in the championship group out of the seven losses, but it was draws that killed Copenhagen because yeah. they only lost four and they only lost two in that championship mm. group whereas in the championship group they also drew five so a lot of one ones there that's yeah. what's cost them they're not scoring enough goals and in other competitions obviously the Champions League we were eliminated down to the Europa League we were knocked out in the league phase we couldn't qualify that's bad. in that oh one place oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> one place. And what's really annoying is you're always going to be roughly on the same points. Yeah. So it's literally down to goal difference. Goal difference is going to be hugely important when this comes around. When you look at some of the teams above us as well, that we, you'd think we should have been in. Yeah, there. Cyprus, like uh, Je Gordon's there, yeah. like Saint Gallen. I think we should be beating all of those, all those clubs. But you're not going to play against them. Tottenham are top. Yeah, they've won eight. <laughs> you playing on Thursdays, Dad? <laughs> Calm down. All right. <laughs> You're playing on Thursdays. Who did you play as well? Oh, a bunch of All nobodies, look. Teams, look. Young boys, look. Villarreal <laughs> is Villarreal is the only club there. I would go fair play. Hey, come on. Monaco are not the club that they were Monaco, three years young ago. Young boys, uh, you look, it's good sides. Like you always saying about young boys. You beat good FC side. Rapid ten nil. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair, well done. Oh, did you win it though? That's the main. You're giving it all Billy Big Bollocks now. Did you get to the final? Oh, you did. Get fair in. <laughs> and who did we beat? Fair enough, Not Paul. just any average side. Yeah, fair, fair enough. In. All right. <laughs> of all the clubs that could have been, it had to be Tottenham, didn't it? Of all the clubs, all the clubs coming out of the Champions League and you go and come win. Come on, who scored the goals? Let no, me, let, nobody no, cares. Come on, let me put, uh, put so me it. So it was quarter there. final <laughs> against Copenhagen in that cup. So let's take a look then back to Bromby, the, the important side of this. Uh, we can see here, we lost a couple of games here in the run up there to the end of the championship group there was a 2-1 loss there to Mijland, a 2-5 loss to Norgeland it was tricky we, we almost lucky. threw we away lucky. yeah uh, the start of the championship group we were quite good oh no we weren't that was the championship group there oh my god oh we only we only won like four out of that championship yeah. group very difficult considering we went on and won the league fair play right okay have they give us lots of money now no <laughs> Oh, we also got to check to see we're not losing any players throughout the season. We're not. Okay, we'll go forward fourth season. Now, this time I have spent money across two different players. It's the first for us. The first player, I really like this guy. He is 20 years of age. He he must be a wonder kid, but I've never heard of him. But when I seen his attributes, I was like, no way is, is he okay with coming yeah. with us. He's only 20. Yeah. He's 20 years of age. Anders Hartviet Riest. Norwegian, 20 years of age. Picked him up from the Norwegian leagues. Odd. That's a club name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you could say it's a strange it? club name. Uh, eight goals in seven appearances for us. It's not bad considering that's more than what he got last season in total. Look at the reserve team. Odd two. Odd two. <laughs> there's two of them. Uh, I think as well in, in Norway, there's also a team called Start. Is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some funny names in there. We've also signed a couple of other players though. William Like from Norgeland. He is a good like goalkeeper. I, I thought you would. Do you know, when I signed him, I thought Dad's going to make a pun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they let you down. Yeah. <laughs> Dick like. No, that's Richard, isn't it? Willie like, Willie like. Uh, so 1.2 million pound is what we spent from Norgeland there. He didn't play any games last season. We basically picked him up as like a backup goalkeeper for us because our goalkeeper is really good, actually. Uh, but we lost all of our backup goalkeepers because when you don't play them, they're like, yeah, I'm gone. Uh, so... He is coming for that, and we've also signed Matthias Bader or Bader. Free transfer, plays on the right-hand side from Germany. Uh, he can also play on the left is the reason why I signed him, but his natural position is at wing-back role. Daniel Vass, I think, might have left now, retired. Uh, I need to check that, whether it was this season or not. 28 years of age, he comes in, 15 crossing. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's what we like to see. So we picked him up on a free transfer from Darmstadt. He's played in Germany his whole career. He fancied something different. So I do want to see, if we take a look at the tactics, we'll have a look to see if Daniel Vass is still knocking around. We are still using that 4-3, three, the 3-4-3 three, three that we won the league with last season. Our best 11, it does look like Daniel Vass has gone now uh, because he's not here. Yes, he's gone. So this is what our best 11 would look like. And Ohai, who's been scoring all the goals, is not necessarily our best go our guess go scorer anymore. Reese is going to be that yeah. guy. I do think he is a far better player, but there we go. So, schedule-wise then, what have we done so far? So, we have qualified for the Champions League automatically, yeah. winning the Danish League. Oh, look who we got. Oh, yeah, Ooh. we've got some tricky clubs in go. there. Uh, we've only got Monaco. They're easy. Two English sides. Two English clubs, yeah. So, let's focus on the league and what we've done so far because we have won... All but two games where we've only drew them, including this little cheeky result here, 4-1, where our new signing scored all four goals. Get in. So, what a way to make yourself yeah. a hero very early on in the season. Uh, because 
Earlier on in the season, we were still playing Ojai, you can see here, as well as Anders, who's come off the bench at that point. We have been playing both in the team as much as we possibly can, using Ojai from the left-hand side, who's quite good in that role anyway. So, and it's been paying off. It's been paying off big time. So if we remove all of the other competitions then and have a look just at our Champions League games, we can see we've got Newcastle, Monaco, Chelsea, Juve, Genk, Celtic, Man City as well, and Inter Milan. Oh, We've you got could, you could say the three richest clubs clubs in the Premier League. That's it, really. <laughs> Monaco aren't poor either. No. Um, I tell you, who is poor though. Is Juve at the minute? Mm. Oh, they're in trouble. They, they are, are in trouble. So I don't expect us to qualify from that. No, and I don't. I don't think now you have the ability to drop down into Europa League anymore. So that's something yeah. which I am so pleased with. By the way, yeah. I hate it when the Europa League is won by somebody who drops out of the Champions yeah. League. I mean, you've lost. You're out. Yeah. That's yeah, so it should be, isn't it? yeah really? I agree. If you qualify for the Europa League, then play against a team that qualify for the Europa, Europa League. League. Yeah, so hopefully that's an actual thing that's going to stick with that. Okay, so how do you think we're going to do this season then? Do you think we're going to continue and uh, yes. go back to back with the league? The young lad is going to help us through here. I think we're going to win the league. Maybe. Yeah, I agree. Norgeland and Copenhagen are both top right now. We haven't lost the game, so we're only a point behind both of them. Uh, but they have lost one each. So, obviously, at uh, the Copenhagen, sorry, lost against us. We're still yet to play Norgeland. Yeah. Okay, let's simulate the fourth well, season. Before we go to there, though, in 1992... We won't simulate the fourth season just yet. In 1992, who won the Euros? It was Denmark. It was Denmark, yeah. And they, they didn't, didn't even qualify. qualify. Yeah, and I, and I think that was so good. And I, and I think that's where a lot of the, especially Bromby players... Yeah. Came sort of well-known sort of um, home names, really. Yeah, yeah. And and I, it was I can remember being somewhere at the time, and being told that the Denmark were given the chance to play in the, in the Euros, and the players were all on holiday. Oh, really? Yeah, some of them had phone calls. They were on the beach, yeah. actually on holiday, saying, we've been given the World Cup, or someone dropped out for some reason. I can't remember what it was now. But someone had dropped out, or been chucked out, and uh, Denmark were allowed to play in the, in the Euros, come back from your holidays and all that, and they were coming back from the beaches and the ones right. they can. Oh, for God's sake, let's yeah. go win this then, shall we? And to go through, I mean, they must have been, I would say, if your own team, your own country gets knocked out, they were your next favourite to win because of how and, and it's just funny how things they got up and yeah what a and, story yeah definitely and I could, I actually pulled them in the sweepstake at work and really? I thought isn't it my bloody luck you know and, I, <laughs> and everybody was laughing at me oh you got the team we didn't even qualify you know and I'd go on and win it and I'd yeah. Say, yeah give me the money too. yeah yeah brilliant but I can remember watching that tournament and thinking one of the loud drops didn't play either did no, they didn't, no. and that was when they were in their prime yeah I can't remember which one it was whether it was Brian or Michael I don't remember which no, one didn't know. didn't turn up I remember uh, we were talking about Johnny Johnson just now and he was one of the players that scored in the finals I think they won two Jensen nil. you mean Jensen yeah. yeah he actually scored in the final and, and he was a Bromby player at the time yeah and it, the other person who scored it, he, I'm not sure now but I'm, I've got a feeling he was a Bromby player as well yeah but um, they had a good Bromby sort of squad yeah yeah in there at, at the time and, and the majority of their players were playing for Denmark at the time yeah and obviously they had big Peter Schmeichel the, the great Dane yeah. in goal had he moved at that point or was he still at Bromby I don't really I would, remember no I Un to say 100%, I'm not sure, but no. I've I got a feeling he was still at Bromby. Yeah, but, and then I mean, he'd probably have been signed well, from, from United playing, the season after. I can remember him playing really well at that tournament, yeah. and that might have been why he ended he got, up he got, getting the move. He got, he got a move, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was great watching that team. Yeah, and, to do that yeah. without one of, I think it was the better Loudrup brother as well, he wasn't, who didn't go. Michael then. Yeah, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, so the fact that they, you know, they weren't even favourites, even he if they had him. He probably didn't want to come home from the beat. He probably said, nah, you crack yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't even qualify, lads. Yeah, yeah, we ain't going to go through and win it, are we? What's the point? <laughs> right, okay, let's simulate this fourth season and see how we get on. Fourth season and we've retained. And this time we won it by a little bit more than just a point. Five points in total. Yeah. So that's a lot better uh, championship group. There we go. 75 points. Well, Copenhagen threw it away at the end there with yeah, another they, four they draws. A bit more difficult, can they? And a loss against us. Yeah. So that's where we went on and won it, I'd say. Uh, in the preliminary phase, we were second place. So we went into that trailing yeah. Copenhagen. But we only lost a game, one game there, though. Yeah, and we went on and won it. So that was one game, a 6-2 loss against Michelin. Not bad at all. And then no. we go into the championship phase. Uh, I'm guessing we lost a couple more there. So we only lost three games all season. It's quite impressive, yeah. really. Very good stuff from us. Right. What about other competitions, then? Come on. Oh, actually, look at that. 30 goals. Young lad. Hey, oh, what a signing, eh? What a signing that is. Only 21 years of age, and he's tearing the league up 
He is fantastic. He is so good. I can't believe I've never even heard of him before. <laughs> right, competitions then. How have we done another competitions? Let's see. Knock down the league first. Oh. And the court fight. Oh, Copenhagen again. Oh, I can't believe we haven't won that cup. Though. I know, I know. The um, team that we've got at the moment, you'd think we'd win the cup, wouldn't you? We finished 34th, so we weren't we close. close. We sorry. didn't even win a game. We drew to Genk and we lost the other seven. <laughs> We got battered by Celtic. 5 0 Man City. Some bad results there. 4 0 Chelsea. Yeah. Where are you going to get Newcastle? Oh, 1 0 against Newcastle. We've done well against Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. So in Europe, we're just nowhere near the standard no, that we need to be, unfortunately. Well, yeah. The Cup, I can't believe we haven't won this yet. Michelin have won it the last two seasons. Copenhagen the season for that. Norgeland the season for that. So we're not even close. No. I haven't even got to a final yet. Goals wise, then, how many did he score this season? 35. So pretty much the same as Ohio. And Ohio is getting 16 as well. Um, but this is a long term project where as Ohai is now 32 yeah. uh, and he's lost trust in the, in the manager. Well, there's the door, yeah. Ohai. Oh, bye go. is what I'm going to start calling him. 13 goals and 13 you, assists from Jorgensen. Can you win the league and lose trust in the manager? I know, right? Because he didn't win anything in Europe. Yeah. Probably. Uh, let's take a look you then. didn't score enough goals. It's probably, yeah. Four million pound in the transfer yeah, budget. Just double our budget. <clears throat> is that because, yes, Anders Borset in February was bought from Chelsea or bought to Chelsea from us so they activated the release clause 4.2 million pound there that's unfortunate isn't yeah. it or was that the guy who didn't have the release clause no I don't think it was wasn't it I can't remember I can't remember if it was if it wasn't it means the boss has accepted it yeah uh, because you can't accept or reject when you when you holiday a season, so they've just gone and accepted it anyway. But okay, fair enough. Right, okay then. We've got that money to spend next season. Let's see what we do with it in the final year. Okay, so we have spent a little bit of money, five point seven five million pound at the end here, but that was one point two five of that was the season before, and one point six here. So across the two the, the summer where it breaks across two seasons, first player was this guy, Cryguard. Centre defensive midfielder, 26 years of age. Really good player, but we're weakening our opponents. That's what I like That's about this move. Do, yeah. yeah. Next up, probably the biggest sign that we have made, and it is Guindo, who is a centre back slash left back uh, that we picked up from Salzburg. So the Mali player that we have here, three million pound. He is rather good though. So physically and everything, he's perfect. Only 23. He can grow into a good player as well. Yeah. He's still got a little bit of potential to go. I think that's a great signing for us. Finally, we've got a couple of signings here. One was a free transfer. Konya, another midfielder, French midfielder. Not bad, not really going to start though. He's just, just more of player. a squad player. Yeah, Definitely, absolutely. Yeah. Look at all the positions he can yeah. play. Uh, and then this guy here, Josh Wilson Esbrand. 1.6 million pound. He is a very good left back. So it keeps giving us those options at fullback as well. A lot of pace and acceleration using the English link that we have as a manager to attract a player from Manchester he's come, City. He's come through the, the, the youth ranks there. Look, from West Ham, West Ham yeah, yeah, and went to Man City. come through. Good, good boys come from West Ham, I always say. Absolutely. He's even played for some Premier League football, Daddy. He had yeah. five appearances there, four starts, and got himself an assist. Okay, so Josh joins us as well. That's all the signs that we have made. Tactically, then, we stick with what we have. Yes. From the league last, to the last two seasons, why should we change? Absolutely. And this is what I would like to see as our starting lineups. So we've got Gwindo on Morales. Ragic and Brabic there as our back line. We've got our midfield there. Uh, Aranjo, who's done really well for us. Berg Jonsson, of course, who we signed in the first season. Uh, Ohai is still here. Yeah. Playing on that left-hand side. Jorgensen on the right, who we signed in that first or second season. And then our Reist guy up top, who's been scoring all of our goals. Let's take a look then. Schedule. Of course, automatic qualification again for the Champions League. No playoffs that we needed to go through. Again, we haven't lost, but we've drew three games. And a couple of draws I'm not too pleased with. No. One being this one, yeah. uh, and the AGF one in the first game of the season. First game of the season, I always think is a little bit tricky because it's the first game. You yeah. need to get into the flow of it. But then when we win 6-3 in the next game, draw to Copenhagen away, which is always going to be tricky, you'd expect to then bounce back yeah, and pick up three yeah. points. Uh, that's unfortunate. A 2-0 win there, though. 3-0 and a 4-1 win. So we are second currently in that league phase. If I remove that, we can see our Champions League matches. Only PSG. G, uh, Milan, Man City, Porto, Lazio, Galatasaray, Galatasaray again. It's oh, easy. Well. <laughs> oh well. All right. That's okay. Then. Final season. Then let's see what we can do. Final season, and we yes. win the title again. Sixty-three points. Not That's three bad. seasons in a row, isn't it? We won the league. 
That is indeed. We went into preliminary phase as champions as well, one point ahead uh, of Copenhagen. The championship group, we finished three points ahead of them. So we've actually done better than them in the championship we group. Which, three think, games the whole season. So yeah, that's good, which it, I think is the best that we've done. And yeah. only two in the championship group, like AGF yeah. and Copenhagen. So I think defensively, we've done ever so well. And I think that formation is going to help. We've drawn 12 games in total, which is probably the reason why we're not dominating the league. Yeah. But we have got probably the best striker in the league. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's just the formation we're playing is very defensive. 31 goals this season with 16 assists from Jorgensen as well, who got a very high average rating. So overall, I think we've done really well like that defensively. Was it defensive in other competitions though? Let's find out. No, no. quarterfinal again in the we cup. just can't get to that cup, can we? And knocked out in the league face. You know, you, I mean, I expect that. I mean, we're, yeah. down, we're down the bottom again. 30 I mean, seconds. we're setting our team up. We won again, Galatasaray. Oh, we won At Galatasaray as well. We, we're setting our team up very defensively, like we, as you can see there. Yeah. We can't do no more than that because we're not good enough to attack these teams. No, no, no. Yeah, we no just battle get, us. Yeah, we just get battered every time, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Man City, we played that. They, they, they topped the group. We played quite Seven. a few of this. Milan, we played PSG and Paul. They were all in the yeah. top half, like, in the top eight. So there's not really much you can do about it when Real Madrid and Barcelona are finishing outside of it. So, and Bayern Munich, look, there's some big clubs who are not finishing there. I'm not don't, even mentioning don't them. Don't go around them. Say the ones that's in the <laughs> middle said of them. every as well. club yeah, on either on. side of them. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> My club's in it, though. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there we go. <laughs> uh, moving on swiftly goals then 36 goals this season oh hi got 20 and then sebastian jorgensen got 15 and 18 oh, assists oh biggest challenge is going to be keeping that player you know what the the, the rice guy yeah yeah yeah, I mean, he's 22. Nobody's wanted him yet. It's mental. So Don't understand that, how. It means the Patriots can have him for another season at Exactly. Least, so, so the Patriot good. members, you might be all right having him. Oh, hi yeah. is leaving, though, but he is 33. So that's what you're going to have to do yeah. uh, second one with that first season is yeah. bring in that left side midfielder. And you... Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Every time they give them so much money, have they? Have we like accidentally lost a player? We haven't. They've just given them that much money. Every time, eight point six the nine million. Times and you're the Champions League, they're going to give you a bit more money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they know it's a sixth season. So Patreon members, you got eight point six nine million pound. Dad, what is the challenge? I would expect you to win the league again. Yeah. With the team that you've got, you got a bit more money. So the challenge is going to be win the league and win the cup do the double yeah the last time we done the double i think was in 2005 yeah when um michael laudrup was manager yeah um that was the last time we done the double and you can see we've never got nowhere near the cup no so there's the challenge and we got to the final no. cup. <laughs> try, try and do the double for us yeah absolutely you've got quite a few nice little youth prospects because bromby's youth academy is quite good they're all starting to get good now 18 20 years of age like uh, they are all quite good so have a look at there there's some players that you can definitely promote like this guy could probably start now on that left hand side given game time and he'll be good for you yeah. so take a look in that youth academy for all of those players coming through and of course bromby season ticket holders or people we have gone to the ground what's the, what's food, the food like, like i'll probably on. ask my friend thomas i was gonna say i'm surprised you didn't actually know that yeah I'll, i should have asked him yeah. really what's the food like what is everything like at the stadium what's the atmosphere like in, yeah. in denmark i'm i'm curious let us know down in the comments section and thank you very much for watching one more thing one more okay. thing before we go this video will be going out the week before christmas so merry christmas to you all merry christmas and if you're watching it after ignore what that <laughs> just said <laughs> thank you very much for watching hope you have a fantastic christmas and new year and we'll see you next monday which is boxing day yeah that's our favorite day of the year it's our it? favorite day of the year uh forgive me if i'm not in the premiere at that point but i might be drunk watching the football with dad <laughs> so thank you very much have a have a happy time and we'll see you next week for another one bye bye right today we are rebuilding partisan belgrade yep first time that we're doing this club however we have done a team in serbia before we did red star previously so They're big uh, rivals big isn't it rivalry, same course. same town they're both from as well so yeah uh, quite yeah. a heated rivalry as well we've yeah. seen the, the images before uh it looks very intimidating oh it is yeah i mean um going back to 1953 yeah they actually uh, we actually beat red star 7-1 in a, in a game 
in a local derby game, obviously. And we got a, the nickname Steamroller from that name. Ah, and they've still God. got that name now. That's their name. That's one, of, one of their nicknames. Yeah. But Steamroller, and that's where it came from. That is a cool nickname. Yeah. Not a bad nickname to have, is it? No, I didn't know. Obviously, with Yugoslavia splitting up, Serbia uh, now obviously are their own country. It was Serbia, Montenegro. Now it's just Serbia. They yeah. split from Montenegro as well. And I think Serbia as a nation are really coming to their own recently with how good some of their players are coming through yeah definitely yeah. I think they're on the cusp of like doing something really good in the tournament yeah. with the sides that they're producing and a lot of those players come from these two sides Partizan well, yeah. and Red Star I mean Partizan have been in, in the top league of um, Serbia. Yugoslavia and Serbia yeah. since they were formed yeah so, so they've never been relegated, no. 1945, right yeah. after the war as well. So let's take a look then. I haven't made any sign-ins. I also haven't sold anybody just yet. Many because there's not a lot in the trans budget first season. We always know that. Yeah. But if we take a look at the tactic, I'm going with a 4 triple 2 with two DMs. And I've got a pressing forward on support. So this will kind of act as like this, ideally. Uh, but when he's a little bit more further up the pitch than dropping back too much. Mm, uh, get him in there. Yeah. And the reason why I have this one guy selected is, I mentioned, they have a lot of players come through their youth academy. This is a new one. I don't think he's obviously, he's, they've been bought from somebody is, you know, a lower ranked side. But yeah. let's just say for the last four or five years, and he's only 18. Yeah. To me, that's a youth academy player. Definitely, yeah. Uh, so, Vazdar, we will butcher names, okay? <laughs> this, you're just going to have to accept it. If you want to watch the videos, expect us to get some names wrong. Um, starting off with Samed Bazdar, we'll probably have got that wrong. But anyway, just enjoy the video. Yes. Don't worry about the bloody comments. Should you mean when it. I try and have a go at the names? Yeah. I'm worse. You should see how many stuff we have to edit out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this guy's 18 years of age, and I think he is quite good, and he just needs that game time. Yeah. But if I didn't select him in there, he wouldn't be picked, and then he would never reach his full potential, which we would be worse off in the future, as we can see. It would be Pavlovic and Gomez up top. Uh, now, some of the other players that are in this side are very good as well. We've got Jovic on the wing there, but they've got like three or four really good in the youth academy that I'm like, hmm, he looks like he could be better than Jovic. Yeah. So we, we'll see how that goes. Gomez up top is a very pacey, but he's not very pacey, but he's a very good finisher of the ball uh, from Cape Verde, Portugal, and Serbia. I guess he's just lived in Serbia long enough. He's 30 years of age now. Um, we also have Diabate on the wings there. Uh, quite a pacey winger who's quite good at dribbling. Some really good centre defending midfielders and defensively, I think we're quite solid too with a good goalkeeper that could last us for the rest of the rebuild should we want it to. Now, the rules in Serbia for the league itself is maximum of four foreign players in the playing level. That's not foreign as in not Europe. Yeah. That's foreign as in if you're not from Serbia, you're foreign. Mm. I do like that rule. I mean, it's it's good for the league, and obviously I think it's actually working in regards to Serbia being better as a nation, but if you want your Serbian clubs to do better in Europe, that's where your restrictions yeah. come along, and so that's where we might struggle in this, because I think after five years, domestically, we should have it locked down. Hmm. We should be dominating the league, and maybe us and Red Star trade a couple well, of league titles. I think titles. it's going to be between us two. Yeah. yeah, but if we want to get good in Europe, that's where the trouble's going to be because it's all right signing foreign players for European games, but they're not yeah. going to get played in the actual uh, Serbian league and then they'll just be unfit, I guess. So we'll see how that plays out. Anyway, we've played a few games to start off with. We've played a lot of games, to be fair, uh, because again, this is another league dab which splits. <laughs> I like it. I do like it. It makes it interesting. So there's a top 10 play against each other or something, something like that? Something like that, yeah. yeah. So top eight. Top eight, yeah. Top eight go against the bottom eight. Uh, and so far, we have played 11. We've won nine. Nine. We've, so we've lost scored, one. We've scored a few goals as well. We haven't have we? indeed. Unfortunately, the game that we did lose was against Red Star. This is their Serbian name, as a lot of people pointed out to me the other day. When All right. I said, "Oh, it could be a random name, just <laughs> a passing comment." <laughs> God, did you beast me in the comments for that one? <laughs> anyway, that is Red Star, apparently in Serbian, but they beat us two-one in that game. There, not great for us. No, ninety-third minute. minute. Oh. Yeah, I'll have a result for them, but ooh, bad yeah, for us, isn't it? definitely. And a 0-0 draw against Rajniki, that's another bad one because that's at home. They're not that good right now. They are down in eighth place. In the Europa League, though, we have qualified for the group stage after coming up against AEK Larnakas and Sivaspor, which we beat 6-0 in the first leg, only lost 2-0 in the second leg away from home, but we had already guaranteed pretty much ourselves to go through, which means we're in a group with Manchester United, 
PSV and HJK Ooh. from Finland. So I'd like to think we can finish third. Talking of the Europa, Europa Cup, we had a hell of a result in that against an English side. Oh, yeah. In 1984-85 season in the Europa Cup in the second round, we came up against QPR. Oh, I did not. All the teams yeah. you could have said. <laughs> you could have given me 150 guesses. Yeah. And there's only 92 teams in the EFL, and I still want to go on QPR. And we lost at QPR 6-2. Right. But when we took them on at home, we beat them 4-0. So what about wow. for a comeback, eh? That is not bad at all. Yeah. <laughs> Just didn't expect it. <laughs> Completely threw me off. I thought, yeah, Chelsea or Liverpool, yeah. whatever it is. No, QPR. No, QPR. Right, fair enough. Uh, so, yeah, third place dab, do you think, in this? Yeah. <laughs> PSV are going to be a tricky one, but I would say they probably are a little bit better than us right now. I mean, you've got a fancy man ready to win it, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then... That means still, because we're still in the early stages of Europa League, we will qualify for that third competition that everybody wants to uh, yeah. everybody wants to win. Okay, we'll simulate this first season. Let's see how we do. First season, and we are champions. Get in easily now, as well. The weird thing is, you're going to think 37 games. Apparently, that is all you play, right? Uh, because you play a certain amount in the first half, and then you play in the final phase, which we went in. And we are champions. So the first phase, we won that as well. The preliminary phase, we were top of that. Uh, and then we went into the final phase, all groups. There we go. Champions, 98 points. Nine points ahead of Red Star. Very good indeed. So we only lost one game. We lost So one that was game against Red Star, was it? And that was against Red Star yeah. at the beginning of the season. So good we then. drew five, scored 96, go uh, 96 goals and only conceded 23. Very good season yeah. for us uh, going forward. Baz Dar got top scorer for an 18-year-old. Ooh. There you go. Very good indeed. Clever decision, that one. Yeah, it? and Nacho from centre defence midfield, he did. You're gonna take up proper assists. management, mate. You're gonna take over Man United or something like that. I should, should I? <laughs> I hear there's a job going at Spurs. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine well, that. The caretaker manager there at the moment. I think it's uh, Cantor in, in, in disguise still, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They haven't changed, have they? Really? No, no. Imagine we got a call from Daniel Levy, like, look, lads, I've been watching YouTube videos. Uh, <laughs> I've run out of ideas. <laughs> Very right, yes. I'll still turn it down. How could I? How could I? How could I do a Monday rebuild if I'm managing Spurs? Because that is a 24-hour, 24/7 yeah. job, isn't it? Like, and you're going to be you're you're going to be too emotionally attached, and I, I don't think we I could think, do it. I think we could do a better job than what Conte was doing. Oh, we, we, we really? definitely could. Yeah. Right. So that's fantastic. The league done and dusted, and that's after five years of not Red winning Star, it there yeah. because Red Star have dominated recently, and that's one of the main reasons why we are not doing. Partizan, by the way, a lot of people have been using the comment section to say you need to rebuild Partizan. We haven't won anything for ages. And there's a few people who are not even from Serbia who've also suggested it for that very same reason. Okay, there is other competitions. So there's a Serbian Cup. There, yep. of course, is the Europa League that we were in. And we are the winners of the Serbian Cup. Done the double. We did indeed. And look who we beat in the final as well. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, we beat Red Star 2-0 in the final. They also went down to 10 men once they realised the game was lost. They had a red card in the 94th minute. Uh, we scored 54 and 80 minutes. So we got the job done there. Uh, we dominated the game by the looks of it too. So that's the first time we've won that cup in a while too. Since, 19, since 2019, Red Star have won that back-to-back -back recently. So we've actually stopped them from doing that. We did go into the Europa Conference League. We knocked out the round 16 by Lech Poznan from Poland. Quite an unfortunate round as well. We they beat us six five on aggregate. That's a shame, really. Yeah. We did go into a knockout playoff and we knocked out the Turkish side by Shikskia, I think it's how you say it. Um, we did quite well there, six one. So that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, Man United didn't even finish top in that. I'm happy with that. It's a we, double for a season. Definitely. We yeah. uh, we beat the Finnish side in both legs. We drew to Manchester United at home. Ooh. Eric, welcome to my dungeon. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we lost three games there. We got stuffed at Old Trafford 5-1 yeah. but there we go not bad at all I think that's a fantastic season how has the team performed individually though we got 34 goals there from Baz Dar, which is absolutely fantastic 13 assists as well uh, and then our other striker who's actually injured right now with a hip injury well he is 31 yeah. <laughs> uh, 28 goals and 10 assists and then we've got a defender there with 16 goals which is that's fantastic good, from set pieces Pavlovich, who's been filling I mean, five, in. Five 13. players in double figures. Really that's, good. That's why we won the league. Yeah, absolutely. That is really, really good. So transfer-wise, we haven't got a lot of money yet, but I don't think because of the way the league is structured, I don't think we've been given our budget for next season just yet, so we'll probably have a little bit more than that. But it won't be 
much <laughs> it will we're not gonna be like, like you get 30 million no, 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 it's no. not, not gonna be that none nonsense but yeah there's a few serbian players that i think i need to look at bringing in right we can potentially do it yeah okay we have roughly one million pound that is all Better. i spent right so this signing here was already a done deal before i joined we longed out a player there and we we longed out with a fee there so not a lot done in this transfer window but i think we're at a stage where we just need to make our first team better yeah then we can focus on the future and this guy does a little bit of both to be fair because on that right hand side i would say he probably becomes our number one but he's only 19 yeah he's got a lot of years ahead of him and he has a good potential on this game too i like all of his pros there some really good pros he's a consistent player and for one million pound from another good serbian side you do see this team quite a lot i would not be able to try and pronounce their name unfortunately uh but he had a great season last year eight he's goals he's had a good season assists. for us already very good three goals five assists in only eight games that's eight goal contributions in eight games so far for just one million pound. Uros Kabic, very good indeed for the 19 year old. So that's not bad. Tactically, we keep it as it is, but we want him to play every single game as well as Bajdar. We want them both to play as many games as possible because that is gonna be the future for us going forward. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Schedule wise, let's take a look. All greens, I like that. All greens and automatic qualification for the Champions League. That's good, isn't it? Which is really good, yeah. yeah. So Talking of the Champions League though, go mate. On, then. Do you know we played in the very first European Cup game, 1955 against Sporting. Ah. And we actually won on an aggregate of 8 5. Bloody hell, that's so not that's bad. We so won the first ever game yeah. in European football. That's not bad at all. Good, Obviously, isn't it? that was part of Yugoslavia. Yeah. Really good. Bad and partisan. Let's go. That's that's a nice bit of history. Yeah. Something that nobody else will ever be able to do. That's what I like about that yeah. fact. Nice. Nobody ever be able to top that. Uh, if we take a look at some of the goals that's being scored, you're going to see one name quite often. That's Ricardo Gomez. The guy has been set alight uh, at the start of this season because his name is everywhere. I mean, Bashdar there is getting a hat trick on day one. Yeah. But Ricardo Gomez is picking up three goals there. Uh, he's got another two there, another one there, hat trick there and there. So he's he's scoring almost every game, if not every game. And we're not really conceding that many. If no. you look at that, three goals we've three only goals. conceded in the eight games we've played. How so many we scored? Hell of a lot, isn't it? Yeah, way 10, too many to, to even look at. So oh, right. uh, so far, thirty, 30 goals, in eight yeah. games. Very good indeed. Red Star though, they are the only right on lost our one and drew one. Yeah, we've got another team there who's also doing quite well and unbeaten as well so we can't count our blessings just yet and think we've already won the league we uh we need to make sure we get the job done but our champions league uh group is in and we've got liverpool Bayern, and benfica i mean that is a group of death isn't it oh, i mean well. we're chucked in as cannon fodder yeah. really aren't we that's that gone isn't it yeah so i mean even the europa league i think is out of yeah out of grabs in that in that one we're just you, turning you just up got to help that benfica have a real bad season and you with us. exactly yeah we're just here for the money i guess uh we have, we've only got 18 million in the budget so hopefully it does us justice in that speaking of the league by the way currently we're in the 12th reputation place which has actually gone down from 2022 where we were 11th so i don't know why we've qualified automatically maybe red star qualified or automatically last year but we've gone down and we're still in automatic positions right now we yeah. need to make sure we keep uh, the reputation of the league up which means we need to do well in Europe, which we probably won't do this no. year. We'll have to focus that on next year. Uh, so let's let's simulate this second season then uh, and see how we do. Second season and we're Get champions in. once again. 107 points. We've absolutely walked this league, by the way. Unbeaten. Unbeaten. Hey, Zero hey. losses. Zero losses. So we play That's 30 take some games beating, first. That's what you happen. So you play 30 games, then it splits. So you play the other seven once. Right. So it's not like the Belgian league where you play everybody another three times, whoever it is. Which I guess is kind of nice because it doesn't mean it's like too many. Like I always find like there's a meme in it that in the Scottish league that there's a the derby happens yeah. every other weekend. I feel like that would be a little bit too much. But if we have a look then at the all groups, we can see after the 37 games still no losses brilliant you can't knock that it. at all just the two draws as well and that happened in the early preliminary phase now we can see javor and then even one even to red star either really good really good season so we only there. conceded 16 goals in 30 games then. yeah I do we dominated really clean sheets we've got 20 clean sheets in total we've got all three top assisters all three top average ratings and we've got the goal scorer there with bad star with 
43 goals. I mean, he played 37 games <laughs> and he's getting 43 goals as a second striker, remember. He's not even playing in the in the actual the top spot. He's playing yeah. as a support role yeah. and he's scoring that many. The guy is absolutely insane. He's getting better and better. I like it. He's even got himself a cap as well. Good for you, Bashtar. I like it. Okay. Other competitions, So I'd like to retain the Come cup on. if possible, considering we probably won't be in the Champions League. No, we second don't. round by Red Star. Wow. Bad they, season I bet they loved that. Yeah, that is a bad season in the knockouts. We expected this. The group stage there, we didn't get. We lost all six games. In fact, <laughs> uh, we'll move on. Yeah, we'll move on. So, <laughs> Bazdar got forty-seven goals. Ricardo Gomez got twenty. He tailed off because he was on like yeah. eleven when we left. Uh, 16 and 20 there for Uros Kabic, our new signing. He got a 7.32 average rating. Really good indeed. So I think those three guys. Good season again, really. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody's delighted and everybody's happy right now. That's fantastic. That's just what we need. Financially, we don't really have our budgets in just yet. Only 121k there. So hopefully we get given a little bit of dosh going into season number three. Now, we've probably got given the most money possible this season. And we also sold a player. So Matija Popovic, who was another young striker who we haven't even used yet. We sold to Borussia Dortmund for £3.1 million. I seen the money and I thought, let's just go for it. We've got to take that. Yeah, really. we've we also... got two good strikers that we've got at the moment. Absolutely. Yeah, he's not... I don't even think he's even our third best because no. we've got Pavlovic as well. Uh, Traore, we also sold for half a million. Uh, Queensy Meneg, we also sold for 620 k in a league like this. That's a lot of money. That's, yeah. uh, that can get you a player. Uh, and we signed quite a lot. We even spent £2.5 million there on a player and £2 million as well last year. That was, wasn't it? On No, this is a new signing. It was from the same team. It really confused me. Uh, this is a new signing. Again, we need to get as many good Serbians as possible. This guy even played for Red Star, but yeah. his loyalties aren't quite there because he started off at a different side, I guess. Uh, but he's a great centre defensive midfielder, only 21 years of age really good all around i think and he is just cost us two million pound and he started very well getting yeah. four assists in eight games and a goal and a goal as well from that position two man pretty. matches not bad at all from militech he wasn't the only guy that we signed we've also got milicic here from majniki 700k he is a center back slash cdm slash left back loads of different positions to bring him in and we've got him 700k he's played a lot of games already and got one assist so far but six of them were off the bench that's good, worth notice noting i think gonjalo avila from ludogorets is going to fill one of those non serbian roles counts as a foreign player he is spanish he plays on that right back role which i actually think we've done quite well bringing him in 2.5 million pound is quite a lot of money for this league but there is a lot of options especially serbian options think, who want to join partisan i think you're strengthened in the right positions so really i mean we know we score goals going forward so yeah. we're, you know we're all right there we were great defensively to, last to stay, year so to stay in europe wise, yeah we need a strengthen somewhere else and then we really absolutely uh he's only 26 as well so there's a chance good for age, us. Yeah. yeah for a good age because member patreon members however far we take partisan here after five years you can take them further for the next five years dad will set you a task you can take over the side exactly how we leave it on the five pound tier page.com forward slash make gaming that includes all of the series stuff that we do the save game files for the brighton saviors on there as well as the Brighton Tactic. Loads, loads of people really? that. Loads, There's so it? much on there. Yeah. Uh, and remember when we did the five rebuilds in one, all five of them were on there. So it's if good, you want to pick it? that up, you can. And don't forget, let us know what you're doing. A few people have um, been uh, texting us, letting us know what we're doing. It's interesting, yeah. so keep they it going. they got your number, have they? Yeah, they got my number. they got right, your yeah. number. Yeah. Right, and remember, you can also talk to down in the comment section as well, should you wish to uh, let us know how you are getting on. Uh, Robert... I'm not going to try and pronounce that. <laughs> Lubjic. We'll go with that. Another really good CDM. Yeah. Free transfer. I mean, he's Croatian, so he does count as another foreign player, but I think he will take the role of the previous CDM there, who was also a foreign player as well. Uh, he comes in, he's having a great average rating as well. Free signing from Rapid, not bad at all. Really good signing. Daniel Backman, goalkeeper, backup mm. goalkeeper. Yeah. Our goalkeeper's really good, but there's no really good, like, Serbian goalkeepers coming up. So I think we keep our goalkeeper, Popovic, I think he's good. We keep Backman as our free uh, backup goalkeeper. He's actually played the first seven games. Games. I think it might be an injury. I can't remember now. And he's also cut five clean sheets. So we know if we can rely on, if we need to rely on him, we can do that. Yeah. Alexander Radovanovic. Well done. 
<laughs> uh, Serbian, 30 years of age, centre back, six foot two. He's best than what we even had, and yet we kept so many clean sheets last year. So I'm hoping this guy can make us he even scored better. Scored a goal as well. Yeah, from the Belgian league, not bad at all. Uh, has played in the Serbian league previously. Not for us though. Doesn't matter. We've got him now. That's good. Let's take a look tactically. Then I'm not nailing anybody down into. Don't a think role. you need to. Really? Don't think we need to nope. now. Uh, because if we go to pick without restriction, both Kabic. And Bazdar are in the starting eleven. Yeah. I mean, I do prefer Bazdar in that role, but I think Gomez is a little bit older now. He might want to drop off a little bit more, whereas Bazdar is more uh, the the guy that we won in front of goal now. Uh, so we just keep him up there. Nice, not bad at all. Okay, and our couple of our, both our centre midfielders are in there. Uh, our centre back Ralanovic is in there. I think we're looking quite well. I think we're looking really good here. Okay, schedule wise, how have we been getting on? Well, we haven't lost the game yet, so we must be doing quite well, Dad. Yeah, take out, yeah. Uh, we didn't even play any friendlies. I was just so confident. Yeah. Sometimes they just don't arrange friendlies for you, I guess. Uh, but there we go. We've done quite well. We had to play a Champions League playoff. That's not good if we consider no. we qualified automatically yeah. last year. So, yeah. But this does now go into the league phase, so that might be the reason why. I'm not quite sure. We, we did qualify. Long way down, we? Yeah. So we defeated Slavia Prague, which is a Czech Republic team, obviously. 2-1, uh, and then we drew against them 1-0 in the home leg, but we still qualified. Nice one. Bastard got all three goals in that tie. Uh, we've played Red Star down, and we've beat them so far. Nice. Uh, we have dropped some points, though, because we drew a game there. Uh, that was thanks to a 76-minute penalty. We haven't lost, though. We haven't lost. I'd like to go another season without losing. I mean, that, yeah, I mean, that's one one season and one third now, yeah. almost. So that's not bad at all. But let's take a look, then, at our Champions League games, because we've got them. We might as well take a look at them. Man United again. Uh, Liverpool again. So we've played them twice uh, already. We've played yeah. both of them twice already. And then we got to play them again. Roma. So, Jose, probably, yeah. Jose's there as well. Ludogorets, Salzburg, Napoli, Club Bruges, Copenhagen. No easy games in the Champions League. No. Talking about Champions League, though. Yeah, back in, in the old days, though, it used to be called the European Cup, though, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, in 1966, we actually played in the final. Oh, so I made the final? Yeah, they lost, mind you, did Real Madrid. Of course they did. Of course they did. Out of there. Yeah. But guess who they beat in the semi finals? But it was Man United. It was Man United, yes. Of course it was. They actually played the first game at home. Yeah. And won 2 0. Right. Then went to Old Trafford and lost only 1-0. Uh, so they got through. Wow. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm sure on saying this, that it was the first time that Man United were back into Europe after the Munich disaster. Yeah, after the Busby base. So it was the first time they got back into Europe and all that. Yeah. Um, but it was in the same place as well. They played. I was going to say, because I'm pretty sure they were flying back from Belgrade yeah. when it happened. Because they so had they... to stop off at Munich. That's right. That's when the disaster yeah. happened. So it was the same same stadium. Well, not the same stadium, but the same airport. Yeah. So everything happened at you know, the same place. But yeah, it was the first time that Man United were back into Europe. So, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, because obviously that's World Cup year, which meant we had a hell of a team, Man United, because yeah. the Charlton and yeah, you know, yeah. everyone like, who played. So you can imagine that Brindle. result. For us, to yeah, beat yeah, in the semi-final, yeah, going to Old Trafford and only losing one 0 yeah. Definitely. I mean, the 2 0 result at home was a hell of a result. Yeah, yeah. Christ, Getting money. to the final yeah. itself. But yeah, yeah, and then they lost well, against yeah. Real Madrid 2 1. It's a shame, really, isn't it? it? Yeah. Okay, let's see how we do this year. Maybe we can defeat them again. Yeah. We'll see. Third season and we've won the league again. Get in. The gap's getting bigger. Yeah. I, mean, I think Red Star. I mean, Red Star signed third. third. Yeah. Oh, they're not going to like that at all. Preliminary phase. We oh, did we lose lost two games. matches. One was to Red Star, 4 0. Yeah. But we still dominated. Uh, after the preliminary phase, we were probably champions. 20 points ahead with only seven games left. Take up. Yeah, yeah. Not bad at all. We only needed to win one game. Yeah. And you won it. Uh, and then we go to the all groups and partisan there. We only drew one against Red Star in those final seven games. Not bad at all. 101 points in total. Uh, we didn't even get top score though of the league. That goes to Jovan Miatovic, who looks very good indeed. But Bazdar did get 25 goals and the highest average rating. Not bad at all. We didn't get the highest clean sheets either. We're not even the top three. So defensively, we weren't as good as what we were last year. That's unfortunate. We've dropped down to 18. Well, we from do, 12. We didn't do very well, did we? We've done worse for the league than... <laughs> we're supposed to be doing good for the league. We're almost as down down as low as the, the championship. And this is like <laughs> a top European league. All right, okay. Other competitions? Ah, oh, uh, no. No, no, no. Uh, we are not down the semi-final of the Serbian Cup. Unfortunately, Red Star went through the final. Did they win it? No. They lost in the final as well. And in the league phase of the... Oh, we lost out on goal difference from going to the playoff. That's unfortunate. That's such a shame, isn't it? We'd have played Chelsea. Look who finished right below it. Well, two teams Napoli, below us, look. Man City, God. Lazio, 
Ajax finished Belichick. bottom, didn't even get a win. So we won three games. Who did we beat? We, we Liverpool beat. at home. We Ooh, got the result. Get Come in. Come on. That's hilarious. Uh, we drew. And Liverpool finished Napoli. third, look. Yeah. Uh, and we lost four games. We lost 7-0 at Old Trafford. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Alex was in the stadium going, make sure this don't happen yeah. again. I mean, when you come up against good English teams, that's <laughs> when you know, don't you? Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, we, we when uh, Liverpool came to Serbia, we sent them on back with a 2-0 loss. Lovely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You sometimes you, the, the story just writes itself. Yeah, sometimes it, yeah. as a Man United fan, <laughs> I need to lap stuff like that up. Uh, Tottenham not in the competition though, so we can't reference oh, it. Oh, yeah, I had to bring uh, up one in there. <laughs> Thirty-two goals from Bajdar uh, Markovic there again. Eighteen from centre back. He looks like he's coming into a fantastic player. He's a player that was already at the club, by the way. So we just. Uh, developed him from our youth academy, I presume. No, we signed him quite early on in his career. Actually, it is youth academy because I think he's just been a long spell at Olympiacos. Yeah, there we go. Oh, actually, he went to Olympiacos, then came back. Yeah. He's seen seen the error of his ways. Ricardo Gomez got 17 goals. However, he is wanted and he is 33 now. Uh, and he's coming to the last year of his contract. Kavic got 12 goals, 12 assists. Very good season for him too. Transfer-wise, who gave us that? <laughs> 16 million. Did we win the Champions League or something? Bloody hell. <laughs> I mean, three years of like European football. Fair enough. We're going the fourth season. We've got 16 million to spend. Let's see how we do. So, on the outs, we've got 1.5 million pound in total there for a lot of players, including Ricardo Gomez went to Qatar CS and Daniel Backman, our backup goalkeeper. We sold him as well. We've also sold this guy here. Not going to try and pronounce either the name or the club he went to uh, but let's take a look at the players that we did sign because we've actually spent quite a lot of money here a total of round about six million pound maybe a little bit more even a player from Benfica we've got Ristic Mihail Ristic who is a left back very good and he's Serbian 29 years of age we've got to the point now where our reputation is really good we're attracting players who have played in a number of European clubs yeah because he started 14 games in the Portuguese top division uh, he also play for red star so Ooh. yeah 975k we signed him he's got two assists already i think he's a fantastic player especially for our left back position there definitely improves us and we're able to now sign players and give them 40 grand a week in wages what a wage that is for them isn't it? yeah it's definitely because i think before and i the maximum i could go at the start of this was about 10k yeah. uh, so that's really good uh he's not the only one though because we spent 1.6 million pound bringing another serbian player in this is a one for the future <laughs> Deli Basic, he oh, looks he about looking? 40, uh, but he's actually really good on this game. So He'd I've... be on the pitch and you'd be thinking, hey, ref, come on, mate. Yeah, yeah. He can't be ordered to be in this Can league. somebody get the child who's <laughs> yeah. just run on the pitch? Um, is it Michelet you want, is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's actually a really good player. So if you're watching, Nick, Nick sir, we're, we're sorry. Uh, he scored 14 goals last season, Danny. He's just scored three for games. us already in five games. three for us. 1.6 million pound. He's a very good player indeed. Other sign that we made, 3.2 million pound. It's going up. Giancarlo Simic, just Germany or Serbian. All right. Plays centre back as well, so he doesn't count as a foreign player. He's also just 20 years of age. I had my eye on this guy from season one, and my goal was to eventually sign him. Yeah. I can't believe I've done it in like, the, <laughs> the fourth year, so I think that's really good. So Simic, 3.2 million pound from centre back, two goals and two assists. Oh yes. Yeah. We got our money's back already. Um. <laughs> Meant, not really. <laughs> so, <laughs> Marjan Iowani is a uh, is our backup goalkeeper after losing Backman. However, I think he could be better than Popovich. Yeah. He might be like a lot of greens there, especially like kicking and, and everything like that. I think he's really good goalkeeper from Romania on a free transfer. And then I spent seven point two five million pounds. Ooh, that's uh, a big one. On what? I mean, spending that it had In to be team. a first team there. Yeah. Well, he's um, got, at that fee, he's got to be the best team, best player, player in our in team, league, yeah. and probably the best player in the league. Yeah. So I don't know whether he is the best player in the league, but he is very good. Yeah. Santiago Hetze, he is our Argentinian or Syrian, very good centre defensive midfielder. He has everything that we would need to stop leaking goals from that position. Really good defensive positioning, really good leadership skills. Is what I like about it. Winds up opponents. Winds up opponents. <laughs> he's an Argentinian, isn't he? He is going to be. <laughs> the player that all our fans are like yes yeah. and everybody else hates him he is like Lissandra Martinez he's dyed his hair he's probably the butcher of Serbia yeah. now so let's take a look 7.25 million pound he's also got two assists already very good indeed thank you very much Santiago so we've changed the tactic dad it looks like this now going into Europe 
we got to do it. We have to yeah. because, yes, we're dominating the lead, but we're playing 4 triple two and we're getting stuffed 7-0. I would, I would be happy with coming second or third, but doing better in Europe. He didn't mean that. I'm sorry. He did not mean that. <laughs> I would be happy with winning the league by, by less two points. Yeah. <laughs> and doing well in Europe. It's exactly right, well, I'll what take he that, meant then. to say yeah. instead. So, yeah, I mean, this tactic is a little bit wild. I was trying to fit all the players that we have that are good in the team and I ended up with this. We'll see how it plays out because I've been chopping and changing it throughout the preseason so I don't know how many games I actually played with this but let's take a look because it seems to have done okay although some games we have lost yeah. in the league. Javor there, Mladost, uh, we lost 3-0. We haven't done very well there but we did beat Red Star which That's, is a positive. You take that, definitely. Uh, yeah. We also knocked out Panathinaikos which was last Ooh. week's rebuild in case you haven't yeah. seen that one. Very good rebuild indeed. Legia of Orshava, we, be we defeated them in the preliminary rounds of the Champions League. It's weird that now we have to play two of those rounds which means maybe the league's getting even worse but we do have our results for it. I just want to check the profile of the league in 18th. Okay, we need to remember that for the end of the season let's see how we do in that uh but champions league fixtures we are in it we've got man united again for the third time in four years we've got juve got club bruges roma dortmund again got a nice little story okay reference one of those teams there i'm not going to tell you which team it is but you'll probably, you'll probably guess in a minute reference the kits so in we started off in a red and blue kit from 1945 to 1958 okay in 1957 we went to South Africa and played in a tournament against Juventus. Oh, how did I not see Juventus stand there? And um, Juventus was so impressed with the way that we played against them, they actually gave us their shirts. Oh, right. And when we got back to our country now, we decided that we would really liked that kit, so that's why we changed our kit to black and white. So weird, isn't it? Yeah. So weird. You just never see anything <laughs> like that today, would you? Just so Juventus is the so reason random. why we play in black and white stripes. And really then, not County is the reason why Partizan <laughs> play in black and white. Yeah. That's, Definitely, yeah. yeah. Not County are just like, that's us again, lads. Yeah. Influence in, in international football, yeah. European football. There we go. What do you expect from this, Dad? I reckon out of that, three wins. Yes. I think that's I three wins. So. Sparta Prague, Ferran um, Baros and yeah. Club Bruges. I think that's three wins. We might just wins. get a lucky draw somewhere. Yeah. I mean, that could put us in the playoffs. You're playing playoff. Juventus at home. You're playing Roma at home. You could. You could just get a, you know, yeah. a draw there somewhere along the line, couldn't you? Right then, let's see. We'll simulate this season. Fourth season and we win the league again. We're yes. comfortable. Uh, we look like we dominated mm. it, by the way. Yeah. We only lost two league games in the preliminary stage, which is the two we've seen already. Yeah, so it, was, it looks yeah. like that tactic, whatever I ended up with, uh, was the go for it. And then the org routes we can see here, we did lose one extra, but we still, we probably actually won the league by then because we won it by 14 points in the end. So not bad at all. Red no. Star are in second place there. Bajdar, he retained that golden boot. I would say, I mean, he's also got the highest average rating there. He's becoming a bit of a club legend, Dad, if I'm honest, because yeah. now, even at the age of 22, I think he's fantastic for us. Do you know, that's funny. Talking about club legends and the age of 22, we have actually got a club legend, but the class is a club legend. Dragon Mantz. Okay. Who actually died at the age of 22 in 1985 in a Bloody car hell. in a car collision. Right. Um and I think he become a legend because in one of the one of the games that he did play, he actually scored a fantastic goal which they class and I think it was in a European game as well. They actually class as probably their one of their best goals that they've ever seen. Right, okay. And I looked everywhere for it. I couldn't find it to, to see if it was a you know a good goal and that yeah. but yeah, so they um they, they they class him as a legend so much so that the street right outside the ground in 2011 they actually named it after him. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's so. nice. Maybe there'll be another street for Banjdar. Yeah, Who maybe there. Yeah, because I mean that's quite weird that I mentioned that and he's 22 at the same age. And, yeah, but he is becoming a bit of a club legend because of the goals that he is scoring is insane every single season. I mean, that, that second season with 43 is beyond belief. But there we go. We got the second Carmen of Dragon Mance yeah. in Bajdar, who is probably also Serbian, I'd imagine, or Yugoslavian, obviously, yeah, for him at the time. Out. That's not bad at all. What about the other competitions? Come on. Can we retain the cup? No. no. Semi-final. <gasps> Round of 16, though, in the Champions hey, League. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we'll take that. Definitely. We'll take that. So we, knock, we got knocked out by Leipzig, oh. which... That's 4-3 on aggregate as well. 4-3 on aggregate, which means we won the first leg as well. We'll take a look at that. The knockout playoff, we knocked out Leverkusen. 7-4 on aggregate cool. after winning the second leg 
5 0. What a <laughs> comeback that is. That is insane. And it was Xavi Alonso still as Ooh. manager. Not bad at all. That is fantastic. So, how do we do in our group stages then? Group come stage, on, obviously, in the league phase. Where do we finish? Whoa! How many games did we win? Oh, we won five. You Juventus, they. get in. Club Bruges, Roma. Roma. Only the games that I said, look. No? That is mental. <laughs> do you know what we did, right? So after that Juventus game, do you know what we did? We give them our kit. Yeah. Uh, guess what? Juve now playing black and white. We did hey. <laughs> Roma, we beat 4-0. They're all now playing in black and white. Uh, we only lost three games, unfortunately. Mang and I, I mean, you know, nil. when oh, you come we, up against taking, class, when you come up against class, we're taking hammerings at Old Trafford, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, Old Trafford, we just handed out three yeah. points every single year because they finished to their high. But we still, quite, I can't believe we've managed to do that. That's that's really good. I didn't think we beat the two Italian side. No, I didn't side. think we I, I was far. only joking when I said we could, we could do it because we're playing at home. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look how unfortunate we're, we are. Fortress at home, aren't we? Eighty-first and eighty-sixth minute. That's what knocked us out. Because it's 4 3 on aggregate. Yeah. Oh, that's so disappointing. And they didn't score to the 66th there. At one point, we were 3 1 up on aggregate. That's so disappointing. Just totally lost it. Didn't yeah, it? yeah. Such the, a shame. We had a player sent off in the 62nd minute. Yeah, like, they, were all, us, they were already They down scored to the 10 three men. goals after that. Oh, they were down to 10 yeah, men as well. Down oh, to yeah. 10 men as well. Comrade Lima got himself sent off. That's so unfortunate, but that's so good at the same time. Yeah. I hate things like that because it's like, we should be really pleased, yeah. but I'm also really <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, what a season that is. Uh, four 43 goals there from Bashtar, 20 from De La Basic, the our new signing, that's yeah. not bad at all, and 14 there uh, from the guy from centre defensive midfield, that's not bad at all, really good season overall. Money? Oh, I was expecting it to be like 10. <laughs> Doubled it, lovely stuff. Hey, come on. All right, that's Ooh, really good. Well, anywhere, anyone in Europe want to yeah. come to us, we can see, <laughs> let's find out. Okay, now the unfortunate thing that happened during that season, Dad, Cabbage left. Right. Uh, he was picked up by Etihad, which is a Saudi Arabian club, during the season, £14.25 million. Pounds. We didn't reference it because, obviously, we probably didn't realise because the rest of the team did really well and yeah. carried us without him. But he did leave, and that's probably why we had quite a big budget yeah. because £15 million pound added on to that would roughly be what, what we had the season before. Yeah. Uh, so what we did after he left is the most important thing because right from that... I went and signed a player who I remember played for Partizan when he was a wonder kid on Football Manager 11, something like that. Yeah. Zivkovic. He was one of those players that every time you start a save, you'd sign him because you knew he was good. Yeah. And you could pick him up from Partizan. I brought him back. £7.5 million. Yes, I've overpaid, but <laughs> it's because of the nostalgia. I yeah. brought him back. He's not very good. He is good. He's just not as good as what he used to be on Football Manager or probably not as good as the player we sold to get him. But still, I think it's worth bringing him in. We also brought in Marco Bulat from Dynamo. See, we're like signing Dynamo Zagreb's best players now. Yeah. And they're like Croatian champions. Mm. Uh, so we signed him. We brought him into the side. £8.75 million pound in that centre midfield role as our foreign player slot. Uh, we've also signed this man from Red Star. But to be honest, I just did it because I could sign a player from Red Star. Yeah. Uh, uh, but he is Serbian. He's one of the best Serbian midfielders, and he's only 20 as well. Try and take their best players potential. off on then, That's what you do, isn't it? That's it. Uh, we will take a look, by the way, at the development centre because we have had quite a lot of intakes that we'll take a look uh, as well. We also managed to accumulate £2.2 .2 million in other player sales as well, which meant we still had £16 million left in the budget. But... If there's nobody else to sign, there's nobody else to sign. No, uh, no point in spending money for the sake of it, is it? Exactly. So you guys probably have a nice budget uh, if you take it over on the Patreon. But the development centre, we do have a few players coming through. And you look at some of these players, they're 17. They're already rated two and a half star compared to our current ability. Look how good he is. Yeah. For uh, I mean, he's Bosnian and... And he's Serbian. That's a different guy. He's good as well. Yeah. He's a centre-back. He's also a CDM. Uh, the other guy that was... It was that one. Yes, that one there. He is unbelievable as a CDM. Really good player. Just needs a couple of years in the youth academy. And he's probably going to be a starting player. Yeah. So there's some really talented players there in that youth academy. We've got another attacking midfielder there. A couple of years and he'll be fantastic. That you can use to your advantage should you take this on. Uh, but right now, we don't have the ability to take them on just yet. We didn't have the time. I've changed the tactic again. I've gone for this because of the players that we've brought in. It's all right. It's a good, good tactic, I think. Yeah. 
So we need to keep with two up top, but we did need to keep this winger option because of Zivkovic coming in. Uh, we've got a DLF on attack. Let's take a look at our best 11 and we can talk for a little bit more because we've got Bulat and uh, the two Croatians. Is he also Croatian? Yeah, he was. The two Croatians in centre mid, they need to both be playing. They're really good for European games more than anything. Uh, but we've got Ristic, who's really good on that left-hand side anyway. Delabasic and Bajdar up top, we know can get us goals. Zivkovic goes on that right-hand side with Hetze in the, Argent the Argentinian centre midfield there. Uh, but we've got so many good options from the bench that in the league, should we be playing too many foreign players, we can rely on those players anyway. So I think we've built a very good squad indeed. Uh, let's take a look then at the schedule because it's all wins other than one game there, which was Our a 90th game. minute uh, loss. And they scored in the 80s. We were 2-0 we up and threw it away, if anything. We did draw on the opening day to Red Star and they were down to 10 men. That, again, was a 2-0 up. Yeah, threw it that's away. Bad, isn't it? That's definitely bad. And then another draw there. But the rest of it is absolutely fine. Another draw in there, which isn't too great. Uh, but we did have to play another two uh, Champions League phases. Sheriff, we defeated them across uh, two legs there. And this team here, which honestly is the first time I've ever seen them uh, from Slovakia. So there we go. But we're in the Champions League group stage yet again. Not, not easy, no. Not, a, not easy at all. So in the league, we're actually down in fourth. We're not oh, doing dear. very well in tour no. at the minute. And they're down in seven. Oh, we've gone up to 17. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, we're above the Scottish Premier League now. But yeah, we need to make sure we, we don't drop any further. Champions League fixtures then. Let's take a look at them because there are a lot of really difficult games. Man City is the final one. Leipzig, time to get revenge. Yeah. That's all I that's see That's what we want, yeah. Bayern Munich, Frankfurt, AC Milan. But I think the winners... Isn't um, Frankfurt your favourite German side? They are indeed. I've seen I can't you believe you've brought that up, I've Dad. seen you remember you saying it back long, that's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. I just thought I'd bring it up, you know. I'm really shocked you remembered it, because yeah. I never mentioned well, you it. You know what, I'm like from memory. Yeah, I'm yeah. terrible, aren't I? But just that just yeah. stuck in the back of me for some reason. Some people are going to be like, why are they being really sarcastic about that? <laughs> yeah. uh, I had a comment once saying that I bring up every video, so... We're bringing up every again. video. <laughs> uh, the, winner, the winning games that I think we will have, Bodo Glimpse, yes. Shakhtar, possibly. Yep. Depending on how many players they sell. I always think Shakhtar are one of those teams. Hey, I'll manager. tell you what, mate. With our, own record, our own record, by me and trouble. It. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, Trump's on sport. We know that's going to be a difficult game. Yeah. Going anywhere away to Turkey is difficult, but yeah. we, we, we we heard about how good transport and some sport are. Okay! Let's see it's fifth and final season. See how we do. I want to win that cup again. Yeah. We haven't done that for a while. Let's win that cup again. And the Champions League. If we have to win the Champions League <laughs> That's well, a cup so I thought you was on about. Yeah. <laughs> Final season, we win the league again. It's the closest season that yeah. we've had for a while. Well, we had a bad start, didn't we? So definitely, it was always so going to be an We've done that, I yeah. think. But, and we actually finished second after preliminary phase. Oh. So that ain't good, then. No, that's really good. Oh, was after it? preliminary phase, after the thirty games, we fin we were in second. Oh right, but we still oh, went on and, and we won it. the league. Yeah, yeah. yeah I but then I we won it after that. Yes. That's right. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, good, that's then. actually really good. Yeah, that's actually quite laughable on Red Star's behalf. We had two top goal scorers there. Vasic is whoa. He looks good. All right. Okay. So when you come up against Red Star, if you take this on the Patreon, they have an unbelievable eighteen-year-old player. And if you get the budget, buy him. Yeah, imagine that. Uh, oh no, he's not at Red Star. Oh, you Ooh. could sign him. You definitely could sign him. Two point eight million there pounds. You, you should be signing him. Yes. You and he wants to come. He he's delighted to hear. He wants to come. He's just scored. 36 goals in day four games as an 18 year old. If you don't sign him, you're an idiot. Yes. Well, we'll see how much you got in the budget first. I mean, he's only 18, so. Yeah, nice. There's going to be loads of people signing up for Patreon <laughs> this week. <laughs> okay, but that's five seasons in a row for Partizan. That's fantastic. We, that's exactly what we wanted after yeah. the five of Red Star. We we've were the first team five. to do to win the league three years in a row. Oh, well, there we go. And we actually went on to win it uh, five times, no, four times in five years as well. Ah, nice. In the but, early 60s, it was, yeah. So, Red Red Star probably have bragging rights that they've got five in a row. We've we done just that done it again. as well, yeah. yeah. So other competitions, so this Come is on. the big one. I oh, really want to win that cup again. Come yes! On. Now, Champions League is not good, no. but we did win that cup. I'll take the double. Yeah. That's Twice we've done it. Red Star as well. Oh, Red even Star better. Red Star in the final two Even now. better. So not only did we knock him off the top of the league and won the league off and we won, we won the cup yeah. after him as well. Our new legend, Bazdar, got the, the second in the 63rd minute. Very good player indeed. He's got six caps now. Hasn't scored yet for Serbia, but he's got six caps anyway, nonetheless. Well, let's take a look at our league phase, though, before we do go anywhere. Uh, see how we did get on. We, did, oh, we weren't right. really close, to be fair. We won two Trabzonspor that game we mentioned. Bodo Glimt, but we lost six. Yeah. We lost 
to seven Leipzig, no, three no. We don't like going to Manchester, no. do we? No, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, we lost to Frankfurt. Did you know they're my favourite German club? No, I didn't know that. Man. Uh, Bayern Munich. We only lost two one, which I think is probably that's the a best good result. result there. Yeah, that's a good result. But AC Milan got stuff four 0 Difficult that one. Very, yeah, very, very difficult. difficult yeah. Never mind. Bayern, Bayern Munich, Munich finished actually, top. Yeah, they yeah. finished top. Uh, okay, not bad at all. Goals then forty one for Bajdar. Delabasic got twenty four, but I think they're really screaming out for another striker partnership, and it's yeah. all down to you to get. Them. Uh, so, Dad, with the £16 million, pound, they didn't even get it raised. Look, and they might have to, to be fair. I did find with this one, you have to go a little bit further. With the £16 million pound plus whatever the ball give them next year, what is their aim for next season? Number one. You buy that player. You gotta buy that player. <laughs> you got the you got the it money to way do it. Too good. At least win the double. We've won the double twice, so at least win it. You got to keep winning that league. Yeah. To take it to five and six, at uh, six and seven, and that. Let's try and do a little bit better in the Champions League than what we did. Yeah. Round of sixteen was the furthest that yeah. we got. If you can get to the quarterfinals, that for me That'd is be a huge absolutely success. Absolutely brilliant. You're five building, league wins, you're building a couple the squad. of doubles, and getting to the quarterfinals. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. You have got a good squad there already. Yeah. You can add to it. That young lad are coming through. Brilliant. You're really good. Uh, 17th the league is in so that's a we've, bit we've dropped that one down massively yeah, considering it started off in 11th so maybe try and get that up as well Yeah. Uh, but there we go the final thing that we always ask is if you go to the stadium the Stadion FK Partizan what is the food like if you're allowed food we've learned yeah. quite recently yeah there's quite a few stadiums there's quite a there. few European stadiums don't sell food because probably the know, atmosphere yeah. in there you probably I'm thinking for the person it. who commented about the um, the Greece stadium that we talked about and they don't sell fish and chips there, so I've no. got to about that <laughs> and he did go. say but we do love our fish yeah yeah so yeah but yeah let us know what is the stadium like if you've been there or you've been to serbia to go watch a game let us know what it is like also it really annoyed me that they have free kits that are all the same colors but i i was trying so hard not to mention it and i seen it there and i just had to <laughs> anyway let us know down in the comments what you want to see next and we'll see you next week for another video. Check out Manscaped at the top of the link in the description. And if you want to go to the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Gaming. if you want to take this it's definitely worth it. On, definitely Have a go. It. See if you can Sign beat us. Player. See you next week. Bye-bye. Yes, today we are doing our first ever Greek rebuild. Yep. A lot of people have asked us for it. Yeah. And then there's also a lot of people who have gone, please do a Greek team, but not Olympiakos. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So today we're doing Panathinaikos. Yeah, they've won the league 20 times, done, done the double eight times. Yeah. Won the cup 19 times, so not bad, is it? Not at all, but they haven't won the league since 2010. No. So they're on a bit of a dry spell in yeah. the league, for sure. As, as a club that I remember growing up as being one of the best teams in Greece and uh, winning quite a lot of their leagues. But yeah, very interesting club, I think. And Dad's going to find out or tell us a lot of stuff about them. One of the one things we I didn't find, but I just looked at the stadium, which is not quite no stadium. Yeah. Is there an Irish connection? Yeah, we did wonder about that. Yeah, it's in, so it's in, the, it's in know, the badge. I mean, nothing came up for me for saying it was an Irish connection. So yeah, but the, the, the clover leaf, if that's yeah. supposed to be a clover leaf, is very Irish, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, with the green and white, of course. But yeah, if there is an Irish connection, please let us know. We were very intrigued to know. But let's take a look then. Our first season, did I sign any players? Well, there's not a lot of money in Greece. We know that. So no, I didn't sign any players. They're financially a little bit in trouble, if I'm yeah. honest. If we take a look at the debts and loans, it says 8 million there, and original debt was 11 million. Uh, but if you take a look at projection, it doesn't look too good either. They're one of the small teams as well that it was small country teams that, that they rely on their youth setup and they've got one of the best youth setups in their country yeah so i imagine that's where they they rely on their income really let's imagine the most yeah really but what i would say also about that is greece themselves are not looking great right now no you know 2004 they did uh the unbelievable thing of winning the euros of course but they don't necessarily have uh, a generation a good generation golden generation coming through no they're not looking good for Greek football right now. So they're on a bit of a dry spell. And when I looked at the club, that was a bit of a telltale because there's not a lot of Greek players there. No. Four Greek players That's in their really whole good. side. Mental, really. Okay, so we've got a bit of a job on our hands for this rebuild, for sure. Tactically, we're going for this 4-2-3-1, but with like a DM role because there's a couple of really good players for them uh, that I quite like. But with wingers, I think they've got good players who can play out on the wings. Uh, we will take a look at the, the, the club. We take best 11 
We've got Palacios on the right-hand side, who I think is really good spacing Palacios, especially for, for this league, good pace and everything like that. Uh, but we've got Bernard, who used to play for Everton. He's there, centre yeah. attacking midfielder. He's great for there. Their striker's decent too. He's from Slovenia. Uh, Spora, very good player, I think, for, for this standard. Likes to beat the offside trap. I like him a lot. There's a bit of a Spanish link. We've got a few Spanish players. One car, uh, Ruben Perez is there as well. He's Spanish. So a good mix of different nations, especially for, for this club. Uh, and we can see what we can do. So schedule-wise, we are in the qualification of the Europa Conference League. Uh, we actually qualified, knocking out Fiorentina. It's good. Yeah. 2-1 uh, home win there. 72 minutes Bernard score, which, beat, uh, which obviously knocked them out. After a three or draw, where Sporar got himself a hat trick. First round, we came through Flora, which is, I think it's Estonia. But yeah, Estonia in there uh, that, we, that we defeated there. So we've come through that, that one quite easily after drawing our first yeah. home leg, which is not great. <clears throat> but uh, in the Super League itself, we've played two, we've lost one. That was to AEK, who was one of the big teams as well in Greece. We've been quite successful recently, as well as Olympiakos. Never been the relegated. Rivals. Well, Panathinaikos. Never been relegated to the top league. I guess Olympiakos has also got the similar Probably, situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, They've won 47 hmm. Super League. So they are basically the team to beat. They are going to be our biggest rivals, I believe, uh, in regards to uh, against us. It doesn't say anything about that there. Maybe it's on, on a different page. I can't remember. But there we go. Uh, rivalries. There we go. So Greek classic Greek rivalry versus Panathinaikos. So if we went to ours, it is Olympiakos and AEK, yeah. which is the Athens derby. So... We'll simulate this first season. How do we do? First season, and we are champions. champions. Get in. That's not bad at all, is nope. it? Absolutely fantastic stuff. 62 points. We were ahead. I mean, 10 points as well. That's 05? I don't think I've even heard of this club. And yet they come up there in second place with 52 points. Now, the league does do like a weird split, I think, again, uh, where you go into this like qualification stage. Yeah. We've done absolutely fantastic. We've gone through the championship group and we've gone and won it all. Lovely stuff. Aris then eventually finished in second place. Olympiakos down in fifth. 82 points in total, only losing four games. And in the championship part of it, two of them was against Aris and 05, the two teams below us. A great season. Brilliant. Good start. We also won the cup. A 1-0 win against Aris. So we've done a double already? We've done a double already So we've now, done it nine times now then? Not bad. Now, the, the, the big thing would be like, oh, imagine if you won the European Cup as well. That would be unbelievable. They've been in the Champions League final. Have they? Yeah, they've been there once. They lost 2-0 against Ajax. But, yeah. And it was at Wembley as well. Yeah. How long but, ago was that? It was in 1971. Yeah, okay. So that was when Ajax were in their boom yeah. period. They? And they've been, in, they've been in two semi-finals as well, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Not bad. I mean, there is quite a few noticeable players in this league. Like, we've got Aris here. Juvenio's playing up front. Do you remember Juvenio at Arsenal? Yeah. Uh, with the funny hair, the receding yeah. hairline. That's yeah. not, like, there, but he had loads <laughs> of it. It was weird. Uh, he is at the club, at Aris there. And Kamara, I think, is quite a, a, a player I recognise from Fulham. There we go. Uh, but, yeah, there's some, there's some big names in this league. But, yeah, we've done quite well. A double already. But in the UEFA Conference League, we went all the way to the semi-final losing to nice in that semi-final 40 on aggregate yeah uh west ham and nice battled it out in the final and nice beat west ham Ooh, but we did quite well to be that. fair yeah uh we went through our group as top we then beat Dnipro in the next round 8-1 very good indeed for that ukrainian side slovan bratislava the best side in slovakia i think uh 6-4 or 6-2 sorry on aggregate against them so we done quite well but nice is obviously quite a good club yeah. to be fair in france uh so i think that's a good season okay season number two our outspenditures was 3.7 million pound that we brought into the club but we spent 2.3 million pounds so we actually made money yeah which i think is quite important that i would quite like to do throughout this rebuild is not overspend and make sure i look at the finances because we always know that the greek economy is not actually that fantastic it's not well, been be a great bit realistic at all. really as well and yeah trying. if we take a look at the players that we've actually sold none of them were first team players other than palacios who is a little bit old now i think he's 31 uh, and I found a good replacement for him nonetheless. Let's take a look. Enrique Pereira, right midfield or left midfield. Bit of a wonder kid on this game as well. He has a good potential. 
for a free transfer from Benfica B team. Good, yeah. I think that's really good signing. Yeah. Basir Omaragic, again, a bit of a wonder kid. He's a little bit past the wonder kid stage now because he starts off the game 20. But he is good nonetheless and has a good potential. Uh, the Swiss centre-back, another free transfer from Zurich. Played every game last season, 28 games there. Uh, did very well. Alvaro Sanz, another Spanish link. Good centre midfielder. Uh, I like his, like... The fact he's a bit of a ball winner, I yeah. think, because the teamwork, work rate, natural fitness, stamina, the aggression, anticipation, he is going to win some balls, dives in some tackles, he's going to get some red cards. <laughs> and that is all about Greek football. That's what it's all about, isn't yeah. it? I've seen loads of uh, Greek players that look very angry and get themselves red carded. Uh, Pedro Rebocco, who is a Portuguese left back, I think he actually is quite good, to be fair. He might be in contention of starting at left back, but we've got Joanko, I think he's called, who is. Uh, a very decent left back, but he is a little bit on the, the, the wrong side of 30s. But the two players that we actually spent money on, Zolt Karma is a really good centre midfielder. Uh, definitely one of our better players now good that we've brought in. Absolutely. 28 Hungarian, 6-1. Looks scary as f***. Uh, 1.3 million pound. He got nine assists last season in Slovakia. Not bad. No, sent him in like build. Had a very good average rating. Uh, but the talisman of the, the transfer window was Alex Calado from Barcelona, of all clubs. Yeah. Uh, I really like good this player. player. Absolutely. Good signing. Plays everywhere. Bit of a set piece taker as well. One million pound. He scored five goals. Or he's got five assists and two goals from Elche last season in La Liga. So I think it's a good signing to bring him in. The fact that he wanted to come to us. Yeah. But we're playing the same tactic. Of course, we won the league, won the cup. There's no point in changing the tactic. Nope. But we've got Pereira. I want to play every single game. Uh, he is only 21. He is not our best right midfielder yet, but he has the potential to be that. And he just needs the game time. If we don't give him that, he will never progress. We'll never get his full potential. Because if we didn't, this would be our starting 11. It would be Mancini, who, yes, he's good. But is he as good as what Pereira can get to? Yeah. That's the most important thing for me. And considering we're already winning the league without Pereira doing that, uh, yeah, I think we should go for it. How have we done so far at the start of this season? Is it any better? Well, we've entered the Champions League qualification stages. We didn't go through with that. We got knocked out yeah. by Copenhagen 4-1 in the second leg there. Uh, but then we faced Mould and we actually went through 3-1. Nil on the first leg, lost 2 1 in the second leg, Still but then we go for it. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Europa yeah. League football this season. Now, it's weird in Greece. We're going to go back to what it was like when we first used to do rebuilds before you play a game in the league because the league doesn't start until September. Anymore. <laughs> so we don't know how we're actually going to start off in the seasons going forward. So. We'll simulate the second yeah. season. Interesting fact that go they on, didn't man. actually go to a professional team until 1979. That is late. Yeah. But, so they were in the Champions League final before they were professional clubs. Well, I found out they were, they went professional in 1979. Wow. Maybe that's like something to do with the league. Yeah, potentially. Probably, yeah. yeah. Like rules in the league where everybody yeah. ha couldn't be like fully professional. You had to have some part-time players yeah. on the books and stuff like that. They just couldn't afford to pay everybody. So. Yeah, maybe yeah. that was the case. I know for a fact, like um, in the 30s, it was like France and stuff like declared that they were going to go full. Everybody can now be a professional club, yeah. but it had to be like ruled by the governing bodies, mm. like the FA. Yeah, said that they they give permission. Maybe Greece was just a little bit late onto that. But yeah, okay. Well, let's see how we do then in this second season. Right, the second season then, and once again, we are top Good of team. that league. And in the championship group, we are champions once again. By a mile as well, yeah, 16 points. Uh, great goal difference. We only lost three games across the season, only lost one in that championship group against Aris again. Uh, Olympiacos, they managed to pull themselves back. We were talking about the derbies just earlier, weren't we? And it's, yeah. um, it's actually called the Derby of the Eternal Enemies. Yeah, that very <laughs> fierce, isn't it? I mean, I'm I'm a stickler for Greek mythology. Yeah, I love Greek mythology. And I love like Nordic mythology and stuff like that. So when I see like all the names and stuff, I just think oh, I just love stuff like yeah. that. Can't pronounce any of them. No, I'm the guy. Some of the but, names they come up with. I'm yeah. not even trying to put that. Yeah, yeah, but when I hear them being yeah. said on my television, <laughs> I <laughs> like it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I mean, we're champions. Olympiacos, a second. We're loving that. The fact that we've now won two in a row because they've just won three in a row yeah which was weird when this little spell went on with aek yeah. and Pauk, with neither of it because if you look back throughout the past winners a lot of it is olympiakos but it's always runners up or the ones that we've nicked is yeah. always panathinaikos until you go back into the early 90s so 
Yes, Olympiakos is probably the most prestigious Greek side, but Panathinaikos was always like the bridesmaid, yeah, they're about, and yeah. they got them. They got their glory every other season, it seemed like, or every every spell that they had. But if you go back throughout the years, it's a lot of Olympiakos domination with a little sprinkle of Panathinaikos and AEK every now and then. Uh, so it's nice that we're getting a bit of a run now because we haven't won it back to back since the 90s. That's quite important, I think, that we've managed to do yeah. that. Uh, we need to keep that going. How about in the other competitions, though? Round of 16 of the Europa League. Rangers. Knocked out by Rangers. Olympiakos knocked us out of the cup. So we did not win the double this time round either. Uh, but the round of 16, we were knocked out 5-4 in aggregate. Ooh. Tricky one. Uh, the the knockout going. playoff, we, put, we knocked out Bilbao. That's not a bad one, is no, it? Take that. Not at all. Uh, the group stage, how do we get on in that? So we were second to Napoli Always only. Always going to be there, won't we? Yep. Uh, Club Bruges were third and St. Gallen were fourth. Good season, I yeah. think. Really good. Brentford were in Europa League. Yeah, I've right? seen that, yeah. That was a team I didn't expect <laughs> to see in Europa League. Spora, he managed to get 36 goals this season. The 30-year-old, a fantastic uh, number for him. Ian Nidus, that would be your name. Dad's name's Ian. That would be your name if you were Greek. Yeah. Uh, Ioannidis. I mean, look how terrible he is. And he got, what, 14 goals this season. 12 I mean, we've goals, won the, 12 we've won the league, but you can see where we haven't done very well anywhere else. Yeah. When you're not getting very many people scoring goals. Like yeah, we've got need, a lot of assists. You need three good ones, really. Yeah, normally if you get three above 15, yeah. I think you've had a good season. Yeah. Normally one near the 30 or in 30s. Uh, it's normally quite good. Robocco got 15 assists. Henrique Pereira managed to get 13. He's had a decent season, so that's not bad. But money-wise, £5 million almost. That's not bad, you know, yeah, especially for this. Yeah. We'll take a look at the finances. It's been a couple of seasons. The debts have gone up. £11 million. Uh, they took out another bank loan, as you can see here. Start date 2024. We're in 2024. They just took out another bank loan of £5 million. I didn't ask them to do it. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, but still, the projection is not great. It goes down and down. But the one thing that I think is important is now the qualification is an automatic qualification. Yeah. Because we've done quite well in Europa League, which I think is fantastic for the Greek League. We're sat in 14th place in the competition reputation. Yeah, it's good. Uh, so we can keep an eye on that maybe. There's a little uh, thing on the side that we can look, we, we can focus on. Right, I think I have done a world of good in this transfer window. I am so proud of myself. Now, I only spent £4.2 million, but I did have a loan fee in there, but I think it was worth it. So a few players left on free transfers and we had to replace them. And I kind of think maybe, although our striker is scoring a lot of goals, he is 31, we could do better. Yeah. For European purposes. That's what it's about, isn't it? Exactly. And that's why I got Hugo Ekatike. Fantastic French player on this game. He has great potential as well, but I don't think he's lived anywhere near it. Uh, he's played quite a lot of games for Reims, who got relegated. Quite interesting that they got yeah. re themselves relegated. Only nine goals last season. I'm hoping he can give us Two a lot more. Two seasons before that, he was over a 10, so that's yeah. great, really. Now, he doesn't have anything that's exceptional. He's got a bit of pace about him, but I think everything that he does have, there's a lot of 13s in there, and I yeah. think sometimes that goes overlooked. Uh, I think he's a quality striker who can also play on that right side should we need him to. But Dominic Yankov is a midfielder that we can use in that centre attacking midfielder to improve Bulgarian slash Canadian. There's two nationalities I don't yeah. think I've ever seen combined. But he is very good indeed. Gets into opposition to area. 23 caps at 24 is good. Yeah, absolutely. £2.9 million from Ludogorets, Probably the best Bulgarian side. Did a great season last season. Got 7.7 .7 average rating. Yeah, good. Very high. Uh, so we bring Dominic Yankov in for quite a good price i think as well 2.9 million pound but this signing he is a wonder kid on the game warren zaire emery center defense midfielder on loan from psg this guy is quality he's only 18 and he's like our best one of our best players one of our best <laughs> midfielders uh only 18 but we can see what he can do now they did give us an optional future fee of 44 million but i think they were taking the mick out yeah, of us we're gonna buy that are we? yeah but you want us if you do want to sign you gotta pay us 45 million and i was yeah. like Okay, like that's more than what our whole, our whole squad costs, mate. But yeah, okay. We're not paying hardly anything in their wages or anything like that, but we are paying a bit of a monthly fee to use him. 
I think it's worth it anyway. Tactically, we're staying exactly the same and I want Pereira to stay exactly the same because still, if you go on quick pick, he does get replaced. Well, he doesn't actually here. When I was using him throughout the um, the preseason, he was always getting replaced by Ekatike. They still don't think Ekatike is the best striker, but I would hazard to say that he will turn into the best yeah. Uh, striker in this side for sure. I think he's well better than Spora, but we'll see how things go. Schedule we have only played the Champions League qualification playoff once. Uh, Sparta Prague was the team we faced. We lost against them in the first leg, then we beat them 4 1 in the second leg. Brilliant. So I think we've gone to the, the, the path, the play the path playoff second leg, which is further than where we were last season at the start of the season when this starts so that's the third qualifying first round leg yeah so we've gone up in regards to that uh, because of how well we did in europe and we have qualified for the champions league which is great we've got some very hard games for sure atletico psg copenhagen atalanta genk Shakhtar, and manchester Man city. city in january and arsenal uh, away trip to, to the Etihad. We can fly there, don't we? No, God, no. <laughs> and if you don't, get, you know, if you're out, you're out. You you're don't qualify yeah. for anything else. But, okay. Let's see. Maybe we can just pull off an upset and beat somebody in that and get to the playoff. I don't think I don't think we're ever going to qualify for the, no. the top eight. But that's a long-term goal. Maybe for a Patreon member. If you can get us to that point, that would be fantastic. And grow the league. That would be amazing. So simulate the third season third season and once again we are the champions i think it's got to the point now where we're we're, we're expecting to win this yeah. now three in a row and look how far off olympiacos are i think we got by far the best squad then haven't we yeah so they we dropped all we don't win this there. five seasons in a row then i'll be disappointed now so would i eka tk got the most goals this season 30 just in the league that's good in 36 games you also got the highest average rating Roboco got the second highest amount of assists Ekatike had the highest player of the matches we've done very well in the league for sure but it's about the other competitions now I want to win the cups as well and we have done that yes. we only got to the again. league phase so we didn't get any further unfortunately but we did win the cup and we beat AEK 4-0 get in so we are dominating this country now in yeah. regards to domestic trophies and everything like that. We are doing very well, uh, only losing five games, two against the Piakos, which I don't think the Panathinaikos fans would be very happy with. No. Yes, you've won oh, the league, no, yes, no, you've no. won the cup, no. but you've lost both of the derby matches. That's the highest win between the two teams is 8-2, which we'd done a long time ago. Yeah. And it hasn't been beaten yet, so... Arsenal, Man United, that one, then. Yeah. 8-2. We finish in 35th out of 36 teams in the Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> we did get a win though that was against Copenhagen 4-0 oh, well. against Copenhagen and a draw against Atletico Madrid that's a good draw yeah I mean considering that was away as well yeah Dinamo who finished last they lost all eight games I think we're quite hard done by there I mean we just we obviously got battered by a few clubs 4-1 uh, against Man City and Shakhtar and PSG 3-1 4-1 against Atlanta and Real Madrid finished 12 yeah, it's quite low for them, isn't it? Yeah. And Bayern. Yeah. Man City only finished in ninth, so they didn't actually qualify in this 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 group uh, going up when the likes of Leipzig did. So financially, they'd give us ten million pound. You get the Champions League. You're in with the big boys. You get yeah. the big bucks. That's yeah. what it's all about, Dad. But what we've got to think about is financially, we're also ten million pound left to pay the debt. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's not all swings and roundabouts here. We've got to focus on that. Now, goals-wise, 49 for Eka TK. He only started 33. Yeah. 49 goals. Absolutely exceptional. More Brilliant. than a goal a game, and he even started off the bench 12 times. Easily our best player now. Basir Omaragic got 14 goals from centre-back. And I'm not even using the, the near post tactic. Say, it's going to be set pieces, isn't it? Uh, Enrique Pereira got 19 assists. That's good. Yeah. So he's now coming into his own, progressing really well. So I'm really happy with the development of the players that we have got playing for us. Uh, and hopefully we can build on that next season. Look at those 13s turning into 14s. That's yeah. what I like to see. And his pace acceleration has gone up as well. He's nimble. He's quick now. He's scoring goals. He's confident. That's what we need He'll to start turning going. green in a minute, won't I? Yeah, we just. The only thing I don't want to turn green is this big wanted sign that comes <laughs> yeah. up next to it with loads of clubs. That's what we don't want to happen. Right, so we'll go forward fourth season. Let's see who we bring in. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have the £44 million to uh, sign Zaire Emery on That's a permanent such deal. Such a shame. Yeah. Uh, but, and we didn't actually sell any players, but we did spend £9.5 million. So I did bring in two players who replaced that one position of Zaya Emery. 
one as a player right now. That is Seiko Fofana, but he is 30 years of age, so I understand that he might not possibly be the best long-term plan for it. Uh, although 30 is still quite young, to be fair, especially in Football Manager when you're only doing five seasons. But he's very good. Yeah. Really he good player. Good, yeah. I'm really surprised that he decided to want to come to us. The main trouble that I had was wages. Yeah. I could possibly speak to a lot of players, but they were wanting double the amount I could offer them most of the time. Good, they, really? Yeah. So 34,000 was the highest I could get for anybody, and say for Fana, I wanted to get that. Now I've replaced. Uh, Another, I've got another backup option for that. We'll take a look at him in a second. But we've also gone for a new goalkeeper who is even better than the goalkeeper that we actually had. He wasn't actually that bad, to be fair. But this Swedish international, he's got three caps. If you're looking for a cheap goalkeeper, I promise you, go for him. Zetterstrom. Yeah. Even a class name again, isn't it? Yeah. If we, if we got like the most badass names ever <laughs> yeah. in a team. He is really good. Great kicking, one-on-ones and reflexes. His handling's not that great, but the rest of him's fantastic. Six foot six. Good. He's only 27 years of age and we picked him up for £1.1 million from Jagordans. He's got a quite a good clean sheet record last season, getting 13 clean sheets. We've also signed a good centre-back option, Irakovic. We've seen him quite a couple of times in different rebuilds. The only downside is he's only six foot, so he's not the tallest and powering player, but he's very good. He's got 21 caps for Serbia, so again, he's got a lot of experience from Red Star in Serbia. We've signed him for four million pounds. Bit of a bargain, I think, yeah. for Irakovic, considering he's only 24, got good potential on the game. Doesn't dive into tackles, or is that he does dive into tackles? He dives into <laughs> tackles. Good. Uh, uh, that was our motto that we needed. When I, when I thought it said doesn't die in the tackles, I thought I've made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to sign in, but no, dies in the tackles, just what we needed. Perfect. Then the centre defence in his builder that we've also got is a Swiss, another international, is Simon Song. Really good player, to be fair. He can play in lots of different positions. Uh, very similar to Seiko Fafana. I think and just gives us a better option as uh, for when Fofana is obviously injured or, or or whatever than what we had previously. Did a good season last year in yeah. for Palmer in Serie B. Six assists from the, the centre midfield role. We did pay £4.5 million. It's quite a lot of money for what we had. But I think this summer was almost like the summer of bringing the players in so that we can make money in the future. Yeah, That's what I think is quite important. You'll notice as well right here, Rooney Bargi. The Wonder Kid joins us after his contract runs out in December. So mid-season, we will also be getting the 19-year-old Rooney Bargi from Copenhagen. That's quite good as well. Good sign and very yeah. good sign indeed. So another one that potentially is somebody that you know you can make money from and, and get us into other competitions. So tactically, I have made a little bit of a change. We've got Pereira on that right-hand side there, but I want Yankov now. We are dropping down into more of a 4-3-3. And my thinking is, Dad, we're dominating domestic league. But when we go up against these better teams in Europe, we're too attacking. Yeah. And I can't change that unless I change the formation. So now we've got uh, three in midfield and Yankov is more of an advanced playmaker in a support role. Uh, he can do it quite well, to be fair. He gets the license to go forward. Box to box midfielder kind of has to do both jobs. We'll see how it plays out this season. See if it makes much of a difference against the big European clubs. Schedule wise, we haven't played any competitions and that is because we automatically qualify for the Champions League. Get in. That's really good for the league. Yeah. Very good for the league indeed. So we take a look at the Super League. We're up to 12th there. Obviously, the uh, coefficient points is enough for us to have automatic qualification. So we can't see any results. We don't know. I don't know whether this tactic's good or not. No. No, it's got to <laughs> just find out for ourselves. You never ever remember watching this team on, on the telly and that. They're well known for the fans of the green flags and all the flares and all yeah. that. I mean, they are a really well supported team. They all the highest attendance for 44,900. Yeah. And they also sold the most season tickets, which I think was 31,000. Yeah, some a big um, proportion of that Yeah, capacity, a few years ago, but um their their actual supporters club to I think got a little sort of connection with me really, I thought. All they right. were they were formed in 1966. Yeah, the year I was born. I thought you were going to say they were a big fan of the videos. <laughs> no, no, no. They, so they were formed in 1966, but they're actually called Gate 13. Ah, oh. is my favourite number because I was born on the 13th yeah, yeah. as well, isn't it? So your lucky number. So they, that's where they've got their own organisation, and they're called Gate 13. So they must go into the Gate 13. Yes, yeah, so obviously where the, 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 goal, the ultras are. Yeah, yeah. So, but they are such a well-supported team. But they're they, very loud. They have caused a few problems though. They had a, a massive, great fight with one of their their um, 
Olympiacos and, and they were chucked out of Europe I think they were allowed to play in Europe for about three seasons or yeah. so but um, yeah they, they were well supported so yeah very passionate country yeah. isn't it Greece yeah. I can imagine the, uh, the fights and stuff happening uh, from just like where you see images of the derby and stuff like that you yeah. oh, I don't want to be part of that <laughs> looks incredible but if it if, if kicks if it kicks off I'm yeah. gone yeah. <laughs> uh, right okay let's simulate this season then let's see how we do in the fourth season fourth season and we're champions once again Massively. Yeah, it's nice yes. and easy 95 points losing only three games the championship group AEK was the team to beat us Ekatike got 45 goals brilliant he also got the highest average rating 8.12 and Alex Collado got 16 assists as the highest there so Ekatike has been doing amazing so the tactic change worked work then, it did it? yeah it still worked yeah look how good Ekatike is now yeah, it's getting 15 learning. for finishing this is what we like to see that progression but unfortunately what we don't like to see dad is gone green is gone green is one mid <laughs> Bayern and Real Madrid as well it's two teams you don't say no to as well that's it, it. Unfortunately. he's in the Greek league he's having a good time and it's like oh Bayern Munich and Real Madrid are interested oh really yeah. I think I'll stay here <laughs> not gonna happen is it so uh, we're, we're gonna have a job on our hands keeping him but the valuation of him is 20 million pound though that's, yeah, so there you go that's, it's this, a lot this of money is a, for this the is club this team make their money though isn't yeah it? that's uh, uh, absolutely other competitions then how have we done we are the winners yes, of the cup again the double Come on. The double this time round, we beat Offi in or OFI. I don't know, obviously, how you pronounce it. In extra time, 3 1. Uh, we actually went behind, then equalized very late on, and we scored two in extra time with Eka TK. Uh, and 114th minute winner there as well. Not bad at all. In the league phase, though, of the Champions League. Oh, one up from where we were before. <laughs> Come on, progress. 1-1 one, one and what? One, one drew one again. We beat Chelsea at home. Get in. Easy. <laughs> and then we drew to Maccabee Tel Aviv, who's the team we finished bottom. But we'll take that. Definitely take that. We've managed to get a little bit higher than where we have been before. We're qualifying for this competition automatically now, yeah. of course, because we've done quite well in the, in the leagues previously. It, all things is looking good for this fifth and final season. 52 goals from Eka TK across the whole season. It's good. In 46 games. Vasil Moragic got 16 goals as well. And 11 and 11 from Pereira, who's coming into his own as well. And looking absolutely fantastic. However, he is unhappy, but he wants a new deal. He doesn't want to leave. He wants yeah. a new deal. He knows he's it. in Champions League football, doesn't he? Yeah, he's happy. He loves it here. Where else can he go? So, 17 assists there I see from Alex Collado. That is definitely a big number that I like to see from my wingers. Getting a lot of assists from us. Uh, and he's not wanted, which is, I'm quite surprised with. Yeah. He's a good player. Financially, though... They give us 13 million pounds. So they are quite given considering yeah. we're in the money troubles. We are losing Spora. Of course, the striker who scored us quite a lot of goals last season, but he has declined quite a lot. To be fair, age 32, we're losing quite a we're losing a couple of other players as well who haven't been getting a lot of game time. But we've got the money to replace them. That's the most important thing. Financially, the debt remaining is 8.25 million pounds so it is coming down ever so slightly i don't yeah. think we're going to clear it next season though unless we, we have a big player one big sale and they decide to to use that money to sell it but we'll see fifth season then well it was inevitable yeah. uh we sold eka tk to buy munich for 30 million pounds there you go more than what he was worth yeah. so we've just paid off the debt ready haven't we yeah uh if they used it for that anyway yeah. so i mean he scored five or he scored three and five for them already so he, yeah. he is doing well for Bayern Munich. I mean, he has actually declined a little bit because that was 15 when we yeah. left him. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, that must be the, the, the coaching we give him because, yeah. you know, the, the two best strikers in Plymouth's history that never made it past semi-professional level. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we did quite well, but we spent £18.25 billion of that. So even though we were given £13 million, then we made another 30. We only spent £18 million. We still got £11 million left of a good, healthy budget there. So I think we were sensible with it. Yeah. I didn't think, oh, we'll just blow all of it. I think we were quite sensible. I don't think with you it. can afford to do with the, the small teams like that, can you? No, I agree. Uh, Ian Matson, a left back uh, from Chelsea that we signed. It's a good squad play. Look at the yeah, places he can all play. Yeah. So many different positions that he can play. Not bad at all. This was a bit of a bargain, to be fair. 65k for a centre back. He's hell of a good. Yeah. 22 caps at 23. I couldn't believe it, to be fair. Unless it was like his last year deal with his contract or something, but I'll take it. That's yeah. an absolute bargain. We also signed Jan Kuto from uh, Manchester City on that right-hand side. We like our Brazilians. We do like our Brazilians. He's quite an attacking Brazilian right-back as well. Uh, of course, Olympiacos this season signed Marcelo 
yeah. from Real Madrid for well, maybe last season. He didn't stay there that long. I think he's already left, but of course, quite a legendary uh, fullback from Brazil in the Greek League. We also signed Philip Ronigan Jorgensen from AC Milan. So even though they're playing for these massive clubs, they're still willing to come to us, giving them game time. And that's the most important thing, I think, for them. So he is getting a lot of game time. £2.4 million, pound, not bad. Uh, £2 million pound on Noroki or Navrocki, I, I don't know how to how you would say it in, in Polish, but another good centre-back, 6-1, good physicals as well, uh, that positioning, good player traits, everything I quite like about him for £2 million, I think it's definitely a good deal, had a great season last season with yeah. 7.15 average rating, this might be, I know I said earlier, oh, we had a really good transfer window, <laughs> I think this one's better, yeah, so Vlavic, he is a, a left-sided player from Partizan, you can also it's play centre attack in midfield, yeah. yeah, should we need him to, really good player on that flank then i'll go for this one first so uh this one is a center midfielder again i think he improves our side foreign player because you can get a certain amount but we've gone nowhere near the limit of it we only spent 5.5 billion pound on him considering uh i think it was quite a good deal really argentinian decent player yeah but the replacement for Akatike, haven't come across him yet, and that is because I went with Reist. I don't know if you remember when we did the Bodo Glimp, no, not the Bodo, the Bronby rebuild. Yeah. He was exceptional for us, uh, and I've brought him back. He is looking really good again, to yeah. uh, 21 years of age. Fantastic player. Five when you look at the signings million. that you've brought in, you've brought in some good young signings, but they're also international players. Which... Yeah. You know, or four they're goals not playing for the big for team, you know, the big nations, but they're still playing for their countries, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, you think as well, he's Norwegian. He's got a, a, a certain Earl in Holland in front of him. Yeah. And he's got, he's got four, four goals, goals in four, four games. Cuts, so <laughs> that's probably coming off the bench. Yeah. <laughs> like, Haaland got five, is he? We'll give him a rest. Uh, Reese, you want to come on, mate? <laughs> So that's probably what is happening there. And he's still scoring goals. And, and yeah, I'm happy with that. So obviously, we haven't played any games yet. We're still in the in that part of it. But we did have to play a qualification. We've dropped back. We haven't done yeah. that well, but we got through anyway. Carabao, 2-0 right. uh, in the first leg. 2-1 loss in the second leg. But we still, we've still gone through. And we're into the Champions League group stage. Tactically, we've, we're sticking with what we had last season, I think. It's definitely a, a better option to go for us, but I haven't selected anybody. And if you take a look without restriction, the best 11, uh, we've got some great like link-ups and stuff like that yeah. now. And I think our bench is unbelievable. Yeah. The likes of Kalmar, uh, the likes of Rooney Baji, Vlavic, who we've just signed, Gary Yalde, who we've just signed, really good players. I'm disappointed we don't bench. do the double again, really. I would be too. Yeah. I definitely would be. But I can't get over how good that signing was of Vitic. Coming in is our starting centre back, 65k. Unbelievable signing. But there we go. Okay. Let's simulate then this final season and see how we get on. We've got some big games in the Champions League. Hertha, PSV, Real Madrid, Lazio, Nice. We've got Bodo. Isn't that weird? I said Bodo Glimt and they <laughs> popped up. That's weird, isn't it? That's uh, an easier Bodo group, as well. That's an easier group than what we've had, though. Yeah, but then PSG and Juventus at the end. Oh, yeah. That's just dropped in, isn't it? It's January. It's always the. One, you? I always find the last two games <laughs> yeah. always the hardest. Because you up, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, oh, Bodo Glimt. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's not bad. PSV, that's winnable games. Who's the last two? Oh, Juve and PSG. Yeah, we ain't going through then, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Let's simulate this fifth and final season. Let's see how we get on. Final time. Winning the league. Not so close this time, though. No, we actually didn't have a great season, did we? I think we drew a few. Yeah. I think that was the, pro the trouble, though. We did lose four games, uh, only one in the championship group with 84. We still won it by quite oh, a The team has come second. Look at their, their last four or five games. <laughs> yeah, they dropped off <laughs> They could massively. have easy caught us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we actually beat them in the final game of the season. Olympiakos, fourth place. I think they only had that one place in second, didn't they? And yeah. they just they, they were nowhere yeah. near us. We take a look at the profile, though. Reist scored 30. Brilliant. Yeah, really good. player good. coming in, brilliant. We had three of the highest average rating players in the game, two of the ho the most player of the matches, and Alex Kalada got 18 assists, and Jan Kuto got 12 as well. Really good. So that's five years in a row we have managed to win the Greek League. That's fantastic yeah. stuff. What about the cup, though? Come on. Come on. The double. Yes, we've we done the did. double. We did. Yeah. We qualified for the Champions League. Ooh. We were knocked out by Olympic Marseille in the knockout playoff. But Take we got out. there. Take out. We got progress. How was did we do that? Well. Who did we beat? In we sport? must have beat a couple of clubs because we, that means we finished 15th. <gasps> 15th. We won four games, Dad. Who did we Hello, beat? Hello, let's Come take on. a look. 
We beat Juventus. Get in. We beat Bodo Glimt. We beat Nice. And we beat Hertha Berlin. The Juventus game done it for us really hard. Yeah, it? really good. And then we also drew with Lazio. Away. We had a great time in Europe. We'd only lost three games. 6-1 to PSG. <laughs> we probably already qualified. Yeah. We didn't care about that. Real Madrid only 2-0. PSV we lost 3-2 away. At, when you look at beat Juventus, you, you've got to be disappointed at losing to PSV, are not you? Yeah, really? I, I was thinking the same. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I mean, look at the clubs we finished above as well. And yeah. there's like Borussia Dortmund. We've got Marseille, Monaco, Roma, Roma. All down there. Yeah. The clubs that were knocked out. Ajax. <laughs> Napoli down there in 32nd. Lazio, Lazio down in 34th. Not a good year for Italy. No, we have done really well to qualify. I mean, Real Madrid have won it. The usual contenders that yeah. you expect to win it in these these five years. But yeah, we've done really well there. I'm really proud of the, t the, the team for doing that. 42 goals in 44 appearances, plus four off the bench from Reist. Uh, with six That's assists. That's looking a bit better, isn't it? 20 goals from centre-back on Moragic. That guy's good from set-piece, isn't he? <laughs> Jesus Christ, how good is he ahead in? He's only 6'2". He's not like he's a towering figure or anything. Uh, Vlavic got 13 goals and 10 assists as well, which is not bad considering he wasn't considered to be in the best 11 at the start. So I'm happy with that. 12 assists from Enrique Pereira, but 18 there for Jan Kuto. Yeah. Uh, from right back. He probably is the set-piece taker now. Probably takes corners and free kicks. Maybe not. I don't know, actually. He's just really good from right back, I guess. Not bad at all. Now, if you were to take this on from the Patreon, obviously your task of getting the league uh, higher up, if you take a look, that's uh, that's down to 14th now. Did we get that to 12th? That's gone down to 14th. Yeah, I think we did, didn't we? In the reputation. So, transfer-wise, you've got... £30 million. Yeah, what's the uh, debt? They must have paid the debt off, though, wouldn't they? Well, would they have? No. No, they didn't. What did they 40 do? £40 million. What happened there, then? They took out another bank loan. I mean... After we sold many for being in yeah. 40 million. Don't and they, blame and they take me. out a 33 million loan. You're your own worst enemy, Panathinaikos. Maybe they're like, redoing the stadium or something. Yeah, I don't really don't know. know. If they're like working on the stadium, I'm not really sure. But there we go. They took out another bank loan of £33 million. Pound. They've only got 34 million in the bank now. I mean, to be honest with you, you haven't got to spend a lot of money on the squad, really, because we are the best squad in that league. So yeah, yeah. One of the tasks I'm going to give you is you've got to win the league five, five times in a row. Yeah, definitely. Got to. You've got the best squad there. Yeah. Do a, a, a double a couple of the times, but you've got to get into that Champions League knockout stage again. We've yeah. done it. We've done it our last we got season. To the playoff. Yeah. It's whether you consider that the actual knockout, because yeah. it's still classed as a knockout, but it's yeah. like the bit before the actual knockout. Yeah, I suppose it is, yeah. The least I want you to do is to get into that. Yeah, That's if you a, can get to the yeah. quarters or something like that, that would be amazing. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, then our final question is: One, do they sell food? Because we've been learning recently, haven't we? Yeah. A lot of these stadiums and the rebuilds that we're doing don't sell food. No, it's unbelievable. Isn't yeah, it? or can't or not allowed to sell food and stuff like that. So I want to know whether you can get fish and chips there. Really? Greece, you get they lose. They, that's what they're mainly in into the fish over there, isn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. So very much. A, do you a get fish, fish and chips at the uh, at the stadium? Yeah, yeah. What what type of food do you have, especially at this stadium in yeah. Athens? Uh, I'd be really interested to find out. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you next Monday with another rebuild. Make sure you check out uh, in the comments section. Let us know what rebuilds you want to see going forward. And of course, next Monday we'll be with you with another one. Thank you very much. We'll see you then. Bye bye.